and welcome to Wilton Mill in yeah in typical British weather uh, we've got wind we've got rain we're gonna get sun later but we're here for the fantastic Depreco 100 UK Super Prix we're gonna see carts from today carts from yesterday and carts from the day before yesterday in multiple groups during multiple races three heats in the final but luckily to talk us through all of it we have young Joe Bradley Joe what are you looking forward to today most of all I think I've stepped back in time I'm surrounded by all these carts from the 90s which of course is when I raced and we've, we've actually got carts from period, we've got drivers from period, some really famous drivers from period. And guess what? The weather has delivered as well. We're in the entertainment business, so I'm really looking forward to lots of action out on the track. And you'll see that Joe was better prepared than me. He's bought a coat, uh, whereas I'm just... Yeah, uh, interesting, both Joe and I did race these carts in period. I, I've just, I raced it very badly for two years in 89, 90, and you raced for many years. So we'll be telling old stories of crashes, failures, breakdowns, bank balance breakages, uh, as we see the guys who, uh, who really are reliving these uh, much more what's called cost-effective times. They are, and we'll be explaining exactly what this series is about, Nick. And it's the Karting TV Lifetime Machine. That's what we're going to take you back to. We're going to take you back to uh, a period of, of time when karting was a little bit less sophisticated. Um, and we're going to be, obviously, going into great technical detail about... Yes, we are. Oh, well, we <laughs> I am. Um, about how to get involved, in fact. Uh, and it's a great entry-level form of karting. And uh, we're going to really sort of uh, showcase this series... Uh, this weekend and uh, it's going to be exciting stuff uh, and it's going to be more ever, ever more exciting because the weather it's going to rain it's going to be sunny it's going to rain it's going to be sunny a tire man's nightmare i'm going to let you get off to the commentary booth because the cars are ready now the thing is this is not the pathway to f1 this is the pathway to fun we've got three heats in the final for six races we've got probably about running to about half past through the short lunch break it is going to be action packed i guarantee you saw the practice yesterday there's all sorts of stuff going on the track is now slippy it's a fantastic circuit so join us for a four and a half five hours six goodness knows how long of fantastic karting action here at damp wilton mill for the depreco 100 uk super free Well, we've gone green, so we are very much underway. It's the TKM Retro Racer Heavy category that's out at the moment. Six carts, and they've already started their first heat. And they've got one lap in the bag. We've lost three carts already by the looks of things, who perhaps are just beginning to uh, rejoin, but we'll get more of a handle on that. Matthew Lawrence in the number three. He's leading from Nick Watkins in the 31, and Sean Deven, yes, the name Deven will be familiar to anyone from uh, karting in the 90s. It's uh, from the Devenson Sprint family. Sean out there on his family Devenson Sprint as the number three comes through. It really is atrocious weather. Uh, all of a sudden, we've had that massive downpour just at the green flag when we uh, set this meeting away. And uh, the track conditions are absolutely treacherous. The, the driver's unable to get onto the wet tyres in time to get out on track. So we have got... Slick tired carts out on a very, what is a very, very wet track. It isn't just damp, it's very, very wet. And that will be very tricky here at Wilton Mill. And with uh, only three carts remaining in this race out of the six that started, uh, that shows how treacherous it really is. Uh, Matthew Lawrence leads by a whopping almost 10 seconds. And then uh, Nick Watkins in second place has about a 27 second lead on Sean Deven. So quite spaced out. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Bob Hoskin in the 251 and the number 40 of Fraser Atkinson and then Taylor Berry on the, uh, the novice plate, the 169 novice plate. Um, he, th those three uh, already falling foul of the weather, just being pushed forlornly back to the collecting area. So these uh, heats, um, eight minutes and one lap of racing. And we're already seeing how treacherous it is, just barely touching the throttle there, turning the steering and absolutely nothing happening. And then the cart all of a sudden grips and away across the line goes Matthew Lawrence to complete lap number three. And with just under four minutes remaining, we're already halfway into this race. And it just shows how slow things are out on track on a very wet track on slick tyres. One minute and 20 seconds last was the Matthew Lawrence's last lap time by and on a clear dry track 
It's a 50 second, just over 50 seconds per lap for these retro racer heavies. TKM engine, slightly bigger engine for this class. They're on the uh, 115cc, 115cc, single barrel, air-cooled Talco Motors engine. Very popular in period and of course very popular uh, these days. We've got a contemporary uh, TKM class that runs nationally as well as uh, various car clubs around the country. And here at uh, Wilton Mill, very demanding circuit, and as ever, with the weather coming down, we'll see some very strange variations on the textbook racing line. And right now we're watching Matthew Lawrence as he goes around the outside, just gathering up the, the car and balancing it on the throttle in a very, very artistic way that running around the outside off the traditional racing line, finding where the grip is, because, of course, the textbook racing line has been well rubbered. Wilton Mill, very, very busy track in the... Where would you suggest this is? It's not quite the deep south of England, rather in the just in the middle bit. East yeah, East Midlands. Is it really? Yeah, clusters of the East Midlands, then. I'll take your word for it. So as we continue to watch the number three of Matthew Lawrence, he's four laps in the bag. Nick Watkins through to complete his fourth lap. I'm just waiting for Sean Deben, just coming through the boot now. It's called the boot because from above it looks like a boot. So just coming through the tour section and then down towards the pit bend. Very fast right-hander. Out of the hairpin and towards, out of the Ashby hairpin and towards Wilkins is the leader through the left-hander there, very fast there, and into the section onto the back straight. Auger is there, a very fast exit onto the back straight towards the boot section just in front of us in our very advantageous commentary position here at Wilton Mill. Rain's still coming down and the sky doesn't look very promising indeed. Here comes the leader then, he looks behind and he can't see anybody. So Matthew Lawrence is kind of thinking, where has everybody gone? He's barely on any throttle and he's going to unless he really throws this cart off. Just on a minute of this race left, so one minute. So it'll be the last lap board that he will see next time by. He's through the first section. Um, first corner here at Wilton Mill, that left-hand kink that you can see there, followed by the right-hander. That's called Oblivion, the left-hand kink. And then it goes into Crook. And it's called Oblivion because when it's dry and we're at f top speed, you've got a, it must feel like you're into Oblivion there, going through there, nigh on flat out. Just going through Fine Lady, which is the left-hand king, and into the hairpin at Christmas Corner. It's going to be the uh, the favourite passing spot here when we have a more crowded track. But right now, we're just watching Matthew Lawrence just finding his way around the track into the left-hander at Wilkins. And then into a short straight towards the boot. Around the outside of the corner, just off the racing line, into the boot now. The first hit the first apex, missed the second apex, but in this case, missed both apex and stay on the outside of the track. Into the final turn then, he'll see the last lap board as he crosses the line to complete what will be six laps for Matthew Lawrence. Nick Watkins remains in second place, and then third place is Sean Deven. So on to the final lap then, this, the first heat, the TKM Retro Racer Heavy Class. Matthew Lawrence will complete seven laps by the time he makes his way around. He's already at the Christmas Corner hairpin. Very fast exit through the left-hand kink towards Inkermans. The very fast left-hander, again, if this was dry, quite a large exit speed and another promising overtaking spot is into the Ashby hairpin it's got lots of exit curb which uh, the drivers like to use and then on towards the left hander at Wilkins and then very soon through that deceivingly quick left hander at Ogiers staying on the outside line final lap then for Matthew Lawrence down the back straight for the final time 
So Matthew Lawrence will take maximum points from heat number one. There were six drivers started this TKM uh, Retro Racer Heavy first heat. We've uh, we lost three of the competitors very, very quickly. Not sure what happened there. We're just making our way back to the commentary box from opening the show. But there's the checkered flag. First checkered flag of the day then. And Matthew Lawrence punches the air. I think that's more of survival than actually taking the win. He's happy to have survived that one. Nick Watkins, we wait. Nick Watkins just coming out of the boot now on the number 31. Ah. As the rest of the competitors make their way around. There's only Sean Deven left out there as Nick Watkins crosses the line as well, just following the lead around on his slow down lap. There's the number 31. Absolutely pedestrian pace as they cross in front of us. What lovely rain. <laughs> Yes. It, 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 sorry, I've been out doing various. Uh, uh, you were running back from the. Uh, the oh, it's a long, long way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it is. Um, yeah, it's, it's a lovely weather, isn't it? It's. Uh, they've really kind of topped themselves here with uh, with cracking weather in every possible. Have you way. seen the forecast? Is it worse? The forecast <laughs> is for, for for it to get dry, then get wet, and then to rain again, right? And then to get dry, right? And then to rain again, excellent. And then to get dry, right? Until about Thursday. Oh, excellent. That's yeah. good news. So basically, it's England. Uh, yes, very <laughs> English yeah. weather. Yes, we're good. Uh, well, welcome, welcome to the uh, English summertime. So we've got three heats in the final. What are the, what are the kind of classes we've got then, Joe? Um, well, we've got um, we've we've got a huge grid of 100 UK, which is the, the it is the 100 UK Super Prix, the Depreco 100 UK Super Prix here at Wilton Mill this weekend, and we've got uh, such a huge grid of 100 UKs that we've had to split them into three groups. Um, we've also got the National Card Club uh, Senior Road Axe Max, both the 162s and 177s. We're a, a small group of that. More of that in, in a moment because they're next out for their first heat. Yeah. Then we've got the three groups from the Depreco 100 UK Super Prix. And then the final uh, group out will be the F160s, which is basically twin engine pro cards, which we're very familiar with. And the F300s, which are... Uh, a, 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 category of cart, a formula of cart that, that are quite new to me and we'll, when we get towards their heat we'll explain more. Um, next out though Nick is we have got an eight minute and one lap heat for the National Car Club Senior Max. Senior so that's Max. basically what we've become familiar with mm -hmm. on Karting Live TV. Yes. Um, basic Rotax Max on the, um, on the same tyre um, apart from well, they, they, this is the thing that they've, they've come here um, for a bit of fun, but also to do some yes. tire testing. But they came here to do tire test. Yeah, but they came here to do dry tire test. It's an invitation. <laughs> well, that's the problem, isn't it? There's, it's an invitational uh, event. This as part of a support to the uh, Depreco 100 UK Super Prix. So they, these uh, carts are going to be out on what would have been an e experimentation tire. The Maxis tire that they normally run on in the series comes to an end. So they've got a new Maxxis tyre. It's called the uh, Maxxis Tyre Sport. Sport. Which, which they're looking. Well, in which case it must be better than it's, it's called the Sport. It's got to be. But it's got to be durable because in the National Kart Club series, the um, the Road Axe Max series for the National Kart Club, tyres have got to last you three meetings. Now that that that's a very cost-effective formula to go karting, and um, you know if you race at any kind of club level in Road Axe Max or indeed at national championship level you'll know that the normal regulation is one set of tyres per meeting. And if you're not on a new set of tyres, the next time you go out, you're going to be very disadvantaged. Well, it's, it's kind of stretching the budget for a lot of these competitors and making that very attractive to, the, to, to people. They're out on slicks again, I think. First corner are they, are they out on slicks oh, or are they no. out on wets? They've got to be out on wets. The that, guy's just, that guy's just fallen off on that two guy's corners on in a row. Yes, he's actually not turned around. Yes, now he's, he's got a Rotax, so theoretically he can get the thing going again. He's got a clutch. Uh, yeah, he's on got the chance now. Hello to Aston QT. He's here at the racing. Hello to Aries Larrero. Hello to Simon Miles Production. Looking forward to some good racing. Go on, Mick Miles. Well, go on, Mick Miles. The good production is down to uh, us, sorry. And hello to Lania Dolly Pop, who's also there as well. So if you want to have a chat with us, use the YouTube chat, as we will monitor the YouTube chat. We don't monitor the Facebook chat. So, happy to have a conversation with you. Tell us what you want to see. And we're about to see some Rotax action. Um, I think they, they rescued the car that crashed. Joe? I've got a grid um, that I can give you a quick rundown. They're on the back straight. Jack Goodyear is on pole. Scott Russell alongside. Then we've got Mike Edwards and Brent Smith on the second row. Tom Elridge and Alex Black on the third. Chris Scavia and uh, Steele 
uh, Vass on the uh, fourth row, fifth row of the grid is Mallet and Fossey and Tom Radburn bringing up the rear. We are through the final turn. We should get the go-ahead, but no, we've got a delayed start board. A wave around, is that? So it's a wave around. And by the looks of things, Nick, I say that all of that field are on wet tyres. Apart from the person who fell off twice? Yes, apart from the experiment. Uh, the, <laughs> I don't know who that, sure who that was. I think it's Tyler, Tyler Fossey. Fossey. Yeah, I yes. think in the 666 Devil car, it's certainly handling like Satan, that's for sure. It was worth a punt, actually, because the rain has now stopped. And there's a lot of wind, so it will... I don't know how, how quick Wilt Mill is as a drying circuit, but most of the places up here are quite windswept, so there should be a chance to get the, uh, the, the wetness off the track. And it's quite warm. It is. So it will dry. The ambient is OK, to be honest. It will dry. It's going to be quite... It is quite well. I'm from the north, remember? Yes, you are. Yes, I am from the northeast, live on the northeast coast. So this, to me, is absolutely balmy. <laughs> uh, Phil just gathering themselves up. Have we lost Fossey, Nick? Tyler Fossey. I think he was the guy who fell off. off. I think yeah. he probably went, oh, yeah, I'm not going to do another 10 laps if I uh, don't have any grip whatsoever. You know what, though? He might find that the grip will come to him if he stays out there. I'm, I'm expecting that. I, think, I don't think he can stay on. Let him stay out there. Yeah, where is he? I've lost. I've lost him now. Is he still? I think still he's th yeah, he's at. Uh, he's just. He's retired. Yeah, he's just on the outside. So I've got nine carts for this one. Eight right. laps and eight minutes in a lap. Jack Goodyear, bringing the field round, picking up speed as they come through the final turn at the pit bend, and they'll see the lights go to green by the foot. Go to green. Oh, the lights indeed go out, and away they go into turn one, which is that very, very tricky oblivion, especially in these conditions through crook now and out towards through fine lady the kink there and down towards christmas corner this is where we see some overtaking and there from fourth spot up to second we'll see how they sort themselves oh. out and an off spinner at the back at the back <laughs> slithering their way yeah. out of christmas <laughs> corner and through the next section of very fast sweeps oh. There's an element there of, the, of just guessing where the grip is i mean if you quite nice the the 20 car scott russell he, he applied the accelerator and it didn't move. It just sat there spinning its wheels. It's Milton Steele Vassinak, I can tell you, who's took the lead. And Milton uh, on a bit of a comeback to karting, I'm being told, and really showing his experience there in these very tricky conditions. Already got himself to the front. Now he's on the 162 category. I say 162, that's 162 kilograms. They're on the blue number plates and the green number plates that you see out there. They're the 177, they're the slightly heavier class. So it's quite understandable why we've got a lighter cart at the front of the field. So first time by then, in very tri tricky track conditions, with a very damp track still, Milton Steel Vassen, Milton Steel Vassen is leading from Tom Radburn in the number 22. Then we've got the first of the 177s, Mike Edwards in third, from Chris Siver, Michael Mallett and Jack Goodyear. That's the top six. And then the third runner in the 162 class, Scott Russell, followed by Alex Black in 7th and 8th, and Tom Elridge through in 9th. Still more often sideways than straight as they put the power down. But it's a nice little lead now for Milton Steele Vatten as he comes through Oziers. We couldn't read your writing there. It's like a B rather than an S, that second letter. I know I'm not really sure what that is. It is Oziers. Oziers, yeah. yeah. Is, is that not your writing then? It is my writing. Oh, okay. You don't know what your own writing I, is. I write like a doctor. Yeah. <laughs> so you do like a doctor there. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to prescribe a handwriting course. Look at Oof. that gut that Steel Vassen has there. Uh, purple time there last time by one minute 3.9. Tom Radburn in second, one minute 5.9. The gap out of just on four seconds with two laps in the bag. And Steel Vassen really showing that experience in what is this comeback drive. He's already pulling out a bit of a gap there and... He's still trying to find grip, though, isn't he, Nick? He's not on the uh, on what, what I could call a conventional line there and uh, using the brakes there, just flicking the cart, finding the grip. Spray, spray coming off the rear axle of that cart, telling me that it's still very, very wet out there. Yeah, they seem quite happy to... Uh, it is a case just to lob it in and see what happens, isn't it, still? It's, it's, it's holding on quite nicely. Um, it is. I'm trying to see if there's a bit of a, a light... The cart just need to hit the camera. Uh, did he? No. Got close, though. I did wonder when we positioned that over there. Well, I, I, I worryingly, they didn't, it wasn't cut to, because that would have been a great shot, but, you know. <laughs> Vassett across the line to complete three laps. He extends that lead even more so to second place Tom Radburn, who just crosses the line now. Let's see what the gap is. Out to six seconds. 
So Vassen, the man to beat. Mike Edwards through in. No, oh, ah, no. Change for third place as Alex Black moves. Back, sorry, Alex Black moves up two places and takes third overall. This First of the one seven seven runners are in fourth and fifth. That's Mike Edwards and Chris Siver. This is certainly lock stop race, isn't it? You just go from one lock stop to the other. If you try and chuck the thing out, correct really under power. It. Yeah. So obviously there is no element at the moment yet where the car, where the track is drying. The skill is to know when to catch it and react to the rear end. So you turn in, there he is, just waiting for the car to grip up and then straightening the wheel, getting the power on. Be care very careful. He's very responsive on the throttle. He's into the left hand towards boot, or the boot, I should say, into that double apex, missed the first apex. Uh, sorry, hit the first apex, missed the second one. Not sure what they're doing in the wet mind. <laughs> And there make it, he's... Make it. Should we, uh, let's drop back to, uh, who's the leader of the heavies? It's, it's a cut the fourth place, car, twen car 21. Yeah, just coming onto the back straight now. Oh, actually, just coming out of the boot. And it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a three way card battle for third. Alex Black, Mike Edwards, and Chris Siver just crossing the line there, almost nose to tail. Certainly, That's car 20 of Scott Russell. So you need to go move forward. It's a couple of carts forward of Scott. And that's our heavy team. That's the out there. And down the inside. one is the one we're looking for. Not really a racing line drying up. There, there we are. That is a battle, absolutely. So there's an absolute battle here for the heavy uh, competition between 21 and 53, which is uh, Edwards and Screever. They're both... Uh, you know, I'd have thought there's one time it's actually useful to be a three-stone heavy because you get more mechanical grip just from the sheer weight. Yeah, I would have thought so. Yeah, I would have thought so. That, that's going to help. Um, I'm, I'm just trying to, as we as we go around the track with these two 177s, the the heavier category, I'm just trying to see whether or not we get a different shade of grey. That would tell me that there is a racing line beginning to develop. I'm, the jury's out though, Nick. I, th I, I think, the, stop, I think, I I think the track is still pretty, and pretty and I, I think the point you've made out is this is a very, very heavily used track. So there is a lot of rubber, there's a lot of gunk. And therefore, what you get when you get the first bit of real rain, we've had spitting yesterday, we never really made the track completely wet, is you get that emulsion come up. Yeah. Um, so even when it begins to dry, they've got to kind of almost kind of clear off the, uh, the damp emulsion before you get the, uh, kind of a combination of a wet and a dry track. They're effectively cleaning the track as well as drying it. So it's, uh, luckily, of course, these heats are all graded on the individual races, not on time. So it's the positions will be, if we move into the finals later in the day, will be taken from the results, not from a aggregate of time so it doesn't matter it's slower heat we're hoping we are hoping for some dry weather later Joe you know let's let's, let's push that, that that theory out there well well yeah I mean the the, the dark clouds that were that has just deposited the uh, the rain that we saw the first heat out and the, the TKMR heavies um that that's gone that we're going to get a period of dry so we're, we're going to see everybody out there at the moment now considering this is a, 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 a um a formula of karting that is run by the National Kart Club and it's aimed at being economic. It's aimed at a cheap entry formula for karting, and it's the way that you use tyres. However, at the moment, it's not very economic, because what we're doing as this track gets drier is we're just burning away these wet tyres. It is expensive. And in one heat, you can absolutely destroy a set of wets, and that's the kind of conditions that we're beginning to see out on track at the moment. So the 35, you can see at the front of the screen, that's uh, Alex Black, who's currently running third overall in the race for the lightweights. Let's call them lightweights. And let's call the heavyweights normal people. <laughs> <laughs> Normally so, sized so, people. So the whippets are out in front of first, second and third and the, and the, and the generously proportioned normal people are, uh, are happily uh, just behind them. So 35 in the, uh, well, the fetching blue overalls uh, of Alex Black. And he's being chased down by uh, the 21. The, of the Mike Edwards, who is, of course, one of the heavies, so it's the, it's the lightweight. So basically, it's the whip being chased by the Greyhound. Well, the overall leader's just gone through with about 37 seconds on the clock. So he's on his penultimate lap now as Milton Steele Vassen. And he's got, he's extended that lead. He's almost 20 seconds now. Tom Radburn's just come through. And there's the number 35 of Alex Black. He's in the 162 class, the, uh, the lightweights. Then Mike Edwards leading the 177s in fourth. Chris Shiver through in fifth just across the line there. Here they come down towards Christmas Corner there. Lovely head-on shot towards the braking area. And the number 35 of Alex Black, they're using the inside line where he's got the grip off the traditional racing line. They're on their penultimate lap. The leader, just keeping an eye out of the window of the commentary box as well to catch when the leader's going to come through. Here he is about to come out of the final turn. 
and come towards us and across the line to take what will be the last lap to go board. Milton, Milton Steel Vassen has really showed everybody how to drive this Wilton Mill track in these conditions. Let's see if we can pick up the leader who's just heading down towards Christmas Corner now, the hairpin. And here he comes on his final lap. Good work from our camera team from the Karting Live TV company. We're on the final lap then for Steel Vassen. And he has absolutely dominated. The gap at the line last time by was 20 seconds. He's going to extend that because every lap by he's gone faster and faster. And I was told a bit of a comeback. I'm not quite sure of Milton's history. We'll see if we can uh, put some meat on those bones. But basically the story is that it's um, a bit of a return to Rotax Max Karting for Milton. Here he comes then, out of the boot for the final time. Gets a wave by from one of the bat markers at the back of the field. And there's the chequered flag for heat number one for Milton Steel Vassen. And we have to wait for over 20 seconds there. That was the extent of the lead last time by Tom Radburn. It should be in the 22, just coming out of the final turn now. Lovely shot of the final turn there. Not staying well off those wet curbs as Tom Radburn confirms that second spot. Alex Black in the 35 is third. That rounds off the first, second and third for the 162s. Mike Edwards clinches the 177 class with Chris Shiver into second place. Fourth and fifth overall for them. Next cart due through will be Scott Russell. He's the fourth finisher in the 162s. And then it'll be Jack Goodyear and Michael Mallett rounding off the 177. There's Tom Elridge in ninth place overall, already through and one lap down. Gap at the end of that race, 21.4 seconds to be exact, Nick. So Mil Milton Steel Vassen showing the way there in those very tricky conditions. And, that, and you know what? It, that's where the experience comes through, isn't yeah. it? When you, you can read the track conditions, you can, if you're familiar with the track where you are, and here we are at Wilton Mill this weekend, if you know Wilton Mill, like you mentioned, they're very heavily used track. It's got uh, a court well, higher yeah, carts. We had a whole day of racing, a, a practice, and a whole day of practice. And then racing stopped 10 past five. It was a 50-minute break, and they had an hour of corporate cars. That's and right. It, yeah. you know, and that is also laying down different tyre, different rubber, different oil. And, of course, the other thing interesting about this is you have a huge variation of tyres going down because every single class is running a different standard tyre. That's right. So, there's a, it, you know, it'd be quite interesting, actually, because I, I, I'm not even sure if the amount of rain we've had is going to be enough to clean it up, but it is now and has been stopped. So it's going to be interesting to see what is the situation regarding the uh, paddock. Um, Ash, can you try and get a little bit of zoom down some of the tyres of the cars in the uh, collecting area, please? Um, hopefully Ash can hear me. And we're going to have a look at those. Let's see if we can see some tyres on, uh, on the cars. I'm not sure anyone's listening to me in the, in the control room. <laughs> They've got some, there's a couple of um, there's a couple there's a couple of water couple of water in the in the in the uh, in the, uh, in the <laughs> distant moment. We're fighting the elements. ah there yes, we go. there's wets all around then yes. from the uh, the collecting area. Now this is the first heat for the Depreco 100 UK Super Pre. First heat. This is Group A. I have got a grid. I have got a grid as they are being released. Um, on the pole position, end pole, and the grid being formed by qualifying times from, I think qualifying was yesterday afternoon. Yesterday afternoon in, the, in, in the glorious, in the glorious damp, dry drizzle. No, it was quite nice. Yeah, it was quite nice. Yeah, it was yeah, dry. At least they were consistent. I can't remember. I got damp so many times yesterday. So Liam, Liam Hamling is on the pole position with Jason Wilson alongside. Second row of the grid is Adam Rogers and Grant Davison. Uh, third row of the grid is Ricky Wright and Dan Crankshaw. Mick Miles and Thomas Pattle are seventh and eighth. Ninth and tenth is uh, Elliot Scoffin and uh, M. Horton. Jack Packham, sorry, Jake Packham and David Mellish are eleventh and twelfth. Thirteenth and fourteenth is Sam Hill and S. Semester. Fifteenth and sixteenth, James Cannon and John Cattle, who's on the novice plate. Lee Drinkle and D. Bergman are seventeenth and eighteenth. And then uh, it's Leonardo Taggio. Uh, who was from Depreco, and a big thanks to Leonardo yeah, yes, for supporting this event. He's on the rear, uh, back row of the grid, 19th, and Ben Robinson rounding off the 20-cart field. So it's a 20-cart heat for Group A, it'll be a 20-cart heat for Group B, and it'll be a 19-cart heat for Group C. For just the 59 
classic TKM cars. Apparently, there were there 6,000 chassis, we were told, were made at some point. Uh, they are, are still all fighting. chassis, Nick, as yeah, well. They're all, all these carts are genuinely running on chassis made between, I think, 1994 and 19, 2002. We, they're off. We get the go-ahead and into oblivion for the first time. It looks to me as though Jason Wilson Oof. got the jump there into oblivion. It's still slippy and slidey, though, isn't it? It's still scrambling for grip. And who is it leading Liam for the first time? Liam came back up the inside there. Could be wrong. Uh, he's a 41 that's in second. So, yeah, it's a 64 of Jason Wilson. came. Is he, oh, and spinning off there, 41. So, bad news for Liam there. Just, uh, I don't know, I think he got tapped. And then he, he just went around. He, the arm wave, he made me think that wasn't just a power slide. So, that's our Paul Sitter who got uh, into a spin there. I'm not going to go to the on the side there. Um, so, we've got a couple of fallers already. Fallers. A couple of uh, spinners already. <laughs> yes, it's horse racing now. A couple of fallers at the uh, Beaches Brook. Now, we've, got, we've gone back in time here, everybody, because these are all school uh, 100 UK Formula TKM carts. There's no onboard starters on these carts. To get them restarted, you've basically got to lift the rear end and push the cart. A very tricky technique. Um, I used to be able to master that in my 20s. I'm not sure I'd even <laughs> attempt it now. Uh, barely, when, when you were half the man you are now. I can barely run alongside the cart <laughs> at walking speed, let alone lift the back end at the same time. And, and then jump in. And then jump in, in yeah. yeah. That'd be, that, that would be a, a nightmare for your lumbago. So it's Wilson from Rogers, from Davidson, from Pack, and from Hill, from Crankshaw. That's your top six. Uh, after lap one, a nice little lead for Jason Wilson. Now 1.8 over the line, but then his major uh, rival, the 41 car of Liam Hamling, well, that uh, I think has got rolling again, actually, but uh, is a long way behind. Mm. He's already dropping down the order from what would have been at the top of the timing screen. Um, and he's still, I'm still waiting for him to come by. We've, we've lost a few carts. We've lost at least um, four or five carts not coming through. Leonardo Taggio... I know it's not coming through as I can well. See over in the corner, there's two carts being dragged off into carting, uh, into the carting uh, uh, org. We've got a corral there. Yeah. So up there, there's two. So yes, they've, they've, they've obviously um, got them dragged off. I mean, obviously one of the things about running 1990s carts is you also have 1990s carts reliability. Um, yeah, but I'm I think this is more an issue of spinning off and not being able to restart them. And oh, we've got a little nibble there. And it's the 41 car of uh, uh, Leon Hamling, who's obviously uh, a lap down. He got back involved with the leader again now. I wonder if he's got uh, there's, there's some uh, little bit of seconds going on there. A little bit after, I think he was, he was wronged by our leader, Jason Wilson. Well, so, he's, he is a lap down, Nick. He's down in 14th and just behind the, lead, the overall leader on the road. That's the number 64 of Jason Wilson. So, Leon Hamling will want to just follow the lead around. He's got the pace of the lead as he started the race on pole position. He'll try not to get in the way of the carts around him. And as I say that, into Christmas Corner, almost to coming together there with second place Adam Rogers, but uh, Liam managing to get out of the way. He's going to be on a bit of a recovery drive for the rest of this. Now, just to remind everybody, eight minutes and one lap are the heat lengths. The grid for heat two is the finishing order from heat one. So it's very important to get as high up this field as he possibly can for Liam Hamling because if he can get further up the grid, he then start heat two from that position, and it'll be, again, another rebuilding operation through the heats. Jason Wilson crosses the line. Uh, 2.6 seconds is the gap. That's extended to Adam Rogers in the 63. Grant Davison threw in third. Lee Drinkle up to fourth place ahead of Jake Pack and, and oh, Sam Hill. Still edgy, isn't it? Yeah, it's still very, very slippery. It's at, that, it's at that transitional stage. We really need a bit of wind and a bit more... Uh, warmer ambient to really start <laughs> we've got, to take we've got that, enough wind take that honestly um, look, look, look at the, the flags track. we've got enough wind we have haven't we yeah <laughs> it's quite it's quite breezy i'm i'm surprised it's taking so long well, yeah, to the, get the, a racing line the camera on the hairpin is showing the true level of light the other cameras behind are showing it, it much brighter than it is it is quite dull to be honest it is and but, the uh, sky's not not looking very promising at all no i think there's going to be we are interesting to me we, we are forecast this showers wind nothing showers wind nothing right up till four o'clock we think the event's going to end <laughs> <laughs> yeah the sun will come out oh, some of the, uh, now that's first thing someone's actually managed to get their spun cart rolling again there up in the uh, as they come down the hairpin yeah. so still leading away is jake wilson uh, jason wilson um let's um let's just uh, see if we can drop back to uh Adam Rogers in second place. It's the 63 car. And we'll just uh, pick him up. See what's going on there as we have a look at them fl f flying through the uh, the crook section there just after the uh, start finish. I think we've lost Jake Packen. He's, he's now uh, dropped down two 
places and he's very, very much overdue. There's Rogers in the 63. He's got a small lead for the Grant Davidson. So uh, all the wearing there, a lot of them are now wearing their little plastic oversuits. I noticed that none of them the got what I had in period for, for rainy days, which was the spinny visor. The whirly the, visor. The whirly visor, where you look like an absolute idiot. No, no, no. They were very <laughs> effective. I, I came from car racing, single-seated car racing, and, and into karting. I did it backwards instead of forwards. Pardon? And, and <laughs> I, I could never see a thing in the wet in a single-seater Formula Ford. And then in karts, you know, discovered these whirly visors. And I'm thinking... Why have these not taken off? Just to explain racing. to you, basically, what you stuck on the front of your visor was a spinning wheel that had a little vein. See-through wheel. See-through wheel. We had a little vein that was, it span with the wind of the of moving forward. Blew and the, blew the, the rain off. Blew the rain off, yeah. Well, there we are. I, I just thought it was, they were ridiculous. They were quite effective, didn't you? They were very effective. At least so you could why, see. why are they not wearing them? I, I don't know, mate. I My guess know. is they've got coatings now on the visors. Yes. Which allow it to... This is the days before Rainex or the products are available, of course. This is the days before the internet. <laughs> <laughs> it was indeed. I, I don't think I've seen a whirly visor for about 25 years. Yeah, I was discussing, because Joe and I both, I both raced at the beginning of this sort of period, Joe raced through it, and we were discussing it, how did you find out? Well, I realised I knew nothing about how to race cars. And it was one, uh, all I find is once a month, a copy of Karting Monthly will come through, and I get some more information. Nowadays, it's all there on the internet. Yeah. yeah, how to set your car. Blooming kids, they, 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 they've got, do they? YouTube videos that will explain absolutely everything about everything. Yeah. And Too easy. These carts are direct drive. There's no clutch like we saw in the earlier heat with the Rotax Max carts. Um, these are a direct drive, chain driven to the rear axle. Only brakes on the rear, as we've become familiar with. No brakes on the front of these carts, however, some of the carts that we're going to see out in the F300s, they have got brakes on the front. and the Yeah, the F300s are kind of a mix, mix and match. They are. We'll, we'll, shed yeah, build. That, that's te technically one of the, quite the most interesting classes out there. But right now, these are all TKM engines. Um, well, what, I'm, what I'm most interested in is, is the Bambo following, which Adam Rogers went, just went past car 18, and I can't see car 18 actually in the event, so that's quite impressive. <laughs> Uh, Cart 18. 18, did you see? Well, it seemed that number. I mean, obviously, these are my old eyes looking on a screen, but it did seem like it went past Cart 18. No, we haven't got Cart 18. Well, someone's not put their stickers on properly, that's all I can say. Okay. It could have been 16. <laughs> it could have been 16. With Nick's eyes. Who knows? Been, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to... Uh, yeah, well, yeah. Let's, let's, let's say, given that 16 is a similar number and in the actual race, there's a damn fine chance it was 16. And he's a lap down. Anyway, so we, what we just saw was car 63 going past car 16. Uh, yeah. There's the leader just crossing the line there um, with 25 Ooh, the seconds. Leads come down. Leads come down. It has 25 seconds on the clock. They're on the penultimate lap. The, la the lead has gone down to 1.8 seconds. And the last lap time by was uh, Adam Rogers threw in second. He was only about three tenths off the lap time of Jason Wills ahead of him. So with two laps to go, that's just not enough time for Adam Rogers to improve. But he will, if they, if they finish like they do, like they are now, they will start the second heat on the front row of the grid. So all to play for in these next couple of laps. As they continue. Getting close. It's getting close. It is. He is gaining, isn't Rogers he? Rogers has really found his motor. Now it's drying out. So the, the early lead, which Wilson got in the 63, so both the uh, first and second in the same frame there. Onto the, back, on the on back straight. Back straight, turning into the boots. They've got one more lap to go. That lead was 1.8 seconds. It looked a bit less. Yeah, it's, probably, it's probably about one and a quarter now, do you think, yeah, Joey? He is quicker. The, Adam Rogers in second place is slightly quicker than the leader, but you know the leader... It'll be aware of where Rogers is as they cross the line there. One point four. So he's they, yeah, he needs three to four tenths about three or four laps more to get it. But they'll, they, as you say, they'll start from the front row. Fastest lap of the of the heat so far for Adam Rogers in that second spot. Uh, just to give you an update of uh, where everyone else is, Grant Davison remains in third. Lee Drinkle in fourth. Sam Hill in fifth. We're still waiting for Dan Crankshaw to come through in sixth. And they are nailed line. together now after some traffic there, John. Ooh. John, sorry, Joe. That takes you back. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, Ooh, blimey. Yeah. Uh, Hello, John, if you're listening. Yeah, I would think he is. Oh, yellow flag. Chance to overtake gone there at the, uh, the corner. We've done another one of these carts for you, but that's just a few corners to go. And it's uh, Rogers now right on Wilson's tail. The more blue 63 against the grey suited 64. I think most of that was because Wilson got a little bit confused or, or was being a little bit careful on a bit of that marker lappery. He got himself a comfortable lead. They're going to come round for this first heat of the uh, 100 UK. And he will take it in. One last chuck of the corner in. And 
the first 100 UK race has been won by Jason Wilson. Rogers, you've got it down to 0.9 of a second. He's actually closer at one point, but they've obviously realised it wasn't going to be an overtake. So he's back. Davidson is in third. Lee Drinkles fourth. And uh, Sam Hill's fifth. Uh, hello to some people who were talking to us on uh, uh, the wonderful world of YouTube. Hello to Lee the HTQ. Hello to Brian Martin. Where's Brad Dyson? Apparently he's in the next race. Hello to Sal Pullinger. And hello to Tremaine. Um, you are, if you are watching this, you are at the start of something new. You're at the start of Karting Live TV. Um, we are, of course, you, you, like many of our fans know us from uh, RC Racing TV and Control and Radio Show Limited and everything else. But we're starting Karting Live TV. If you are, a, uh, if you have a karting event you'd like covered, oh, give us a call. We'll see if we can, uh, we'll try and fit you in. Currently, have quite a few spare dates, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> We've got every weekend free, Nick. <laughs> Currently, yes. The, the, the important thing is the Depreco 100 UK Super Prix is very much underway. And a big thanks to our other supporters of this event, BoilerChoice.com, Eddie Scoffin. Um, uh, if, you, if you need a boiler of any sort, Eddie Scoffin's the man. He's on cart 45. I'll tell you when Eddie is out. In fact, he's, he's just been out and he finished eighth in that uh, heat number one for Group A. Uh, big thank you to Raptor Customer Racewear for all your racewear needs. And, of course, Head Tech. Uh, you'll need a crash helmet if you want to go uh, do any form of racing. And they are the leaders in motorsport crash helmets. Head Tech, big thank you for their support. And uh, a big shout-out to Johnny Moore Watches. Ryan Cole was awarded a brand-new spanking Johnny Moore watch for the fastest time of qualifying for the Depreco 100 UK Super Prix. And he will be, I think he's going to be awarded that sometime today. We'll see if we can get that televised for everybody to see there. Uh, so a big thank you to all of our supporters here this weekend. And um, well, the Yes. Sorry, go on. I was Probably just going to say, the, the, you know, with, with the, the, the event, the Super Prix, it's kind of, li it's a one-off. The, the 100 UK series has a national series that uh, I think, I think, didn't Ollie say six rounds? Six, yeah. uh, however, this Super Prix idea is, it's a bit like the British Championship all plate, I would imagine, and I'm not sure whether we win a plate. We'll the just SP, it. apparently. It's the SP plate that we're uh, up for, and that's quite and an it's, accolade. It's combined, a bit, it's combined a couple of other little historic uh, clubs as well. Isn't it? there's, yes, there's, it has. It's, it's, it's kind of a, yeah. a, a celebration of 90s karting, plus um, a little bit of Rotax too as we move forward. Um, Let's see if we can get uh, another look at the tyres in the collecting area from from Ash. I know he's on camera at the moment, so we have to cut off to come back. And I think they are still on the wets there. Um, it is interesting because we, we were chatting to the, the, the timekeepers, and they were they were, they were a little bit concerned about the timing because, of course, it's much harder to get the cart the the, the dead carts back off and on the track again, isn't it? Because they can't be yeah, uh, they, they have can't to be, be rolled. Because obviously, you've got a rotax cart, it's got a clutch, and just push it off. These things have to get a a big a big t other big hunky man, and it is all wets again. I'm are we getting, got wets I think, then? I think yes, we're we getting are. close now. We are. We're getting very close. It's getting to the point of time where we can destroy. A brand new set of wets in oh, one heat and a, a non-starter for the 55, which is um, which is Wesley Graves, our pole position car. Wesley Graves struggling to get that cart going. The leader oh, continue to push. Back. That does take me back. Has he got it? Um, Has he got it? Has he got it? Has he got it? Has he got it? He hasn't got it. Oh, Wes oh he hasn't Wes got it. Wesley Graves was on the pole position. Will Cottrell was alongside in second. Scott Williams and... Uh, Nicky Richardson, more of Nicky Richardson coming up. They're on the second row of the grid. Third row of the grid is Simon Newby and Paul Strether. Fourth row of the grid, Adam Sirrett and Sean Davies. Fifth row of the grid is Duncan McLeod and Jay Waddington. Eleventh and twelfth is Bradley Dyson and Lee Jackson. And then we've got B. Williams and S. Picocci in 13th and 14th. Richard Steele and Tyler Ballard are 15th and 16th. 17th and 18th, Sergio Taggio. Sergio from Depreco. Big thank you to Sergio for his support. And he's on the novice plate in 17th. Alongside 18th uh, is Ashley Harris. And rounding off the 20-cart field is on the novice plate, C. Bergman, with Tom Purchase alongside. Did our pull man get off? He's, I think he's got rolling. I can't see where he pulled. No, he's been pulled ah, off. He's come off. That is an absolute tragedy. It takes me back, Nick, to my <laughs> karting days of not necessarily getting off the line in a heat because of the not even attrition they, rate. They, 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 I'm not sure they're going to get a start this time because it's a very, very slow overall start. Some of the carts aren't actually on the line, but it looks like they're going to go for it. So uh, uh, the carts at the back of the field just uh, going to be a bit distance off, all on the red number plates. And it's they sweep across. Still a very, very tricky first section of corners. In fact, Ooh. a very, very tricky 
lap around here at Wilton Mill into Christmas Corner for the first time. Cotrell that looks lead. like it, it's it's Cotrell that leads on the Sirius in second. So Sirius come up from fourth, the grid to second. But of course we lost our of course we lost our uh, yeah lost the pole man. Pole man. So he's now in second, and they've both enjoying these now. Well, you can only describe it as damp conditions. They certainly aren't wet. And as you say, these are expensive tyre-based conditions. You're going, to do a, you're going to do significant damage to your wets in this one. Yeah, and it's going to get drier as this as this heat continues. They're already out of Hashby in towards the left-hander at Wilkins. Just into Wilkins now. They'll come out of Wilkins. Down a sh very short straight into uh, Auziers. And it's more of a, a an S-bend with a left followed immediately by a right onto the back straight. Lead is into the boot for the first time, Nick. And it's the O-plate. It's, no, the the it's Scott Williams. It the is the O-plate, Scott Williams. Oof. And he's fighting it left, right and centre. He? He's gone from, that, was, that was a kind of a cart tank slapper, wasn't it? Now then, if Scott Williams, and I'm not wanting to hex his meeting, but if Scott Williams goes on to win the uh, Depreco 100 UK Super Prix, Will he run the SP plate or the O plate? Because he's the O plate holder at the moment. Well, he put the O in the middle, it'd be a sop, couldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> he laid pretty wide fairing at the front. Uh, so, it's oof. a battle, though, isn't it? 42, there Adam Sirrett. Obviously, when you, when, you, when you drive these things in the wet, there's no subtlety, is there? There's no subtlety of input here. It's not finesse. It's like, oh, right that way, oh, right that way. You yeah. can pick up on three wheels to get it round a second ago to come round the... Uh, the hairpin at Ashby. With the direct drive, it's a very it's a balancing act on the throttle because oh, what a spinner. Oh, gone. The brakes. He, he obviously tried to take the brakes. It just wasn't the grip there. And it span round there when Adam Sirrett. Will he get going again? He's going to give it a shot. This is the problem, of course. He's spinning the Rotax. He's just looking embarrassed. Yes. Press go again. Yeah. These things, 99 times out of 100, you have stalled it. Well, it, the engine doesn't stop on a Rotax, man. Yeah, exactly. Look, it, it, it'll still go because... And you've got, and you got a start button. <laughs> And if it does, yes, you've got to start it. But Adam Sirrett, out of second place, spinning off down the field as the leader comes through to complete two laps. Scott Williams it is leading. Nicky Richardson. Nicky Richardson, uh, cadet all plate winner from 1994. He was deemed to be Lewis Hamilton's biggest let's, let's, competitor let's, let's in the, uh, the period. Let's back the red-nosed car. That's, the, uh, the that's it. So give me the whole Nicky Richardson story. Well, Nicky Richardson, Lewis Hamilton, f fairly recently was asked who his major competition was throughout his career, and that's the man right there in that red card and the red helmet. Nicky Richardson, 1994 all-plate winner and British champion in cadets, and that's the, that is the driver, that Lewis Hamilton, seven-time Formula One world champion, when he first started karting, Nicky Richardson was the man he aimed to beat, and he struggled to do so. And Nicky showing that uh, you need a huge budget and someone to underwrite your career all the way to Formula One, because Nicky is quite happy to be here at the Depreco 100 UK Super Prix. And there he is in his, Gilles, oh. his helmet colour, homage to Gilles Villeneuve. He carries the 27, and when I spoke to him in the paddock yesterday, <laughs> I said, why are you carrying the 27? And he, he's, he's, not young, he's not old enough. To remember Gilles Villeneuve in period, but it, he comes from a massive motorsport, passionate family. His, his name, Nicky, is N I K I. Ah, oh, like Louder. Yes, named after Nicky Louder. There he is down the inside Lapping of the, the 73. 73. Yeah, that's not. Scott uh, Bakayoki. Not for position. Nicky Richardson chasing down the all plate holder, Scott Williams. And you can just see the amount of effort it's taking to find a little bit of grip in the front end and then balance that direct drive throttle. I was just about to say, Nick, it's very, very tricky on these direct drive carts. You re it really is a very delicate throttle application in these conditions because the wheels will spin. The yep. moment you even breathe, you know, you think about the throttle, you start spinning the back wheels if you were... The other problem is when the wheels will lock. And, and on the, the other, brakes... That's, that's the other yeah, issue, because when, when it locks, the engine stops. That, that is a thing, yeah. <laughs> I mean, obviously, we'll get going again if you've got some momentum, but that can really kind of upset it. I mean, I, I'm feeling less bad about some of my appalling driving in the early 90s now, seeing this. Because, <laughs> <laughs> of course, there was, there was no coverage in the 90s. You never got a chance to look back and see what everyone else would do. You just sat there going, why am I facing the wrong way? Why am I, in the, why am I on the... And this is great. There's several people who are making the same mistakes I made back 30 years ago. Did it's it fantastic. To, did it used to happen very quickly for you, did it? I, <laughs> you poor thing. I, yeah, I think I, I think we were discussing yesterday. I mean, you, you were talking about how you won every single heat in the final. I think in my entire two years, I, I, did, got, I did that once. <laughs> I got one second place. That was it. Uh, I, I was I was underinvested. I was massively underinvested and massively under talented. Everybody was. No, 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 no. No, there was still some head on cash. Just to clarify, Nicky Richardson there on the 27. He was Super One Cadet Champion in '94, and he was the Cadet All Plate Holder in '92 and '94. So we really are revisiting the 90s karting world here. And we've got a bit of a, a 1990s karting superstar there in that form. And just 
It's um, and just look at that majestic way he's controlling the cart there on the on the brakes into the corner. Pure, beautifully balanced throttle, staying off that exit curb. No need to get all the way out there onto the wetter curbing. Um, just to remind everybody that uh, we're watching the number 27, Nicky Richardson, in second place. He's about four seconds behind Scott Williams, who currently leads. Simon Newby is in third. He's further six seconds behind. And then we've got um, a further nine seconds, or sorry, three and a half seconds. And then Will Cottrell comes through. Will Cottrell starting this race on the front row, now in fourth. Sean Davies. Sean is a further seven and a half seconds behind in fifth. Paul Strether through in sixth. Adam Surratt. Now, Adam in the number 42 was that car that we saw spinning out the second place. So, Adam, not too bad getting back into this race and up to seventh. Brendan Williams is in eighth. Richard Steele, ninth. And rounding off the top ten, Bradley Dyson. Let's just drop back to the next one, which is Simon Newby. I think a couple of people were saying they were wondering what he was doing. He's done, uh, uh, on the, on the uh, chat. He goes into the boot. That's the 35 car in third. He's holding the... Uh, the, I think he's gained, actually. I don't think he's three seconds behind anymore, is he? He was... Uh, 2.2 last time. Maybe yeah, they come across the line. One, yeah, really? Nicky's had a bad lap. 1.9. Yeah, Nicky had a, they both, they've all lost. It's Scott Williams is actually loving these conditions. He's got it down to a 102.1 fastest lap now. So, again, I'm looking to my right for the next set of carts, which is the uh, see They also seem to have decided they're going to go for wets, but it must be getting really on the edge now. I mean, there is no... In fairness, there is no dry line yet, Joe, but it's um, it's you are sitting on... My guess is, actually, that it's, it's because you're sitting on gunk rather than on damp. You're, <laughs> you're, you're sitting on emulsion. It's still one of those track conditions. I love your emulsion. Wreck you. I second your emulsion. I think <laughs> I, I would love to be able to go across there to the Park Verme and just check on the tyre wear. That's the geek in me who really wants to see what sort of conditions we've got out there. I'd like to have we, a wet tyre franchise. It, it really is 90s karting, Nick, as we look around, as we, as we follow uh, the number 35 of Simon Newby around and just look off to the sides of the track. We've got uh, quite an attrition rate, and I'll just yeah. try and clarify exactly how many carts we've lost from... Uh, there was 22 carts qualified for this um, for this Group B Heat 1. Uh, 18 carts took the start, and with 20 seconds remaining, we'll pick up the leader, Scott Williams, who's on the all plate, just ahead of these two carts there on screen at the moment, so just ahead of Nicky Williams there, just going through that section. Yeah, the big O. Uh, showing why he is the O, isn't he, really? Yes, he really has. <laughs> waltzed away, hasn't he? So he's going to come back for his last lap. So we can see where the O is at the moment. Is he? Oh, no, no. There he is, just picking him up now. Coming through down the back straight. and onto the back straight to the boot for the penultimate time. Zero time on the clock now, so he will get the one lap to go aboard. So Scott Williams really has shown a masterclass in the Depreco 100 UK Super Prix. This is Group B. We've got a huge grid of 100 UK competitors, so we've split them into three groups. And the finishing order of Heat 1 will give these drivers their starting position for Heat 2. And then later this afternoon, we've got a C final, a B final, and the overall A final more of the qualification process. But of course, if you, qu you have a horrible day and qualify for the C final, you can still make the A final because it's bumper. You can still up. make the A final, yes. Yes, and I've got information as to exactly how many runners will do that. So I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not even sure if everyone's gone out for these, in the, in these early wet races. They've just gone into all right, all the... I'll sit at home. A lot of people have, 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 have gone out, done a lap and gone that. It's not for me, thanks very much. Well, this is, a, this is, this is budget karting at its very highest. I mean, it's, you know, we, we are on a, in a cost... It's a cost effective formula 100 UK it was brought in in the 90s early 90s as that very thing a cheap way of going car entry level karting as Scott Williams crosses the line and takes the first checkered flag for group B and the gap at the line last time by as Nicky Richardson comes through in second 7.7 .7 seconds he was going faster and faster each time by Simon Newby is 1.3 seconds behind in third Will Cottrell one and a half seconds behind in fourth. Adam Sirrett, a recovering, a great recovery drive to fifth. He spun out a second, if you remember, Nick, and he's moved up the order, up to fifth. He'll be happy with that after that uh, little four part. Sean Davies threw in sixth. Paul Strether across the line in seventh. We wait for the eighth place carts of Brendan Williams to consolidate that one in the number 11. He does that, takes his checkered flag. 
Ninth is Richard Steele. Bradley Dyson rounds off the top ten. And then we wait for a bit of a battle there. Last time by Justin Warwick and just getting ahead of Lee Jackson. And he stays there for clinching that 11th spot. 12th is Lee Jackson. Sergio Taggio will finish in 13th. Scott Biaccio, uh, sorry, Scott Biacci is in 14th. And then we did indeed lose Callum Bergman, Tyler Ballard, Tom Purchase and Duncan McLeod. Four carts out. I'm sure I saw more than four guards there yeah, I think by the wayside. Yeah, a lap. But, uh, uh, I think I, I, do we need, I need some restarting the cart. There's, there's, there's a couple collected in the I middle there who actually have, have stopped and are now trying to restart to get back to the pits. And, yeah, it's probably flooding. Yeah, these are... Uh, so we have a couple of comments on the uh, stream that how smoky these carts are. This is because these are proper old-fashioned two-strokes. So it's... Um, it's no, they're not four-strokes. They're two-strokes. There's oil in the... Uh, in the fuel, then you have a percentage mix. That mostly it's actually we found castor oil, so it's back to the old castor R, which is fantastic news. Um, the other thing which you would know if you were here is they're a lot noisier than your modern carts, and it's one of the reasons uh, I'm afraid for the partial demise of these machines is has been noise rigs. So some tracks actually can't run them because they are a bit too noisy for stuff that's near uh, built-up areas. But obviously here we're in the middle of nowhere near the M1, so there's no issue at all. But I think you say Warden Law can't run them. Is that right? Yeah, we're, we're really struggling. My local track at Warden Law, um, we struggle to run two strokes. The direct drives two strokes like these, um, like these 100 UKs. I'm, I'm going to look at ways of seeing how we can get them to travel all the way to the northeast. I would love to they, be. They, I mean, they sound great and they smell great. I mean, they do. It, they absolutely if do. You're, if you're an old petrol head like, well, old petrol head like well, Joe and myself, there is nothing quite like the smell of a two-stroke. It is a fan. I remember I've, I've, I've you know, ridden two strokes. I've raced two strokes, and. It's it's great. I mean, I'm sure it probably have taken five years off my life, but it's fantastic breathing in the in the fumes. <laughs> it's great, and they and they and they and they're interesting. They, they're quite. Whilst most single cylinder two can sound a bit edgy because they've actually got little. They've, they've sort of red limited. They actually sound quite nice as well. They haven't got that nasty. Ding, 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 ding well, the they're, they're, they're a lower rever. Mm. The, the, the engine's restricted to somewhat, and I'll, I'll try and find out exactly what that is. But the, this when when Formula TKM yep. came out in the early 90s, it was a budget formula. It was an entry level form of karting at the time. 100 Britain, 100 National was um, a relatively expensive way. That was what the uh, the major national championships and along came uh, Formula TKM using these 100cc TKM engines, air cooled. Uh, Talco motors uh, produced uh, motors that were very reliable because of the slightly lower rev range from them. Um, the, the chassis, uh, two bearing rear axle, a 30 mil axle. Uh, only allowed and um, no caster or camber adjustment on the front end so no geometry adjustment to get lost in no ride height adjustment like modern day carts that you will see in Rotax Max and uh, I am X30 classes in the British Championships that uh, are actually out of Rower today the X30s and uh, so really do we are really going back in time with this uh, Depreco 100 UK Super Pre and None of the car manufacturers uh, latching on and building modern-day contemporary versions of these 1990 carts. All of these carts that you see out this afternoon are from period and raced in the 90s, have been in sheds and garages throughout the country and have been brought out for time. in my shed. Uh, pole position then, Ryan Cole with Lee Hatton. I've just got an old lawnmower, but nothing useful in I've my shed. I've got a car in the shed. Everybody should have a car yeah, what in the shed. What type of car is in the shed? shed. Sorry, you need, yeah. you need to decorate that. Ryan, we'll come back to that. <laughs> Ryan Cole and Lee Hatton on the first row, on the front row. Ian Henderson and Dominic Pine on the second. Paul Monks, James Lovell on row three. Row four is Ryan Gill and M. Lawrence. Uh, row five is Sean Taylor and Pete Birchinall. Dennis Barclay and Owen Potter are on row six. Row seven is Marcus Gray and uh, C. Cook Martin. Uh, uh, Pete Gerrard and Craig Caldwell are on the 15th and 16th slot. 17th and 18th is Thomas Evans and Andrew Bradley and Dean Walker in 19th. Well, it's a kind of a split start, isn't it? There's a few carts even not even catching up. A few stragglers at the back, but we have given the go-ahead to start racing, and it looks like the field are already towards Christmas corner, and it looks like we've had no offs, which we've become familiar with. It's certainly the number 21 of Ryan Cole, pole position cart, uh, starting on the pole position and leading this field round. And dare I see it, Nick, it looks like we... Oh, and a dive down the inside from Lee Hackett. And Lee Hackett goes very wide indeed. That's going to allow Ryan Cole back alongside into the left-hander at Wilkins, down the very short straight to uh, Auziers, and out of the, the, the right-hand kink onto the back straight towards the boot for the first time. Battle for first and second, also a battle for third, as I think that's Dominic Pine 
moving ahead of the number 411 of Ian Henderson. We'll see how that pans out as they come across the line for the first time, already out of the boot now. And the leader, looking to me very much like the number 41, uh, sorry, the number 411 of Ian Henderson. It was Ian Henderson that got into the lead. Ryan Cole second, Paul Monk's third, Dominic Pine fourth, Lee Hackett fifth, James Lovell sixth, Sean Taylor seventh, Ryan Gill eighth, ninth is Paul Birchnell, and rounding off the top ten, Dennis Barclay. Cole and uh, Henderson having a fantastic battle. They've changed the, the position to lead twice, but it's the net effect that Henderson's got back in again, coming up the straight towards Christmas Corner. It was a short lead there for Ryan Cole. He's now got to fend off Paul Monks and Dominic Pine. Suddenly, we've, uh, we've got our first massively competitive race. Perhaps it's just come to a point where there's enough dryness for many different lines to work. And then the 44 now of Monks looking to get up the inside of the 21. And they're both trying to have a bit of a go at Henderson, who's, who's showing off having three numbers on his car, isn't he? <laughs> yes, he is. And he's... Uh, he's you know what? It, to me, Nick, the track is beginning to just transition into what is a dry line. The yeah. carts are slipping and sliding a lot less than we've seen in the previous two heats for Groups A and B. This is Group C for the Depreco 100 UK Super Prix, and a very fine battle beginning to develop. It's a, it's a four-car battle beginning to develop. They're already uh, out on the straight. And up the inside there was uh, Cole. And I think he has, once again, he's got the lead coming up towards Christmas Corner. This time, it was an over and under last time by uh, Henson, but he's kind of cut off a bit there, the 44 of Monk, stopping him make that move and being slightly dropped now is Pine, but there's, I expect he's now got the watching brief, Joe, waiting for them to take each other off. It's a very fast section out of Christmas Corner through Inkermans and down that short straight downhill, entering into Ashby Hairpin. Huge runoff curb out of Ashby that you can really keep the momentum they're already almost back with us just in front of us onto the back straight and it is indeed our poor man of Ryan Cole he's re-established himself at the front of this field and if anything Nick he's dropped Henderson slightly that's about three cart lengths in between them that's the biggest gap we've seen for this whole heat yeah the battle's now for second Henderson got a little nudge actually and through went Monks there he kind of uh, just nudged him out as he went through the top of the boot and he's uh, benefited from that so the 44 that's what? tyre pressure, that's, that's tyre pressure for 411. He's just dropping away, he's dropping like a stone through the field. And that, that's the, as the track begins to dry, whatever the tyre pressure is for Ian Henderson in that wet tyre on this ever drying track, that's not gonna, that's not helping him at all. He's got fourth place Dominic Pine all over him. So the 44 in second, Monks looks like he's wearing a vintage Tony Carter uh, outfit as well, which is quite good. He's going for a yeah, 90s, uh, a 90 set of overalls too. I actually probably couldn't, but it probably wouldn't actually pass the, uh, the, uh, <laughs> no, it the yeah, yeah, just yeah, because yeah. of the design. Yeah, cool. And they've, we've now, we had a four, and now we split into two twos. The first and second, Cole and Monks. That Henson, you said dropping, you were surmising for tire issues, is now in third, and there he is fending off the 39 of Dominic Pine and Pine perhaps he'll follow through what Monks did nudge him up the inside here at the boot look oh, wiser now the 411 and holds his line didn't get a little help in there in his kind of like early uh, Sassel Jordan logo 7-up Jordan uh, uh, overalls and it's a big gap isn't it between the two, the two pairs they've just gone haven't they the, the two guys at the front uh, Ryan Cole and Paul Monks now establishing themselves fastest lap of the heat so far from the second place the number 44 so though this heat is not over yet, that is five seconds faster than the last heat. We've absolutely hit that tipping point, and I reckon if somebody been brave enough to go on the slicks right now, they'd be uh, they'd be absolutely laughing. It's five seconds faster than just ten minutes ago with the last heat. They are. We are seeing a challenge. The thing is, Nick, if you did go out on slicks, you might have lost a lot of ground in those early couple of laps. So it is a massive gamble. I'm not sure what the decision factor is going to bring in for the next runners who are already in the collecting area to come out it's the f-160s the pro cards and the f-300s i'm not sure what tire choice they're going to make but right now you're either on the wrong tire pressure or on the absolute edge of those wet tires going right off and giving you no grip at all yeah i'm looking at the 411 and uh, you can almost see the uh, the pounds falling off the grip as they go <laughs> around it's spinning off pound coins let's concentrate on the first two and here they are it's the 21 of ryan cole and the 44 of monks i wonder if that 44 is a number he's always had or become a bit of a lewis hamilton tribute number the uh, 21 yeah cole now just just began to give himself what six cart lengths though he lost a couple going into the hairpin at ashby I think we're seeing now, we, we saw just a couple of laps ago, Paul Monk's absolutely all over the rear end of Ryan Cole in the 21. Now he's dropped away, and it looks to me as though Paul Monk's is beginning to struggle a little bit for grip. Those, those treaded wet tyres just hit a dry track, and within a couple of laps, you can completely destroy them, and your cart is basically floating around on jellied rubber. 
um, on seeing that, he's closed up through the boot for the sixth time. Six laps completed then, with coming up to two minutes remaining. Still plenty of time for Paul Monks to challenge for the lead of this Group C Heat 1. Through Fine Lady and towards Christmas, Ryan Cole with a bit of a glance behind as he went up the... Uh, Manuel's bank straight, and the, uh, it's interesting, isn't it? Because he seems to be able to pull it out, but through this little inner section here, moving into Ashby, suddenly Monks got him right on his tail again. So, uh, just wondering whether perhaps the, uh, the the straight line grip of the 21 is, is better, but the cornering is slightly better of Monks. But uh, could it be they're happy at different parts of the track? Because it is, seems to be constantly evolving grip. They've uh, settled on a 57, 58 second lap, so they've uh, they're not accelerating, improving that quickly. But uh, they're into the boot then, oh. Nick, for the seventh time, and they close right up as they exit the boot there. No need to clip that curb there, nose to tail through pit bend and across the line to complete what will be seven laps. It's the number 21 of Ryan Cole leading Paul Monks in the 44 in second. They take the outer line, the wetter line, that's what these wet tyres need to cool off ever so slightly down the middle of the track for the leader, Ryan Cole, into Christmas corner then. For the eighth time, time running out for Monks to have a go. He's having a look. He is indeed. He's right on the bumper of the leader. These carts sporting nose cones, of course, and using all of that exit curb out of the Ashby hairpin into Wilkins, the left-hander, short straight before Ogiers, and then that very fast exit. Cart skittering around, looking for grip through the right-hand king onto the back straight, and then towards the boot for what will be eight laps completed next time by... Oh, the beautiful Boy, move Monk's gone for it. Beautiful move. He much more confident on the brakes. Just took a line there as uh, as cold. Took the, the conservative. It's a bit damp line. And, and Monk said, no thanks, I'll just dive through. Ten seconds on the clock, so they've got two laps remaining. And the battle for Group C, heat number one, is hotting up now. Absolutely nose to till. Paul Monk's leads. Ryan down the inside, though. Ryan Cole down the inside in the 21. And these two swapping positions, this is twice now in the space of one lap. The number 44 just moving down the inside towards that right-hander at Ashby. Looking They're side it. by side into Wilkins. And it's Ryan Cole who's got the ideal line. He moves down the inside, though, which is Monks. Has he got enough momentum to get this? He has indeed. Oh, and also, yeah, the 21 there of uh, Cole just drifted out and lost so much time. He has, and time's running out because they're on the back straight for the pen penultimate time. Down towards the left-hander at the boot, then into the double apex right-hander now. He carries a lot of speed, doesn't he? Paul Monk through there. Into pit bend then for the penultimate time. They'll see that ever-welcoming last lap to go aboard. Through the... Uh the crook up for the final time. And Monks is established a small lead. Cole comes looks to the inside as they go right through the top of Christmas corner. And it looking a bit better for the 21. Cole, he's, he's, he's got just fine, but let, and suddenly Monks has put himself a little bit of daylight. He's, he flicks the card in to the hairpin. Accelerating away through Wilkins. And suddenly there's daylight between the two of them. And I'm not sure whether Cole has said, well, it's fine, I'll take this. I'll get a, a front row start next time round. I think he hasn't really got a choice, has he, as they uh, continue on that final lap. It's been a, a good, good entertaining race from these two at the front, hasn't it? Paul Monks right, right. there once he got by, and they're out of the boot and into the final turn of Pit Bend to take the flag. Then Paul Monks takes a very fine win in the number 44. Ryan Cole, just under a second in second place overall. We have to wait uh, a little bit of time there. That's how, that's how far these two went ahead. Ian Anderson just clinches that third place ahead of Dominic Pine in fourth spot. Lee Hackett comes through in fifth. There goes Paul Birchnell in the number 20 in sixth. James Lovell in the number two was seventh. Ryan Gill confirms that eighth place. Paul Von Gerard is in ninth. Owen Potter comes through, rounding off the top ten. Matthew Lawrence, it will be in 11th. We just wait for Dean Walker to take his check and flag just ahead of Dennis Barclay and Andrew Bradley in 13th and 14th. Dean Walker was in 12th. There goes Bradley. Thomas Evans completes 10 laps and finishes 15th. And I'm thinking... Yeah, well, that might that. Be we've got 15 across the line. I think we've got, uh, we may get Chris Cook Mars as well to complete the final yes, lap. Yes, we have. Yeah. Uh, and then he's so got three who, uh, who, who fell by the wayside. 
Uh, that's probably indicative just of it's a bit, more, it's a bit dry. We got down to a 56.2 fastest lap. So um, we are getting close to the dry time. So that, of course, next, that's the end of the, uh, the runs of the 100 UKs. Next out is the ever exciting F300 F160s. And we've got a slight variation to the program, Nick. Um, this is not a heat, this is a timed qualifying session. All oh, uh, right. The F160s are the twin engine pro carts, and the F300s are the single engined some of which are 250cc four-stroke engines, some of which are rotary wankel engines, which are a very interesting so concept in engineering. Why, why, do we know why this has become timed? timed do we know why this has become a timed qualifying heat, Lauren? Because they ask. Are they all going to be time qualified? We've got two heats. No, no, no. Here. We've got two heats. Okay, so this is the time qualifying then two heats, and, and most of these boys are on slicks. I think because a lot of these carts, the pro, we certainly didn't have this amount of pro carts here yesterday, Nick. No, they've turned up. So they've turned up today. Again, pro card, very, very cost effective way of going karting. The engines are absolute this, bulletproof. That's quite a big grid, isn't it? It's a huge grid, yes. It's a huge grid of carts. Um, so they've asked for time qualifying, so we, we're going to have a. I make think it a, said make a six-minute qualifying session. Yeah, make it a one-day event rather than uh, yes. it was an element of a two-day event. Yeah. Uh, Kevin Blackburn says, brilliant colour for bringing back memories. Well, yes, we're, we're, we're bringing back the memories. We're scraping them from the back of our heads as we speak, aren't we, really? From the we are. We're, we're loving it. We're, we're doing the best we can. It. This, I always find this direct drive, single-cylinder, air-cooled, whether it be a TKM engine or whatever it, it was, you know, the rotary valves, the reed valves came through. This was always... Formula TKM, Junior TKM, became one of the primary classes uh, in the country um, because it was such a cost-effective formula. Um, it, so the, you know, the Depreco Super Prix is really sort of taking us back in time to those halcyon days of mid-90s karting of when, you know, th this, th there would be a British Championship, a Super 1 Championship for the category. Well, we're, we're reliving that, certainly. And, uh, yeah, we join you in those... Uh, creating those memories and taking you back with the Carling TV Live, no, it's Carling Live time TV. machine. Carling Live TV. TV. I knew yeah. I'd do that. It's Carling it's Live it's TV fine. time machine. It's the first time, you know. It is, yes. Yeah, I, I, I need you to should have that written down for us, Nick. Get that tattooed on your head. <laughs> Not you could see if it was on your head in fairness. Um, so, yes, yeah, so they're waiting for the, uh, the clearance of the, uh, the dead carts from the 100 UK. These guys do have clutches, so they should be able to rescue themselves as an issue. And we have a six-minute qualifying session. So... Let's gonna see what that brings. And, and what tyres are they on? What did you see out there? It was slicks, just about everybody I could see. Right. There may yeah. be a couple on the back who were on wets, but so far everything's... There's one set of wets I can see there on the five cart. Um, but the wet, I think most people on dry, the one person facing the wrong way, which is uh, never a great thing. It's a, uh, it's a great view there for the, uh, the picnic tables of Crook Corner. Now, my last count when I saw the, um, the warm-up this morning was seven... F300 class runners and 14 twin engine pro kart runners in the F160s, which is what we're calling them this, week, this weekend. The F300 class, Nick, we've got seven carts. It's a choice of the Swiss Auto 250cc um, single barrel um, engine on some of the carts and the Wangal Axero uh, engine on others. Well, now, we're, the we're, we're the 13 car at the moment, who's one of these uh, F300s. Uh, what is he running in? I think that's, that looks to me like a Swiss Auto 250. Eared Shotter. So a 250cc single cylinder, uh, obviously yeah. not running a tremendously high state of tune because you can get 90 horsepower of a two-stroke 250. 36 newton metres of torque, though. What's that, what's, that in, what's that in pound foot? I'm not sure, but that fires you out of the corner like you're being shot out of a car. Or in this case, it spins the wheels. <laughs> or in this case, spins the wheels if you're out on six on a damn track. Uh, but they're very, very quick. They're, the F300s, we should see producing quicker lap times, slightly quicker lap times of about a second to two seconds quicker than the F160 Pro Karts. However, um, as we've come through, it's only one, but the, the first of their the flying laps. So we, um, was this a six minute session, Lauren? Lauren, six minutes? Six minute qualifying. We need to look for the best time. It's been timed like a race, but obviously we, we do get the best laps we can, uh, which we'll talk to you about. We're currently the best, best that's ever. This is completing his second flying lap is Schotter in the 13. And he's gone round in a 57.09, but behind him, the 43 cars. But if we drop back one to the 43 car, but I think it's a pro car. Uh, yeah, so that's the, the, the pro car. We've got a car off there. That's a 43. That, he went round in a 
seven. Well, I, I think you've just hit the nail on the head, Nick. With 35 newton meters of torque, it's very, very hard for the F300s to put the power down on a very tricky track surface. Hence, we're seeing the F160, the twin engine pro cards, two of which are at leading the qualifying session. James Walker on the number 131, his time of 55.2, ahead of the 55.7 of Green King in the front. And in those of you watching, um, the timing on the side is actually telling you the difference in the qualifying times. The overall time doesn't mean an awful lot, but it does mean that the one from Dave Walker has the fastest lap time. If he's half a second faster than the next fastest lap time, Graham King is actually leading. We've got Graham King here on the 43, and he's gone a tiny bit. No, he hasn't gone any faster at all. And you'll now see Jack Goodyear go to second uh, with a 56 5.6, but still, it's James Walker in the 131 who is fastest in qualifying uh, at the moment with a <coughs> apologies 54.8. Uh, 55.6, the fastest F300 time, Jack Goodyear on the front row. There's Lee Mitchell, he's just popped up into second spot overall. He's on a pro cart, 55.3 his lap time. Jack Goodyear on the first of the F300s. Maybe the tyres are just beginning to come up to optimum and being able to give them some proper grip around this Wilton Mill track. Yellow flag into uh, Crook. I'm not sure if someone's through oblivion. I'm not sure if someone's off, the, off, off there. A couple of carts on the side of the track. Uh, I'm not sure how that affects qualifying. Obviously, you can't overtake in any way. No, this is a race. Yeah, but qualifying, you still can't overtake. Now, out there on the circuit, I'm going to try and see where he is, and we, perhaps our cameras can pick him up. We have a cart suit which has the... What car are we looking for? I'm going to find out when he passes. You don't, no, you don't know what number it is? I don't know what number it is. Brilliant. Yet. I've just picked him up. I've picked up his... Is this the with the Ed Senna? Ed Senna replica, yeah, replica rear suit. Yeah, but we, we, I don't know if we should be on camera because it's got um, uh, the actual proper sponsorship of the cigarette company on it. You know, I'm not happy about it. I see it's got Honda across the front. No, it's got the, it's got the M word on the back. Oh, can we not? Well, of course we can. I you know, we could do what we want. Here he comes. Well, we can't, we can't the... break rules of the uh, broadcasting. There so, he is, cart number 44 again. Number 44, just going into the boot at the moment through the left hand. Yeah. Now we come under, he's going to come underneath you, Ash, any minute now. The uh, black side pods and the red suit. Not that one, Ash. Not that one. One more. There, there he is, go. going away from us. Yeah. He told you he had the naughty word in the back. <coughs> Excuse. Excuse me. Yeah. There he is through oblivion. And Crook and out towards... Is it a replica uh, or is it a real one? It's an actual replica because you wouldn't be able to wear a real one because it's not wear resistant. Uh, now, I walked up to him and I actually felt his cloth oh, well, yesterday. Um, we're just going to get him there. They're just, in the, just to the right of the picture there, in the red suit with the white helmet. Yeah, drop back one, Harry. Just dropping back one of the competitors there, there into the right-hander at Ashby, that, isn't it? Well, we'll get yourself on, on camera by having yeah. any So suit. I walked up to him. What number was he? 40-something. 44, yeah. 44, Nicholas Clear. Um, he's a guy about the same age as me. That old? So, yes, he's really <laughs> old. Yeah. Um, Middle-aged chap, and he's in an Ayrton Senna replica suit, which we're going to try and get a proper good look at. And it's from, like, the, the Ayrton Senna's replica suit from 1991 when he was driving for Honda McLaren. And it's a great... And I walked up to him, and I felt these cloths, and I went... Because really really I'm thinking, really shouldn't feel it was is this the real? I said, is this a cart suit or a fire suit? And he said, it's a cart suit. And I did feel it, and it was. It's a wear-resistant suit. So where can I get one of these? Um, he said he's had it years. Uh, I, I absolutely love that. Well, and I said to him, oh, you sure you love the '69 cart in the uh, Brabham BT44 colours? Yes, I do. We'll, we'll have a look at that in a moment. We'll, we'll get back we to the serious bit. Run. All right, there's the <laughs> chat. We've got to get back to the serious bit of who's fastest. It, well, Oliver Warner. Oliver Warner in the. So we've got one, two, three, four, four F300s that have come to the fore towards the end of this session. Just wait for the field to come through, and we'll tell you who's fastest uh, because it's changing. It's changing all the time. The track is transitioning to become ever faster. Pole position time at the moment is a 49.852 for Oliver Warder. Jack Goodyear is on a 50.848. Matt Cater in the 64. That's the uh, rotary engine of Matt Cater on that 64. He's on a 51.2. And then we've got Jason Cooper in the 69 in fourth overall. And then in fifth overall, George McCrea. He's the first of the Pro Karts, first of the F-160s. 
in the 160 fastest time, 52.874. So that's the difference between the F300s and the Pro Karts. Sixth overall is Graham King, second in Pro Karts. Third in Pro Karts is Graham Craig or uh, Omerod. Uh, Oliver Clark is in uh, eighth place overall and in fourth place, fourth quickest of the Pro Karts. Lee Mitchell is fifth quickest of the Pro Karts in ninth overall and then in tenth overall, uh, we've got Gary Woodward, he's on an F300. Uh, Oliver Parcel is 11th, he's on a pro card. James Walker's on a pro card in 12th. George King, also pro card uh, mounted, is in 13th. Ian Shotter, he's on an F300, he's in 14th. Neil Slaughter comes through in 15th, he's on a pro card. In fact, uh, no, not all of the rest of the runners are on pro cards. Neil Slaughter win Brazil in 16th, Jason Thatcher in 17th, Andrew Bailey in 18th. They're all on pro cards. And the final F300 runner, Nicholas Clear, in the Eaton Centre replica. I said to him, is it worth about, is, what, what's it worth a lap then? About a second and a half? He says, uh, he needs, needs more than that <laughs> yes. to help me. Uh, but he's enjoying his karting and he's, uh, it's great to be having Nicholas Clear in that Eaton Centre replica suit here at Wilton Mill. Malcolm Freeman and William Seymour round off the 21 cart field in 20th and 21st, respectively. They're both on pro carts. And Lauren is here with my grid. For so here we go off with the uh, right. the RR Heavy, and we have a combination of slicks and dries and someone uh, running out of time to change the slicks, which is the 281. He actually ran out of time to change the tyres before the start of the race. Ah, So uh, he's now got off. And, and walked off. Um, oh, so no, quite, a shame. quite a small grid of the 100 uh, TKM heavies. I've got the grid here. Uh, M. Lawrence is on the pole position with alongside Nick Watkins, F. Atkinson. Fraser, um, Fraser Atkinson is in third spot from um, D. Uh, Kernigan, but he hasn't come out. Is the number, I think was it it number 67 that didn't I'm come out? I'm not sure. There was a couple. There's a bit of a panic. In, I'm not sure. We seem to have lost a few people, it has to be said, on the, yeah. uh, the warm-up. We're going to have a... A condensed race of, it uh, uh, looks like, five carts, I think. We've got five carts. Matthew Lawrence, Fraser Atkinson, Nick Watkins, Taylor Berry on the novice plate has come out. And Sean Deven of the Deven family is here. They are, of course, uh, used to be the owners of Rye House and, of course, the manufacturers of the Devenson Spring Carts, which were very, very, m very much the cart to have in this period contemporarily. So, five carts. About to go around the boot and start. Hopefully they'll be able to get themselves a, uh, a clean start. One of them's definitely on wet because I saw him go out on it. Um, so I think it's four slicks and one wet. So it'd be interesting to see um, who's better. My guess is that in this kind of semi-greasy dry, it'd be quite the same. Just one will be burning through a set of tyres and the other will be skimming the surface of theirs. And they power away. And it's the 31 and the 3. So it's Watkins and Lawrence. And it's actually Lawrence who sweeps into the, foot, into the lead as they go through the crook. And they'll turn back up Fine Lady and come up towards Christmas Corner. And, yep, in the lead is... And it's a long, long lead for Lawrence. He's absolutely leapt ahead. And, in fact, dropping like a stone. Challenge for uh, second. Is Atkins, it's Watkins, I think. I think Watkins is dropping down even more. So perhaps Watkins was the guy who chose the wets. I'm not sure. Mm, we'll see. Um, I think that was Atkinson moving through into second there at Christmas Corner for the first time. All of these five carts... Uh, beginning to settle into what looks like a more dry line there, beginning to develop for them. Did you say they're all on slick? No, I, think, I think there's one car on wet, and I think it's Devon. I think it's Devon, Sean Devon on 29. But we'll, uh, we'll find out when they go underneath us, because they, they look very different. And uh, up close now, it's Lawrence, who's uh, leapt away and is leading. Uh, and I think it's uh, going to be Atkinson who'll be scored second next. I'm not 100% certain. No, it's the 40 cart. It is Atkinson, then Watkins, and absolutely the 29, 29 cart of Devin, who's at the back, unfortunately, is the man who selected the wet tyres. I sh yeah. I'm, I, are you sure he's on wet? I couldn't quite see there as he went by. Uh, Sean oh, Devin at he the is. rear of the field. He is, he, has dropped, he is dropping like a stone. Off in the lead, though, Matthew Lawrence. Just to remind everybody, these are slightly bored out to 115. So different to the runners that you'll see in the Depreco 100 UK Super 3. They are basically the same engine, but they've been bored out to 115cc. Just to give the heavier driver a bit of a chance. Gives yes, the, gives a the, bit more, a bit more try punch and, out of the to, uh, to retain the power to weight ratio. Yes, yeah. And as the number three continues, Matthew Lawrence, he's into the boot. Um, battle beginning to hot up for third between Nick Watkins and the novice driver, Taylor Berry. 
as they come through pit bend leader already through oblivion and into crook rest of the field just coming through oblivion 20, now that's a very nine definitely on wet very demanding first turn here at wilton mill so we're looking at that second third and fourth there's a third and fourth it's to say it's the 169 taylor berry and watkins in the 31 and they're sweeping through that little uh, left right complex for the hit the hairpin at ashby yeah, and that's a very very fast section track you accelerate out of the hairpin at christmas corner and it's literally the the left hand king into uh Inkerman's, the right hand sweep that's that's an acceleration zone it's just absolutely flat or well, you've got to get the cart set up to be able to take that flat for the run down to the downhill entry into the ashby hairpin which is not quite a 180 degree hairpin it's about a maybe a 150 degree hairpin with lots of curb on the exit to give you and help you maintain that momentum and keep the speed up towards the left-hander at Wilkins, which becomes a bit of a passing opportunity into Wilkins if you get a good run out of Ashby's. Um, but definitely track conditions beginning to come to these drivers on slick tyres, Nick. Definitely the tyre to have now. Yeah, we're down to 53 second laps for, you know, the, let's say the heavy boys. So they're going, to be, they're going a lot, lot quicker, um, which means more laps. It doesn't mean the heat's really fast because they're minutes plus a lap. So it doesn't actually change that in the slightest. So it's still an uh, equal amount of actual track time, but more laps will be completed. They've taken about 10 seconds, 12 seconds off the, uh, the wet time already. Um, it was never truly wet. It was never much more unpleasantly damp. I'm not sure when the next downpour is due because if you look at the <laughs> about sky... About right now. Well, uh, but yeah, uh, but if you look at the sky, it's looked threatening pretty much... Since it stopped raining, it's looked like, it's looked like it could rain Effect, at any moment. Effectively, the weather's been walking around the flick knife saying it's going to do it for a <laughs> while. Uh, and, you, and we're trying to talk it down. To, no, 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 calm down, calm down, don't do it. And I'm, I'm just with... Uh, we're getting towards half distance. These heats are eight minutes and one lap. We're getting towards four minutes of this second heat for our uh, TKM R Heart, the Retro Racer Heavy class. And next out will be our National Kart Club Senior Rotax Max classes and none of which are ah, they just begin to appear so i'm just wondering um all i'm already ahead of the game all, you know, on all on slick so yeah it's definitely a slick tired uh track condition so what's happened is Pe berry now has made up the gap towards atkinson this is now a battle for second long long way ahead is matthew lawrence but it's uh absolutely it's the battle here battle of royale as they go around the boot before getting around to the final corner and down that uh, Incredibly bumpy corner just there where I broke my rib doing my arcs test 20 years Sorry, ago. Sorry, you did what? Broke my rib on that corner. On the final turn? Yeah. Never it actually raced after passing the test because I kind of got told it wasn't a great idea. That was, that, was that, thing. that was my karting comeback. After my kart, I finally came back with decent finance, knowing what and, and theoretically knowing how to actually do anything, and then broke a rib. Didn't when you raced in? Did you race Formula TKM? No, I just missed that because TKM started in 94. And I Didn't you dislocate the shoulder or something? I dislocated the shoulder race 100 Britain heavy, yeah. I'm, I'm, 100 I'm, Britain heavy, that yeah. one. So you dislocated the shoulder running 100 Britain at, heavy. At Tilbury. You came back to karting with an arcs test here at Wilton Mill yeah, on a road axe man. And cracked the rib, yeah. And cracked the rib, yeah. Or brittle bones or something? No, I think it was unlucky, really. I think, I think it's a combination of uh, significant lack of talent uh, and uh, <laughs> bad luck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, I mean the, the, the got, yeah, I've never... Yeah, had issues with, with, with brew ribs cracking before. <laughs> just I think it's about an ill-fitting seat situation. You know, you kind of buy a second-hand car, rag it round to pass your test, hit a bump the wrong time, a bit of movement, and you're not got a rib protector. You just bring a, you know, a suit, and then again, oh, click, oh, that's gone. That's I often bad wonder why they call you Lucky Nick. Yes, well, that's because I get to work with you. Mm. On the nosy. There we are. Threw that one in well. Battle beginning to develop there, Nick. Well, it's between developed for a couple of laps. It has, and I think we've got a change there as Taylor Berry. Is that Taylor Berry and Nick Watkins there? Taylor Berry on the novice plate. That's why he's running the black number plate. You'll notice there on the 169. And just ahead of him on the road, I'm trying to see the number of that cart on the road. Is it that the number 40 of Fraser Atkinson just ahead of him? Uh, Atkinson's, uh, Atkinson is just ahead of him, yes. He's about to overtake. In fact, he's about to change second place. Yeah. Berry sweeps through there quite with, with pretty much uh, relative uh, ease, actually, as he comes around the top end of the boot. Uh, Barry lets him go, I think it has to be said, and uh, it gets the hurry up from a, a young man in front of us, so uh, obviously a supporter of the uh, 169 Taylor Berry. Matt Lawrence, miles ahead, 10 seconds ahead, and Sean Devin, who chose wet tyres, miles behind. And the other three kind of in a kind of a battle royale for those uh, lower podium places that wasn't about to qualify and not the final. 
Well, time ticking by for this uh, five-cart field. We had more than that qualified. We qualified nine carts, so we've already... Oh, well, there's one guy who... One guy went massively frustrated he hadn't finished his tyre change, wasn't there? And he got a salt off at the end of it. Right. Okay. Um, and I think we lost it. I think a couple of carts had some issues in the first heat. So, you know, in fairness, when you've got a nine-cart field, you can kind of think, well, I'll just get the final and see what I'm going to do. You have to yeah, it is true. It's not like you're at the back of a 30-car track. If you can think, oh, yeah. it's fine, I'll be seventh or sixth. And if he was on wet tyres, he's going to save himself the cost. Now, that looks like that cart is on wet tyres, Nick. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. 169 has gone wet. Um, Lawrence definitely was on slick, so we're in a kind of a... Uh, but interestingly, he was six seconds slower that lap. Sorry, not six, he, was six, he was a sixth of a, a six point six of a second slower. Ah, six tenths. That's, that's nothing really. Yeah, six seconds slower. So, so we are obviously at the, an absolute crossover point, aren't we? Yeah, we really equally are. Equally as quick. He's pulled out a nine and a half second lead, and as we've got Taylor Berry on the novice plate moving up into second, we are, I believe he's on wet tyres, and I believe the number 40 behind him, Fraser Atkinson, also on wet tyres. So it's just about, it's about how those tyres are wearing out as to the performance of these carts from second down hole. But Nick Watkins came through in fourth with Sean Deven on the Devenson sprint, the family cart mark. Uh, of Sean there out on the family Davidson yeah, sprint. Sean's had a bad lap. He, he dropped he 16 has. seconds. I'm not sure they just gone. Oh, oh, I can see the chunks of cash coming off my tyres as I walk, as I go. But uh, the others are sweeping round the crook now. So nice, nice extension there. The one, the one six eight. So uh, six nine six. So Barry, who we now decided is actually on the wets, is able to pull a gap on the uh, on Axis and Watkins, but not on Lawrence. So it's a kind of a swings and roundabout situation, isn't it? Checkered flag being readied for the leader, Matthew Lawrence, who just heads into the left-hander of the boot now and will be with us. He's already put Sean Deven a, a lap down. Here he comes through the final bend, not quite picking up on the camera, but we'll, uh, we'll see the leader take the checkered flag and into second spot. We wait for Taylor Berry, who we steer with, just edging his backside out of that car to get the car to pick up out of the the boots he comes through second battle Ooh, still ongoing right the there yeah across the line i'll tell you what the gap was at point one two of a second so 12 hundredths of a second there between fraser atkinson in third and nick watkins in fourth sean Deven finishes his race just off the lead lap just off the lead lap but he'd be happy with that he's uh, he's enjoyed his time out there and uh best lap of 57 seconds for sean um, so five carts in the TKM Retro Racer Heavy class. They've completed their second heat, and their third heat will be uh, an amalgamation of the finishing positions in heat one and heat two, and we'll be giving you that when they go back out on track. Next out, though, Nick, it's the National Kart Club Senior Max. Two categories of carts uh, out next. The, uh, they're all Rotax Max carts. Mm. They're on the harder tyre. They're on the Maxis tyre, and this is the... The tyre test event. They're on an invitation. Finally, yeah, not finally on the tyres they're testing. I think I can't. I'm not sure if the first cart might. Now I think they are all on the slicks. I think they'll be, they They've been be told happen. to be on slicks. This is the whole reason we're here, boys. Now this is a the national the, the national kart club run a Road Axe Max championship um, across the season, and it's a it's a cost effective formula. It's cost effective a way to going Road Axe Max racing because the tyre formula very is very very important. The regulations allow just one set of tyres to stretch across three meetings. And when you consider that's a practice session, a qualifying session, three heats and a final, that's a big ask. So they, they're, they're trialling the new Maxxis Sport tyre uh, for next season. This is one of three, I think, uh, tyre trials to see what tyre the formula, the series is going to go with next year. Um, and, of course, heat one for these runners was indeed in wet conditions. So we didn't get a chance to try the Maxxis Sport uh, no. tire. We are now going to try them and of course we're going to see how they fare, we're going to be monitoring their lap times but uh, all of our competitors of which we have, let me have a look where, where am I might, uh, we had uh, quite a grid of the um, NKC runners out last time, just trying to find my grid for these. Ah, we roll. Watch them underneath me, and they've all got brand. Not only have they got the tyre testing, they've got brand new tyres. They've got lovely white walls on them, so they've all got fresh as a daisy tyres. 
It was right in front of me. Well, Lawrence, that's where it should Lawrence be. just helped a feeble old man out there by just not the first putting time. it right in front of me. Not face. the first time. So he too then for our Rotax Max class, uh, Chris Shiver on the pole position with alongside uh, Heat 1 winner uh, Milton Steele Vass, uh, Vassen. Uh, second row of the grid, third is um, Michael Mallett with alongside Tyler Fossey. Then we've got Tom Radburn and Jack Goodyear on row three. Row four sees Scott Russell and Mike Edwards. Row five, Bren Smith. Is that Bren Smith or Brent Smith? Um, I'm not sure he's gone out, actually. Tom Eldridge is starting 10th, and Alex Black will start in 11th spot. But I'm not sure we've seen Bren Smith out there. He hasn't, he hasn't clicked by our timing beam. They're already into the boot on their rolling lap, the Nick. And a very ordered grid there and it's Mil it, it looks like Milton Steele Vassen on the pole position so I've got that grid ordered around the wrong way on my sheet so there they go all off and away and from the second row that was Tyler Fossey I think in the triple six number cart as they go through uh, fine lady towards Christmas but uh, Steele Vassen says no thank you mate i'll have that as they accelerate out of christmas corner through increments that very fast right handed down into the ashby hairpin and just look at still vassen there pulling out the gap already through wilkins wow. towards osiers and now towards and onto the back straight with a gap of about 10 cart lengths, I would say, if not more. And they'll be enjoying the uh, the fruits of absolutely brand new tyres because they've all got a new set on for this test. And you can tell that by the shiny white walls uh, of these new versions of the Maxis to see whether they'll be taken up by the uh, the National Kart Club for their championship next season due to the shortage of the current Maxis tyres. And they've been discontinued, haven't they? So they're now going to find a new tyre. So this is a tyre test and a massive race. And so far, the test is being won by Milton Steele Vass, who from a standing start, well, not, not a completely full speed start, they did a 50.7 last time round, and pulled out over a second on the following carts. But now they've sweeping around behind. The gaps have stabilised. It's a, an ordinary fashion for the nine carts. It's Steele Vass from Foss, from Scribe, from Russell, from Eldridge, from Edwards, from Black, from Radburn, from Mallet and six and a half seconds cover the field as they cross the line last time round. Well, still Vassen leads overall, and he does indeed lead the 162 class. Leader in the 177s, second overall Tyler Fossey, with third overall Chris Driver. And they're coming through. I wouldn't exactly say nose to tail. Things beginning to space out. Fourth place cart there of Scott Russell. He's second in the 162s. And there's Tom Eldridge and Mike Edwards, fifth and sixth. They're on the 177s. Alex Black and Tom Radburn on the 162s in seventh and eighth. And Michael Mallett for last of the runners, ninth overall, and the last of the 177 looks, runners. Looks like the there. action's is third, fourth, and fifth. Yeah, so that's it where it's, it's going on at the moment. So that's Scriver, Russell, and Eldridge. Scriver, of course, I think he had a spin in the first one, didn't he? Um, yeah. So the third, fourth, and fifth are the closest. First, a long way away. Second, Fossey is, is there. So we look and see the... The third, fourth, and fifth. That's led by the multicolored cart number, trying to read it from a long distance away, 53. And then behind him, the green flashes on the side pod of the 20 of Russell. And that's you can see them as they come up to the boot. And it's interesting when you get these modern carts compared to the classics we've seen. It's just kind of the, uh, the extra look of the air of the nose. It's the extra look of the air of the cowling. You can see where the elements have been done. But, of course, the, there have been so many more changes made in, you know, if, if, we t if we move away from the obvious one, which is that, you know, it's, it's a clutch-driven four-stroke rather than direct drive two-stroke. Two-stroke. The, it's clutch-driven two-stroke, sorry. It, it's, but it's such a much easier a more adjustable cart these modern carts aren't they you do so much yeah. more with them it's not just stick a, stick a tire under and bounce them and hope for the best fully adjustable front end caster camber and track obviously tow you play around with the tow a lot on a road axe max rear end adjustable ride height uh rear track of course and then of course the uh, the good old tire pressures which really come to the fore and i'm not sure how these tires are going to react with that sunshine now beaming out of the clouds there's Sean Deven just coming through. Can't yeah, hear us, of course. Can't react to the fact that it's produced a 46.42 lap for Milton Steele Vassen, who's a second and a half faster than Fossey in second, and everyone else is on 48. So uh, Milton obviously has the advantage of being three stone lighter uh, in kilograms of the cart than uh, Tyler or Chris, but he's certainly put it up the inside. In fact, do go Tyler and Chris and said through there. So it was, Ru it was actually it was like Russell, Scott Russell. Russell going past Scribe, wasn't it? That's a change of third yeah. and fourth. They come into the hairpin. Now, Scott Russell really should, Nick, because he's on a 162 kilogram cart, uh, whereas Chris Shiver was, is on the heavier, in the heavier class. So they're not actually battling in the same class. They're, 
they're certainly in the same race overall and what is that Chris Shiver looking like he got back ahead there yeah, he's keeping on out for the chunky lads coming through then to complete five laps still Vassen leads by what is now eight seconds Tyler Fossey still in second Chris Shiver still in third overall but Scott Russell ever present now very little in it two tenths of a second called three tenths through Christmas corner nice overtake mover there by Russell using the advantage he hasn't got to slow as much weight down of course it's one of the key things about yeah, being 15 kilograms lighter makes you you accelerate better and you brake better but interestingly in tricky conditions the lack of weight counts against you for grip but as, as we see it's drying and those uh, the advantage of the extra weight just on mechanical grip is reducing all the time so looking to get away looking to break this time is uh, Russell because he got taken back by Scriver going through here last time round as uh, Scriver now comes to complete another lap and we're over halfway already in this Rotax tyre test championship meeting yes it is indeed it's still a race though and those competitors out there will want to win uh, it's going to be a big ask though for anybody to compete with Milton Steel Vassen who's Oof. making a bit of a comeback to karting <laughs> behind him though it's uh, Tyler Fossey leading the 177 class for the uh, a, 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 and, and just ahead of Scott Russell on the number 20 he's the gap there was about three and a half second last time by let's see if Scott Russell on the lighter cart can make any kind of impression and close in on Tyler Fossey on the triple six not really pulling second. away from the scriber though. it was quite interesting he's he's not. Been, he may have been an error coming up the uh, up the hill towards uh, Chris's corner he put the one of the rear, rear wheels slightly on the grass and got a massive kind of tank slap which mass which you'd see surprised him but obviously he didn't realize he'd done that um, and uh, he kind of lost a lot of the gains he'd made over uh, Scriber there. So Russell there, but he's now trying to gap him back out again. He went a bit too wide just up here. Um, and just, but whoa, what's going on there? But it's really interesting that uh, he can't pull away, can he? Despite having that massive weight advantage, he just can't pull away from Scriber at the moment. In fact, what's happening is he actually appears to be condensing the field behind him. So he's now the cork in the bottle. He is. As Scriber, Black, and Eldridge all come right up to uh, start thinking about how they're going to hassle Russell with about three laps to go. Yeah, very well driven by Chris Shiver, who's looking like he might even be in a position to challenge there as they went into the left-hand part of the entry to the boot. Through the boot and out of the boot now and towards us through pit bend and across the line and complete what will be eight laps. And you're definitely right, Nick. That, that uh, number 20 cart of Scott Russell appearing to be a bit of a cork in the bottle. Now, look how we punched out of the the first section of corners there and pulls a bit of a gap this is where they begin to close though through christmas and into and out of increments very fast section of track list down towards the ashby hairpin now and this is where they close up they close up through the rest of the rest of the lap and if anything alex black is now challenging chris shiver for that fourth place overall but once again we've got a 162 kilogram cart challenging a 177 kilogram cart and they're almost oh, three, three wide, wide on the back straight so yeah, what happened there was uh, Russell, sorry, Scriber just got a little bit of a, a nose up. He's got round, both got round, and so a mistake there by Russell. This is one again, just picks his nose. Ah, oh, yeah, see, oh, and, they, and, and it was three of them were looking for the inside line there, and there was a bit of kind of a, a scrunch on the 35 of Black, and then they've all gone out of order, and, and the, the net result is that the 20 of Russell loses the positions. Can I just make an announcement, Nick? It's raining. Oh, crap. well, obviously, because it had dried out. It's raining. The sun came out. Light spittage. And now it's raining. Now, what that will mean with whether or not Milton Steel Vassing can make it across the line. So far. Ten seconds on the clock. Let's see what the clock says when he crosses the line. He's going to cross the line with literally four seconds on the clock, I think. Four seconds, which will give him two more laps. But he went six seconds slower that lap. The rain has already, already made the made track wet. Yeah. It's already made the track wet, which is going to cause a massive issue for the 100, U, uh, 100 uh, UK guys who are sitting down there on the collecting area thinking, yes, let's go out in the slicks. But of course, we're such a close element of wet dry. There's a tiny amount of damp and suddenly it goes right back to where it was again. We never got to full dry and it's raining in the air. It's not really drops, it's raining in the air. The slippery surface flag is being waved all around the track. As you can see, that's the yellow and orange striped flag. That's the uh, British uh, slippery surface. It's like different in other countries. Um, often you think it's oil the trap, it means anything that's uh, reducing grip. And that's put all the uh, six carts back together again. They're now kind of going to avoid your discovery. Um, still fast from Foster describes from Black. 
And Vassen has just taken the one lap to go board as he crossed the line there, extending that lead. It was 18 seconds last time by. Remember, he just finished the first. He just over. Did a bit quicker that time. He did 50 was he? flat, so he managed the grip. But he's he's so much faster than everyone else in this field. It is. Um, it's, it's just quicker and quicker. He's, he's, he's just got a lot of confidence in that card. Second place now is Fossey, and then there's a, there's a big, big cheddar. Scott Russell, the 20s dropped, but they're obviously not enjoying these slightly damp conditions. Leader already into the boot for the final time. Five Nick. seconds fast that lap time round. Five seconds um, our leader. Well, well, no, it's only a heat. No need to be following him. We would be the final because the action yeah. and the karting action here, as you see, is through that. Uh, very complex run through corner and increment into Ashby. And a bit of a challenge there. And are coming together with Ooh. the 27. The way the 27. Was the 20, was it? Oh, oh yeah, 22. just went there. The 35 turn. It was 35 just caught this. So it's black, just caught the, uh, it seemed to caught the inside of the 22, yeah, from, from, from Radburn. That was unfortunate. So they kind of swapped round. They just tipped him through. Still Vassen takes heat two to add oh, to his heat one win. Oh, There's the side. Well, the 35 will. Black get it on the line. He's really close, but the 53 of Chris Scriver gets it by, oh, a massive seven hundredths of a second. Seven hundredths of a second there across the line. And just to give you a rundown then, Milton Steel Vassen wins overall and the 162 class. And that rain has already gone again. And the times, <laughs> the times went up by six seconds. They've gone back down again now to be within two seconds of, of what they were. So that very light fluttering of, of wettage just managed to uh, annoy people enough and lose a few seconds for a couple of laps and then it drives back out again and then nearly where they are again so the panic in the paddock has been averted and they will go out in slicks for this next race which of course is the 100 uk uh, a heat let's have a rundown of heat two then for our national kart club rotax max categories milton steel vassen wins uh, gap at the line 26 seconds Second place overall and first in the 177s, Tyler Fossey on the 666 numbered card. Chris Siver, third overall and second in 177s. Fourth overall was Alex Black, second in the 162s. And we've got heavy rain, I'm being told. Uh, on the track and now there is a, be a delay and a run for, uh, to be a run for wets. wets. Yeah. There's a delay and a run for wets. Here we go. So let's have a look. They are absolutely yeah, thinking about that. So we're going to have a delay on this next heat. Right, let's continue then with the result from the senior road tax heat. Uh, Alex Black, like I said, finished in fourth. Oh, no, they're releasing him. They're releasing them on the slick. Right. And we're going to have a very disjointed second heat for Group A. Wow, that's interesting. So they, they've just abandoned the whole concept of letting them run for <laughs> wets. Start the heat anyway. Sneaky. It's an open meeting. Ah, been told by Lauren. So therefore, he we just can't keeps give going. The time, yes. Right. Okay. I didn't. I wasn't sure about it because obviously it's uh, so the twenty fourth. The twenty fourth having an awful time trying to start. I'm going to tell rain you. on the camera lens is telling you everything you need to know. That sudden flurry of heavy rain has gone, and we're back down to spitting again. But it's um, yeah. This is this is this is this is this is racing in the UK. This is what it should be when you've no idea what weather's going to do from one minute to the next, but you can bet it's not what you hope for, and you can bet it's going to ruin some, some action for your day. Well, I'm going to read you a grid, Nick, that might not bear any resemblance to Excellent. the grid we've Go got in it. front of us. So Jason Wilson starts on the pole, Adam Rogers alongside. Second row of the grid is Grant Davison with Lee Drinkle alongside in fourth. Sam Hill in fifth with Matthew Horton in sixth. Seventh is Dan Crancho with Jake Packen in eighth. Edward Soffen and James Cannon, ninth and tenth. Eleventh and twelfth is John Cattell and Ricky Wright, Liam Hamling and Thomas Pattle in 13th and 14th. 15th and 16th was Dexter Bergman and Stephen Semester. Uh, Mick Miles and David Mellish, 17th and 18th, and running off the 20-cart field, yeah, Leonardo Taggio again, and Ben Robinson. They're going to need to go around again. Oh, they absolutely it, it, are, yeah. It took so long to get them rolling. So they're going round again, and they've been choking their engines, which is something you need to do with these two. So choking the engine means that you use your hand to cover the intake. You give some throttle on that, just pushes through some more fuel and oil mix, which cools the engine barrel down, makes the thing uh, n less likely to nip up, which is when it seizes. So you just do that to give it more lubrication. Well, you've leaned the mixture off on the carburetor, haven't you, by adjusting yeah. the, uh, the, the mix, the you uh, lean it, Yeah, the, the maximum power is not produced with the maximum love of the engine, to be honest. No, the lean of the engine, less air, more, um, uh, less fuel, I should say, more air. But that doesn't help when a two-stroke relies upon the fueling for lubrication. And that's what Nick's describing, how these drivers are then fanning the air intake to 
cut off the air supply, which then richens the fuel air mixture up. And that's why we see a lot of blue smoke coming out of the exhaust. So the factory fitting the engine is the best possible condition for being cane. The, the thing is, of course, the Wilton Mill doesn't actually feature any very, very long straights, which is where you are always mm. most worried about the thing. I, I've had the thing lift up in there a couple of times at the, old, at the back of the long straight in Butler Park all those years ago. And suddenly, one minute you're going really, really well, the next minute you're facing the wrong direction yes. uh, in a barrier, going, well, how, how did that happen? Yeah. Screeching tyres. Why have my rear end locked up? Well, because your engine's nipped up. Why did you do that? Because you've got a cheap engine and you can't afford to maintain it properly. And thoughts of a massive invoice to the guy who builds your engines, yeah. unless you do it yourself. Oh, I did it myself. That's why I just kept doing it. <laughs> very skillful to keep these carts going very slowly by these drivers, just giving the tail enders, and we still have nowhere near this I grid fully formed. I think they're probably this run, because I think the final guy was very, very late getting going so I can't they're going to wait for the cart which is currently at Christmas corner to come round and they are giving it a right go they're going to have all bar one cart I think pretty much on the line we're not getting the wave around they're going to go for it I think so giving it yeah, the the final two they're going to let some stragglers and into a to a smoke screen that would uh, you know bewitch a, uh, a first world war attack they managed to get through Jason straight off into the, the boondocks goes the 16th. This well, is going to be a voyage of discovery grip-wise. Jason Wilson got off into the lead and then just slid completely wide at oblivion. I think he's hung on to the lead. We'll oh, check that out. But there off. is nothing. There is nothing in some of these corners. Off at the first turn went Lee Drinkle and the 75 off onto the grass. I think they've sorted themselves Stands out, out. Haven't they? A bit. It's now the brightest it's been at the same time as raining. Still got a wet track, Will. Oh, absolutely. On slicks. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and they're doing a bit of it. Most of the drivers are doing a pretty good job so far. We've lost a couple, and that's what happens when you, you, you want to make the most of it. And a nice lead being established. Now, who is that who's drifted out into the lead? Is that, uh, is that Rogers or Wilson who's managed not to get sure. through? I can't see the number. Looks like it's the... I'm going to guess it's the 64, just because... I, no, it's not. It's 62 who's out ahead. It's, it's the 82. It's the 82 of Grant, Grant Davison. Davison who's gone ahead from the 64 of uh, Jason Wilson. So they are... Oh, 71, David Mellish, who is who went across the line in ninth, is going to cross the start finish, probably in first. So Mellish, is he, he's on wet, that's why. Mellish is on wet. Yeah. And, and that's it, why he's just leapt through the field. And Davison, you saw, come out of the boot and lifted himself from the chair uh, out of the seat to get that engine to pick up. And it was because he had to go so slowly because of the wet track on slicks that the engine began to die on him. That's allowed David Mellish, who managed to get his car onto the wet tyres... Oh. And just look at the difference. So Mellish there has made an absolute demon move there, getting the thing on wet. And so notice, I think it was still with the track of a dry cart, so it's still very because obviously now the track, don't you, in the wet, so it's still got a wide track. But the Mellish there uh, did a 109, but of course he, he got past nine people in that first uh, lap. Now the thing is though, if it doesn't continue raining, it's, it's on such a crossover point here, Joe, that it may. Really I'm not sure if eight minutes is enough time, but it may come back to them. I'm not sure if it will. But there he is, I, I, leading away in the 71 car, sitting there feeling smug as anything with his tyre choice. I used to absolutely hate a day like today's weather. It's absolutely awful, and it can cost you a lot of money when you destroy your wets in one heat. And it's just the choice. What do you do? Do you risk, do you risk the, the slicks and the track drying, or do you absolutely roll the dice like the current leader, David Mellish, has? And he's perhaps the only driver Four to... Four seconds. He's got four seconds faster on those wet tyres. That tells you the condition of this track. Let's have a bit of a rundown of the top ten. So Grant Davison comes through in second. Third is Jason Wilson. Fourth is Adam Rogers. Uh, Rogers. Jake Packen is in fifth. Sam Hill sixth. Seventh is John Cattell. Je Thomas Pattel is in eighth. James Cannon ninth. And rounding off the top ten, Stephen Semester. Yeah, so the 71 car of Mellish uh, with that stroke of genius... But the question really now is, what is he going to do? Is he going to try and bite to a, to a time, or is he going to try and push as hard as possible for, on the worry that the track will come back to the others? But we're a long way from the crossover point, which we know is about 57, don't we? Mm, yes, and we've still got five minutes of this race to go, Nick, so we could, we could see that. He's crossing the line now. I don't think he's gained any time on the 82 of Davidson that time round. 101. No, he lost half a second. So it's now, they're pretty even at this point uh, with these carts. So the TKM's obviously a little bit slower than the road taxi, so the, the crossover point obviously a little bit slower again. So I'm thinking that Davidson in that 82 has every chance of coming back to Mellish over the second half of this race. It's going to be interesting to see. And he's gaining hand over fist. 
absolutely 82 is, is, is visually gaining now. That was a 3.3 second lead. That is now, well, he gained 20 right. metres around that corner. Nick, you don't need a stopwatch or anything. You just have to see with your eyes. We're about to see a change of lead as they come through towards the boot. And there's the move down the inside into the boot. The number 82 of Grand Davison now on the tyre. What you need for these track conditions. And the 71 of David Mellish absolutely dropping like a stone and will continue to do so. And inside of that helmet on the number 71 cart, he's doing a rain dance. He's praying for the he's moment. absolutely doing a but rain he, dance He doesn't need there. much. Only a small amount of rain will tip this track back the other way again. Well, absolutely will, because the slick tyres do not work. But right now, David Mellish just managing to hang on to that second place. Grant Davidson went 14 seconds faster than he did three laps ago. That's how, that's how much on the cusp we are of the wet dry, because this track is sitting in, the, in a situation where it almost into dry, and it, it, we had that really brief flurry, and suddenly it was too damp, and now it's gone back to dry again. We're way into the, uh, into the dry area, and I'm afraid that toward Dave Mellish, who looked like a genius, is now going to look like a fool because he's going to drop like a stone because he's three seconds a lap slower than everyone. And already he has dropped, I think, into third place. It was worth a gamble, though, oh, wasn't it? 100%. Yeah, absolutely. he was starting way down. Go for it. Well done. I mean, the point is, he started mid-pack. There's a very good chance because of the huge fields that we got early on. He could still finish seventh, eighth, which is, where, which is above where he started. So, you know, it's, it's not a... It's just he, he was probably dreaming of a win, wasn't he? And to be honest, Nick, looking at that Oof. sky, it could spit with win at any moment. At any moment now. The 82 of Grand Davison leads, though, already through... Inkermans and down towards the Ashby hairpin. There goes the second cart skittering into second place, and that's Jason Wilson, David Mellish down to third, as we said, using all of the track and more. The leader, Grant Davison. I think Mellish may have dropped to fourth now. I think he has. He has, yeah. But he's, you know, the thing is to drop down. To actually get, drop all the way to where he started. He's, he, I don't think he will. I think he's, I think he has pulled a bit of a blinder here as far as end results are, even he drops down to 56 because he has a lead over the ninth place where he was starting at least of about 18 seconds i don't think he's going to lose out 52 there's 51 twos the fastest car at the moment is the 64 of jason wilson so wilson now looking to go back towards grant davidson what did you do 51 8 so that is your fastest car the 64 there on the left hand side of the screen and behind him is the third place man of rogers and they all sweep round to the hairpin now coming back towards us again, and there's a, there's a battle as they come there. That's Mellish fighting hard with a 28 cart of Matthew Horton. Uh, I'm not sure his transponder is ah, right. so working. Be, right, because the 28 cart there is very much. Uh, yeah, he's down. He's down with the transponder. So he always, yeah. although he's seven yeah. laps back, but he's uh, he's coming up. the all wobbling round the inside there of the 71s. So that may need a uh, Horton's got no lap scores. So if he scores a lap now. Then we know he was, he was he just rejoined. The, no one's joined the race recently, so this must be a transponder issue. To even to the to the extent where he hasn't turned it. No, he's got a lap now, so perhaps he just turned up. We also know let's get we need to get up to our first and second place. They're right close together. 82 and 84 is where the uh, the action is. They are probably uh, coming into the hairpin now. They are. So they're now moving out from the hairpin, the 82 and the 84. They're your leaders about to go on to the, uh, they've gone sweeping round Wilkins and through uh, Oziers, and they're coming on the back straight now. There we are, the 82 and the 84 coming towards uh, the, uh, the boot. And that's got much, much closer over the last couple of laps. Davidson yeah. and Wilson, now it was a second, it was four seconds, then it's three seconds and a second. Now it is, well, visual. Eight laps completed as they cross the line, and this has got two laps, this heat. Group A for the Depreco 100 UK Super Prix. Uh, group A, their second heat, and it's coming down to the final two laps with Grant Davison now with a... Oh, Wilson inside. Oh, that was close. They did, in fact, touch, I think, as they went into the Christmas hairpin. They're out of the Christmas hairpin there. That's, yep, they did. Or, or was that yeah. avoiding action from uh, well, Jason Wilson on the 64? He looks over his shoulder there, does Grant Davison. Yep, he's still there, just getting a glimpse of the white helmet of Jason Wilson into the left-hander at Aussie's and out onto the back straight. This is the penultimate time they'll go into the boot and he's got a bit of a breather, hasn't he? Grant Davison can breathe a little as that gap closes up out of the boot down towards pit bend for the penultimate time then. Crossing the line, nine laps complete. It'll be a 10-lap heat by the time they come round next time. Into oblivion and through the right-hander at Crook. It's a very fast right-hander 
through fine lady the kink and defensive oh. driving there from the leader absolutely flicking the cart into the christmas hairpin accelerating towards ashby and a challenge there for the lead oh, side by side using all the oh, track and oh, road, road, road him right out there that was uh, no was quarter a quarter asked or given and into the lead has gone wilson he just drove effectively davidson off the track fernando alonso school of driving clearly jason yeah. wilson a member of <laughs> With, uh, and you know what? That, that's exactly what happens. When you're on the outside, be expected to be shoved I, I insist, off the I track. insist on a five-second penalty from the stewards. <laughs> well, they're sat next to you, mate, so you can only ask. <laughs> Check the flag, then, for the heat number two winner for Group A. Jason Wilson takes that with a fine move down the inside of Grand Davison on that, that final yeah. lap. Um, Look at that. This is the key point where he just said, no, you're not coming back. And he tried to get back the end. Tried, 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 tried. tried. But of course, we bounced off and he's lost the drive. Well, he's lost the drive on the grass. I wasn't wouldn't on be the wet surprised. Grass. I, mean, I don't know how they might be really good friends. It might be a bit, a bit of bargy bargy, but I would be surprised if there wasn't a slight word about that. Because he did try to get back on the track and was to show in no uncertain terms, no, you're not getting back on the track. That's a typical karting move. Oh, yes. Yeah, that is but a I would be in, I would be a little bit upset if I ran on the grass and the wet grass. I, 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 I'd sit there. Or I'd remember. That's the thing. I'd remember. That's the thing. Let's have a quick. Let's have a quick rundown of uh, Group A, heat number two. Jason Wilson tips the w takes the win. Grant Davison second. Adam Rogers is in third. Sam Hill fourth. David Mellish on the wet tyres eventually finish fifth. He'd be happy with that, won't he? He'd be happy with fifth. Jake Packen is sixth. Thomas Paddle is in seventh. Eighth is Edid Scoffin. Liam Hamling was ninth. Lee Drinkle tenth. Stephen Semester is in eleventh. John Cattell is in twelfth. Mick Miles is in thirteenth. Fourteenth was Dexter Bergman. Fifteenth, James Cannon. Matthew Horton finally came through in 16th, and uh, Leo Taggio was 17th. Ricky Wright was a retirement on uh, after six laps, and Dan Cranshaw didn't complete lap number one. So hello to people to uh, Vince Hayson. Ah, I've got Matthew Horton actually finished fourth, and it was a transponder issue uh, okay. until by the timekeeper. So thank you. Up. Hello to Better in Tune. Says Mario. Hello to Chris Black, and hello to OWD plus one. Uh, he said this should be good. Jim Rainbird. Uh, I think it may have been a previous heat, but you know keep up with what we're going so next up is the b heat um the there is no the the, the fact is there is an equal spread of talent across the a b and the c heats they were they had a qualifying session a time qualifying session and they they went into the groups in a kind of a uh, sort of you know you go here you go here you're here what ties are they on uh they're on slicks they're on slicks aren't they shall we have a look at the grid go on then Scott Williams is on the pole position with Nicky Richardson alongside. Second row of the grid is Simon Newby and Will Cottrell. Third row, Adam Sirrett and Sean Davies. Fourth row, Paul Strether and Brendan Williams. Fifth row, Richard Steele and Bradley Dyson. Sixth row, Justin Waddington and Lee Jackson. Uh, uh, 13th and 14th is Sergio Taggio and Scott Biacci. Bi Bi Biacciocci. Go for it. Is that Biacciocci? Bacciocci. Bacciocci. Callum Bergman Bacciocci. and Tyler Ballard. Bacciocci. You can do this one next time. No, no, it's fine. Uh, Tom Purchase and Duncan McLeod, 17th and 18th and running you've off. You've, you've, you've reached your metre there with that one. Yeah, I really have. Uh, Wesley Graves and Ashley Harris, uh, 19th and 20th, running off the what should be a 20-cart field. And it is indeed 20 carts that have tripped the timing being as they have left the collecting area. Now, remember the last time these carts were out. This is, uh, we're out. This is uh, Group B, Scott Williams, who is on the all plate, so he's the um, 100 UK all plate holder at the moment with Nicky Richardson, and we know Nicky Richardson's uh, pedigree, uh, 1992 and 94 all plate cadet champ and Super One champ back in the 90s. Nicky out on his 100 UK cart and racing in this series it's the super pre what we're about to do though to the depreco 100 uk super pre it's got quite an accolade to run the sp plate for the rest of the season as the field's quite strung out there nick i'm not sure whether we're going to get yeah, the go ahead kind of they're kind of cuspy about it i'm not sure what they're going to do i'm looking for the is there a go around it's one so no it's go around go around go around go around there was somebody there the 35 wave for a go around that was uh, simon newby uh, waved the go around at the back and the marshal agreed with him. We had a few stragglers, didn't yeah, we? We didn't have the full. We've had, we've had more stragglation in previous heats. You find you find with the push start carts uh, of, of this of this category of karting, 
it's very difficult to get everybody away on time out of the collecting area. Yeah, yeah. So they're, they're invariably going to get two warm-up laps. Plus, there's a lot of drivers like two warm-up laps to get everything up to optimum temperature, engine-wise, tyre-wise. And sometimes when you've had a bit of a, uh, a, a bad pace lap, your engine can end up being, your plug can end up being get, get uh, very oily. You're saying that that was a tactical wave around by... Perhaps uh, it was. Some of the, well, that they're going, I'll give it a bit of a wave around, it's fine. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Just a chance to say thank time you. comes into play. Just a chance to say thank you to our sponsors. Yeah, Depreco, of course, uh, Industrial Vacuums, a big thank you to them. BoilerChoice.com, Eddie Scoffin in the number 45 was out in the, uh, the previous heat. Um, Raptor Custom Racewear for all your racewear needs if you want to try karting, and you'll need a crash helmet to do that as well with Head Tech. We thank them all for their support in the Depreco 100 UK Super Prix. There's a fog of smoke, which means there's going to be a fog of war when the race starts in a few corners time. Towards the starter then, we should get the go-ahead to go racing this time by, and it's the all-plate of Scott Williams that leads into turn one. Nicky Richardson gets it all wrong didn't pick through up well, oblivion. Richardson didn't nope. pick up well, and he, he actually tripped up a couple of the carts behind him because he just didn't, didn't you know, perhaps you say that that plug fouling may have been uh, something happened. They just didn't get the oomph out of the corner. Oh, a mistake from uh, Williams. He goes well, well wide, and I think it, it may even have been Richardson. It might be Newby, actually, who... who it's, it is who pushed it's, through. It's Newby who pushed through. Richardson, who was third at that point, has taken advantage of that. Scott Williams uh, not coming off Christmas corner very well. And it's Richardson who will be second. But right on his rear bumper is the all plate of Scott Williams. Let's just confirm it is the number 35 of Simon Newby that leads towards the boot for the first time. And then behind yeah. Simon Newby, a four card battle for second, third, fourth and fifth. Yeah, the 27, so Nicky Richardson, who didn't start well, has benefited from some confusion slightly ahead of him. Didn't really lose positions, but kind of checked up the cart behind him. Suddenly a mistake at the Christmas corner has put uh, Williams down to third, but he's now right on the tail of Richardson. And my guess is he's going to try and make up for it at this very same point. Oh, but then there's a problem for Newby. Newby's, yeah. not, Newby's lost all drive coming out the corner, so I'm not quite sure what happened there. I think he slid wide coming out of the uh, crook right-hander. And that allowed, he lost complete momentum there. And that's allowed Richardson through into the lead. And Williams has followed through. And Newby, if anything, fourth, is that in fourth? fourth? Fifth. I think I don't know, he almost lost fifth there to the, uh, one of the, well, the Syrix car. But I'm just wondering whether he might have a little technical issue. Leader, Nick yeah, look, Richardson. He's, 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 lacking, he's lacking drive, the 35. The, the, 30, the car ahead of him, which is the 27, uh, sorry, the 32 of Cottrell, just just depth He's ahead lacking of him. power, you mean? Yeah, I mean... Just, just look, another one's gone past him. Yes, there's a problem. A bad, bad luck for uh, uh, Newby. His cart's suffering in some he's way. On power. He's, he's on, on wet. wet. He's well, that's, on wet. He's suffering from a bad tyre choice. Yes, he is. Yeah, it might have worked for for lap one. Well, he got the, he got the temperature, would not he? Yeah, lap one it was fine, but by lap two those tyres are just absolutely that ripping themselves. Very, very threads. poor choice, but never mind. Worth a go. Anyway, into the lead. Let's look at the front of the field, and it is the 27. Nicky Richardson, kind of a, a double tribute to the Ferraris of the 70s with his uh, first name, uh, with Nicky Lauder in his cart for Jack, uh, Gilles Villeneuve. Yeah, cart 27. Uh, Williams right behind him. So first set. This is a battle we didn't quite see in the first hit because uh, Williams got away, but he made that mistake. And that means he's now got to fight his way back past uh, the former British cadet champion. Don't forget, he it's was a just, champion at eight years old. It's not just the number on the cart, the number 27. His helmet livery as well is a homage to Gilles Villeneuve with a, a very similar helmet design. This is a great battle for the lead, isn't it? Out of Crook for the, the fourth time and heading down towards Christmas Corner, <laughs> Nicky Richardson. Massive look over his shoulder Absolutely. there. Where are you? Yeah, oh. and turns in. They're trying a couple, interesting, because Williams is trying a couple of different lines. He's got the inside. Can he get the inside into the hairpin? I think he has, but he's got a tank slapper and couldn't get the drive down. So he, was, he, he just turned the car a little bit too hard and suddenly the rear said, I'm sorry, no, not in this weather. I'm, I'm not hanging on and the car fish tailed out and he lost the drive and therefore living to fight in the lead another day was Richardson as they go uh, back, back straight into the back straight and they come towards the boot now they've seen some good moves up here but uh, Richardson doesn't leave a gap and they come back round to complete another lap around the very very dangerous final corner where you can if you get it wrong break a rib over 25 <laughs> years experience at the front of this field leading this field round he's looking over his shoulder to see where the all plate of Scott Williams are through Crook now and out towards fine lady down through the right-hand kink towards the breaking area for Christmas Corner to hairpin. And that's a very potential passing place. But Nicky Richardson hangs onto that through that 
very fast king down towards the Ashby Heaven. It's a downhill hairpin with lots of runoff using all of the track and more. Both of these drivers absolutely on the limit of their kart's performance. Into the right hander, at, uh, the, sorry, the left hander at Wilkins and through Ozias onto the back straight again then and they're still nose to tail. Question is, Nick, can the number 32 of Will Cockrell get on terms? Because there's no doubt about it that the leaders are slowing one another up by racing nose to tail around this lap here at Wilton Mill. Yeah, I mean, Cottrell was, what, 1.2 back? He's uh, done a, he's, he's lost another tenth, in fairness, so he's, uh, it's a situation where he, 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 is, he is hanging on, despite, as you say, oh, no, oh, move now. Williams looks to the outside of Christmas Corner. Now, will you try the over and under? We need to get some drive, because the, the best place, really, I think, to overtake is to throw up the inside of Ashby, if he can get the run, and he has got he slightly has. inside Nicky, and now, well, now there's going to be a force in wide, 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 back, and then, oh, there, they see, that, that time round, Richard went, all right, fair enough and then decided to come back using just the concrete and not using the grass. He knew where he was going to be. He knew that Williams would have quite fairly have just urged him onto the grassy area, the wet grass there, not exactly ideal for a slick tired Formula 100 UK cart. And Williams has now taken the lead. And, and we're moved away. And lead across the line to complete six laps. Richardson second, Cottrell is gaining. He's under a second now to Richardson. Wesley Graves in fourth, fifth is Adam Sirrett rounding off the top six, just into six there on that lap, Paul Streeper. Yeah, Williams now showing he's got a little bit of extra pace once he can get away. Gapping Richardson, who's going to have a bit of a worry, I think, about Will Cottrell quite soon. Uh, in fairness, Cottrell effectively stayed the same distance away from the leader, but the leader changed and there's a car in the middle. And I'm just wondering whether he has the pace to make up that uh, eight tenths of a second. And looking at it visually, the answer is probably not as the three of them, oh, hand up from uh, Richard Hugh Nodgy and Yellow Flag, I think, um, as he came down the back straight. There are some marshals on the track. I think there may be an issue with a cart somewhere. I just think I'm trying to look at his marshals running. It's, it's over the there. It, oh, yeah, there's two carts have, uh, have come together. It's at Inkerman's. At, uh, Inkerman's. Oh, and also, um, we had a errant piece of uh, furniture from the track as well. Marshall running back with a decimated. Oh no, it's a side pod. A side pod's come off someone's. A side pod has come off somebody's cart. It's an orange side pod, so we need to look for a cart with only one orange side pod. Um, they may not be allowed to run. Actually, they may be given the mechanical. But yeah, the side pod came off, and that was what was uh, uh, perplexing the uh, marshals. Anyway, so back at the front, Williams from Richardson, from Cottrell, and the gaps have stayed relatively uh, yeah. equidistant since then. They're both eight, eight, eight tenths between the various pairs beginning to settle down isn't it at the front with Williams Richardson and Cockrell circulating together with about just on a half a second between them through Crook the right hander and onto through the kink at fine lady down towards the Christmas hairpin and it's Scott Williams leading from there they'll go through the left hand into the very fast sweeping Inkerman's right hander down towards the Ashby hairpin then towards the left hander at Wilkins on the infield here at Wilton Mill and then the ever tightening left hander of Ozias through the right hand king onto the back straight towards the boot then it'll be nine laps completed with just on 20 seconds on the clock so it'll be two more two more laps for these carters it's group B Group B, the second heat for Group B for the Depreco 100 UK Super Prix. Yeah, we're getting a bit, bit drier. Seeing um, best lap actually was Wesley Graves' the fastest lap of the race. The fourth place for number 55 car with a 50.78. Oh, suddenly Richardson's much, much closer to Williams again. So it must be a little minor error from Williams as he went up the, uh, the hill towards Christmas Corner. A lot of work on the arms there by Richardson. He sweeps around Ashby's and now looking to see if he can exploit another error and perhaps steal a win from Williams, who's suddenly I'm not going away. You know what, Nick? I sometimes think that in these heats, people are just playing a bit of a waiting game. I'm not sure whether or not, or not we'd see a bit, a bit of a charge from Nicky Richardson in second if this was the final. It's going to be interesting when these three groups come together and we'll see... I know it's the same, but the thing is that he's getting these second places, um, and then it doesn't guarantee him second on the grid for the overall final. No, that's the point that's from, right. the, uh, from yeah. the other two. As the, as the sky brightens noticeably at the moment, so we are going to get full dry 
uh, I would think, for the first time uh, in the next, probably the next thing, we've got the heat after that. We're getting a, we've got a nice drying breeze. The sky's lightened up. Doesn't mean it's not going to rain again because it's, it's England. Yeah. But uh, going round for the last time, the exit from, from Ashby. Williams has re established a, a, a comfortable lead of about two thirds, three quarters of a second. Again, another two thirds, three quarters of a second back to Will Cottrell, Wesley Graves, who has, as you said, done the fastest lap at this point. He's in fourth, and then it's Adam Siddick behind him. No changes, any position all the way down the field last time by as the leader comes through, Scott Williams, to take the chequered flag and the second heat win for Group B goes to Scott Williams. Nicky Richardson was second. Will Cottrell finished third. Fourth was Wesley Graves. Fifth, Adam Sirid. Paul Streether rounds off the top six. And now we wait for the rest of the field to come through. Sean Davies through any moment now, just coming out of the final turns. In fact, it's Duncan McLeod who just takes that seventh spot from Sean Davies, who finishes eighth. Justin Waddington, ninth. Tenth was Richard Steele. 11th Lee Jackson, Simon Newby was 12th, Tyler Ballard will finish in 13th and then a lap Sergio Taggio will come through and finish 4th. We, I think we've got to wait for Tom Purchase to finish in the number 86. We lost Bradley Dyson, Brendan Williams and Callum Bergman in that heat so they will uh, obviously be disadvantaged in the points tally for the qualification for their third and final qualifying heat. Simon Newby kept going um, on the wet, so that cost him 100 quid, um, but he got a 12th place. He did. He got 12th, did he? Yeah. Now, the mi big mystery is which was the cart which lost its side pod, because I watched them all go around and none of them was missing a side pod. He went in. He came into the pits. He, he retired so to Dyson, the pits. Williams or Berg. Which is slightly out of our sight, yeah. So I'd say that was Bradley Dyson. On third the heat, which was a bit... This is the one which... Was this one that got a bit confused last time because it had a shower just before it started, wasn't it, the sea heat? Um, for 100 UK. Uh, no reason to roll the dice on tyre choice for this one because we've got probably the most consistent track condition we've seen all day. Um, with a fully dry track, wind has gotten up, sun had even had a bit of sun. However, the sky does still look threatening. <laughs> That's the, that's the problem at any moment now. If you looked at the sky, you would think it's going to rain at any moment, but it's been like that all If you've ever so been in England, it's knows? just the sky. It is. Yeah. It absolutely is. Let's have a look at the grid then for the uh, second heat for Group C. Paul Monks is on the pole position with Ryan Cole alongside. Uh, second row of the grid is Ian Henderson with Dominic Pine alongside him in fourth. Fifth is Lee Hackett. Sixth, Paul Birchnell. Uh, fourth row of the grid is James Lovell and Ryan Gill. Fifth row of the grid is Paul Van Gerard and Owen Potter. Matthew Lawrence and Dean Walker are on the sixth row. Seventh row is Dennis Bartley and Andrew Bradley. Eighth row of the grid, grid is Craig Caldwell and Thomas Evans. Chris Cook Martin is 17th with Sean Taylor 18th and running off the 19 card field is Marcus Gray. Now then, a story about the number 87 card, Craig Caldwell. Craig is actually. Um, a cart manufacturer back in period. Arc was the name of the cart, mm -hmm. and Craig Caldwell was the company that manufactured those carts, and he's out on an arc of his own making. Apparently, up until recently, when they changed the rules about the need for a nose cone, he was running the original prototype chassis from 1990, where it was. Right? 001, and he had to, unfortunately, because there's a slight change of rules about the requirement to, to run nose cones now. Essentially, they weren't the required for him. You know, the mountain point in that chassis, so he's now running one of his later chassis he found in someone else's shed, I believe. Because <laughs> um, so that's where all the chassis are. So basically, if you're watching this and you're not doing TKM karting and you've got a TKM chassis in your shed, don't believe someone when someone says that's worth a tenner. It may no, well be worth significantly more now. Yes, yes, it absolutely is. There's a big demand for these chassis. Um, none of the current contemporary kart manufacturers have taken on... You're not allowed to remanufacture. You can't remanufacture. You can't remanufacture. No, oh, right. I didn't realise that was the not original, you this are... Is pure, this is a pure yes. historic racing series. It's not original. You are, you are, there are some things that can be remanufactured, like brakes. As long as the brakes retain the single piston, single caliper two pistons, you can't... You know, you're allowed to remanufacture those sort of things. But the basic chassis and engines must be from period. And we look like we're going to get them away first time this time. So they had a good even start. Colt from Monks, from Pine, from Henderson. And they have got a yes, and they're off. And it looks like the 44 of Paul Monks goes out of our sight through Crook 
and down the street towards Christmas, defending very, very hard defensive line down the inside. It is the 44, Paul Man, Paul Monks, who hangs on to that lead. They're already out of Christmas corner and through Inkermans, down towards the Ashby hairpin now in a challenge for the lead there, not quite coming off there. It was Ryan Cole who had a look down the inside and he looks down the inside once again, this time at Wilkins. Got him. And he had the momentum out of the Ashby hairpin, got a spinner at the back of the field, but a change for the lead as the number 21 of Ryan Cole takes the lead and he leads the rest of the field into the boot for the first time. With the 4 11 of Ian Henderson in third, so it was a good first lap by Cole. He harried uh, Monks and eventually got him at the, uh, the turn back at Wilkins, but now can he gap him is the question as we go around the first lap and it's uh, Cole from Monk from Henson from Pine from Hackett from Birchnell from Lovell from Von Gerard, Matthew Lawrence and Dennis Barkley actually top 10 and there's a bit of a three wide run up towards Christmas corner there that was for fourth place Dominic Pine uh, Lee Hackett and Paul Birchnell there almost three wide into the breaking area for Christmas I'm not sure how that's going to uh, settle down as they come out of that one very very Quite wide on the exit of Ashby there but they were using all that rumble strip Net result actually was that there's a little bit of loss of time actually for months and there's more daylight for Ryan Cole at, in the lead. And head down, let's reduce my aero drag by nodding down towards the steering wheel. Much more relaxed driving position for months. He's headed out for a Sunday drive in his car. Leaders across the line then to complete two laps. Still plenty of this second heat. This is Group C of the Depreco 100 UK Super Pre runners. And the lead is through Ryan Cole leading Paul Munch second. It looks like the big battle actually is the third, fourth and fifth. Let's yeah. see if we can just scrabble back to the third, fourth and fifth because they're all over each other, all three of them. The, uh, the bright red car, the bright red suit currently in fifth, which I think is Birchnell, yeah. may have changed already by that. The 4-1-1 we know, Ian Henson, we saw in the last team. And the 38 of Lee Hackett, who has got into third. But Oh, and look at uh, the little drive at the inside by the 20 and he has it. He's back. Birchnell eases out. Uh, Henson, who's going backwards again. I think in the first he went backwards as well from a good start, Henson. So these two now, the worried look over the shoulder from Hackett, and that Virgin made up that gap to Hackett almost immediately there. Looks like he's particularly good at the brakes, the 20. I think, he's you're, I think you're right about Henderson. Um, Henderson now dropping away from those two as they've, as they've cleared him. Let's see as they cross the line. Lee Hackett into third, Virgin fourth. Ian Henderson has got Dominic Pine, fifth and sixth there, the battle there. But Henderson's got Dominic Pine all over the rear end of him as they come through and into through the, the kink at Fine Lady, already out of Christmas hairpin, and into Inkermans, that fast, using all the curb on the inside there to maintain speed, and down the inside of Henderson has gone Dominic Pine at Ashby. Didn't have to he drive out, though, stick, so he, was he? Yeah, he didn't have to drive out, so he, I think he actually got it, but he actually bogged, I think he actually went up the inside, lost a bit of speed, and he actually bogged, so uh, didn't get the chance to drive him out of the track, which obviously is very popular. <laughs> <laughs> Back with uh, the 20 of Paul Birchnell going round the boot. He's now in a little bit of isolation. He's, he's looking quite, he's got that kind of really keen look on. He's got a keen body lag. Oh, oh, when I get there. As if he's just waiting for the car to do something else. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me. And they've, they've now pulled a very nice, yeah, so this is, so the battle laps, it's dropped back again, uh, Harry. It's that battle led by the multicolored race suit, the orange at, oh, God, yellow and green, the canary, the Norwich City colors of 411 Ian Henson loses another place this time to the 39 Dominic Pine oh and then there's about a kind of a scuffle there where the three cars with uh, Matthew Lawrence got involved as well and they're tripping over each other a bit here Joe yeah they are into the Ashby hairpin down towards they go down to the left hander at Wilkins and still Henderson hangs on to that position he's down to sixth place now but he's got a line of carts just queuing up to have a go at him isn't he he's going to go we think you're fast enough he's going to be very busy as Dominic Pine already pulling out a bit of a gap to Henderson in the 411 as they come down towards us in front of us now, Nick, through the final bend there at Pit Bend and across the line. I'm not sure this is this is a race. It's a bit, a bit bullying here. Everyone's ganging up on poor old uh, uh, Ian Henderson. He's got three more behind behind him, and they're all looking at different ways of getting past. But Henderson looks to try and use his car as a blocker for an inside run. Behind them, the two cars effectively almost come together. The two, both with the yellow noses. <laughs> That was the uh, I think that was the Lawrence and the Von Gerard cars, and, and at the end of that, actually, who was pulling away the 39 Pines lost momentum, 
And, oh, you get a small amount of breathing space for Henderson. That's good news for him. Just to remind you, at the front, Cole leads by two and a half seconds. From Monks is two and a half seconds in Hackett. So they've all spread out the top four. This is why we're looking at the fifth, sixth, seventh and eighth battle. It's where it's all happening at the moment. And they are also having a relaxed spread out as well. This is a very interesting battle. And I'm just, try I'm just str struggling to understand why he and Henderson is dropping down the field. It may be that he was kind of out of his position from qualifying because of the mixed kind of heat we had for Group C the first time out. And maybe things just beginning to settle down and we're seeing Ian Henderson now settling into that sixth place. The, the, the battle behind them have, have dropped slightly off after being re all over the rear bumper of Henderson. Henderson's now got a bit of a cushion, and if anything, Henderson looks like he might be coming back at Dominic Klein. He is, but it's also, not over yet, yeah, is it? Yeah, that, that, that camera, as you see, usually falls short of the gap. So, for a minute there, you thought Matthew Lawrence was right on their tail, but they have all got that kind of that, what, six, six, this, six cart length gap, that mm. half second gap between each other, but it's um, it's kind of an ebb and flow. And you just look at it there, definitely better on the brakes is the three cart of uh, of Lawrence. He gained, and then, he, and then on the acceleration, he lost a bit. So it's almost as though, you know, there's uh, different driving styles, different levels of where the engines are tuned. But uh, they're kind of sitting there on that elastic band of half a second. We're getting towards the final stages of this second heat for Group C for the Debreco 100 UK Super Prix. Ryan Cole leads by three and a half seconds from Paul Monks in second, who's got two and a half seconds to Lee Hackett in third, who has got, what's that, 3.2 seconds to Paul Birchnell in fourth who's got three and a half seconds to Dominic Pine, who's got a half a second to Ian Anderson. So Dominic Pine, Ian Anderson and Matthew Lawrence, fifth, sixth and seventh, is where there may be some action about to happen. And suddenly Lawrence got right close to Henderson again. So I think, I think Henderson's making a couple of little mini mistakes. His basic ground speed a little bit faster than the three cards. The 4-1-1 there with the yellow, well you can see his yellow part of the overalls, the blue part of the overalls for uh, Henderson. Certainly... Lawrence, I think when we get down, he sits down and does a bit of a lap. Look, he's pulled it back out again. Yes, he has. But it's almost as though he's better at the bits where you're going fast and not as good at the bits where you're going slow compared I'm, to the I'm, three. I'm kind of thinking it's down to the handling on that number 411, just not being quite right through the, the twisty bits. As he, he's moved on to the, uh, on tail, the yeah. tail of, uh, of Dominic Pine again, and he's left Matthew Lawrence a little bit behind him. And if anything, with... The lead is now Ryan Call. Seeing where Ryan is on the lane. Just crossed the line there with just on 16 seconds remaining. So Ryan Call on his penultimate lap now at the head of this field. Yeah. As this battle continues, Nick. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting, isn't it? It, 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 it? Just when you think that someone's going to get away, um, it doesn't happen. Yeah, it has. It's a little bit stagnant at the front, not that with, with equidistant gaps, uh, chunks of time between carts uh, first second second third third fourth and then we've got dominic pine in fifth with ian henderson right on his tail matthew lawrence likewise ebbing and flowing between okay. them there attack of the wind there on that we have we've got massive amount of wind just picking up there that means it might rain soon i've just found that when the wind picks up we might get a little I've bit of rain i've just seen a tiny bit of blue sky over there yeah but if you look to your left under, under seven levels of, of cloud <laughs> So they are on the last lap now. Well, they're not actually, because these guys are about to start their last lap. The leader's on the last lap. Even though they're very close together there for that, what is fifth, sixth, and seventh, I'm not sure there's going to be any kind of change there. Ryan Cole leads in the 21. And I'm just trying to get a location of the leader of this heat. He's just sweeping onto the back straight now. I think he's just coming onto the back straight now. There he is, the number 21 cart, the yellow and blue livery, into the boot for the final time then. As we continue to monitor that battle for fifth place, leader takes the flag. There we go. There he goes, cart 21. Line. Well done, Check it Ryan for him. Cole. And I think you're right, it then stayed kind of like after you claw, didn't it? And they all kind of... It always looked like it was about to take, about to kick off, and never did. Um, no, I never did. It promised. It promised a lot. And promised so much, delivered so little. Like many, like like many of my uh, uh, senior school dances, <laughs> story of your life, my friend. Well, not the last few years, but uh, you know, many years. Yes. Oh, I, uh, I didn't deliver nothing. 
So that is the second heat completed for Group C for the Depreco 100 UK Super P. Uh, Super Prix. Super P. Super Prix. Uh, we've got the first racing heat for the F160 Pro Karts and the F300s about to take part. The, we've had the qualifying session and now we're about to go racing and we've got uh, 25 cart. We've got a 25 cart grid that qualified. Just uh, say hello to Mart, hello to Brian Cockrell, hello to Kelvin Woodhead, who's got one of Craig's chassis in his junior, he came in 1993. He's got one of Jay Had's old chassis in his garage. That is worth some money, Kelvin. Maybe be worth some money to who's, me and Joe. Which cart has he got? Uh, one of Jay Howard's old right TKM chassis. Mm. That's what we all need. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so Kelvin, you want to give a pri give Joe your uh, your address, you may find you get a phone call. Is they worth a tenner, by the way? That's what it's worth, worth a tenner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just worth a tenner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we'll come and take it. We'll take yeah, we'll do your favour. We'll, yeah, we'll pick it up for you. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so if you want to have a chat with us, just uh, go on to the YouTube and we'll uh, happy to re give you a, a name check. Um, we're in a portal, by the way. So go Ryan Gill number eight. So, uh, good stuff there. Right. Back to you, Joe, with actual commentary stuff. Commentary stuff, indeed. We've got the uh, first heat, heat number one of two for the F-160s and F-300s, and they're already lining up very nicely. That's our pro cards that you can see there lining up in the collecting area. That's because they don't need to be pushed started. The F-300s are at the front of the grid, though. Oliver Warner is on the pole position with Jack Goodyear alongside. Matt Cater and Jason Cooper on row two. George McCrae and Graham King on row three. Row four is Craig Omerod and uh, Oliver Clark. Lee Mitchell and Gary Woodward on row five. Oliver Parcel and George King on row six. Ian Schotter and Neil Slaughter on row seven. Wayne Brazil and Jason Thatcher are on row eight. Row nine is Andrew Bailey and Nicholas Clear. Malcolm Freeman and William Seymour are on row 10. Row 11 is James Goimer and uh, Brett Knapp. Row 12 is Guy Hefford and Lee Surrey. And then rounding off the 25-cart field should be James Walker. So we're just waiting to get the uh, release. We're just retrieving some carts out on the circuit at the moment. We should be pretty much on with that. Very efficient work from our track marshals. Big thank you to them who have kept things rolling pretty much on time and on schedule. And there's the number 131. Looking like he might have a problem there. He's just pulled out of the grid formation in the collecting area. That's James Walker who had a problem in qualifying and qualified at the back. The F300s lead this field out. So it's kind of two risks in one. The Pro Cart's wanting to stay and maintain a gap to the F300s, I believe, from what I can see. There's water in the air. It's not really raining, oh, yeah. but it's, yeah. water. it's like spitting. That tiny spitting. Peter Keir would say it's spitting, is it? It's not quite not really spitting. spitting no. no, it's kind of like <laughs> you know, you know, if you get like a, you open a coke can and it goes, yeah, it's like that. It's like a so level of air, of water in the air. Is that, as you've said that, look out the window there, Nick. Is that rain coming down? Uh, it could be. No one seems no no no, no one seems to be panicky about it. No no, there's nobody sort of rushing for an umbrella or putting no. a hood up. Uh, the F three hundreds lead the. Field round. We're going to have two races in one here. Are they? Are they? So, are they two gridding it? Are they? Yeah, six, uh, seven, seven F three hundreds, and then the F one sixties that are referred to. They're basically right. twin engine pro carts. That's interesting. They're, they're actually separating them all out. They're going to go for a yes on this one. I think they are. They got the seventh guy a bit stuck. And yep, yeah, they've gone yeah, for it. Yeah, they go ahead. They shoot from a cannon. Lots of talk from these uh, two fifty cc single engine, uh, single cylinder engines on these f300s the other rotary valve engine rotary rotary valve yeah good you and warner having a great battle oh and warner's got straight off the track where's he gonna, where's he gonna rejoin oh that was blooming close of taking someone out there that was the, that was kind of like uh let's hope for the best though that was an insurance claim waiting to happen our f160s get their race underway We'll, we'll, con we'll concentrate on the, uh, the, the 300 for a bit, 300, and then yeah. we'll, uh, we'll we'll switch around. Let's pick up the leader of the 300s. There we go, and it is the all well, the mostly white, the Brabham BT 44 Mar um, Martini colours. 
effectively it is the kart version of uh, Joe's Wet Dream. <laughs> My <laughs> favourite ever Formula One car from 1975, the Martini Brabham BT. Oh, it it's gone, 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 gone. Has he avoided? Oh, that dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. He turned in, <laughs> he turned in, and the car just snapped Brilliant. sideways. I love that. He was, oh, the two he was arms a passenger. In the air. What happened there? He was a passenger, wasn't he? I'm not sure whether he did that with a bit of wheel spin. Fantastic. 35 new weeds of torque. Can I just say, we've all been there. We have indeed. Hang on, yes. why am I facing the wrong way? <laughs> He's, he's gone from first to sixth. sixth. But I get the feeling he might try and come through. But the leader now is, I think, the 46 of Oliver Warner. Uh, Matt Cater in the uh, black number six. <laughs> oh, gets in the lead. So the Cater goes into the lead in the sixth. They're coming, uh, turning around now onto the back straight. So it's the two dark carts. Um, oh, met both men in black, aren't they? And then looking, darting in and out. And then you've got the 54 of the 54 no, 55 55 of Gary Woodward. Woodward yeah so these carts in, in period what are they they what the time frame are they in period I'm not I'm not I have no idea it's the first time I've ever seen an F300 this weekend ah. it's certainly the first time I've ever seen a rotary engine on a cart um, they're very very quick indeed they've got lots of low down torque 35 new meters of torque which basically it's like being fired out of a cannon out of the slow and medium speed corners. The pro carts are with us across the line. Let's just have a, a bit of a rundown of how the pro carts are, are looking and as, as competitive as ever. Leading is George McCrae, Oliver Clark in second, third is Craig Omerudley, Mitchell is in fourth. Just moving up to fifth is James Walker with George King now in sixth, Jason Thatcher, seventh, Andrew Bailey eighth, Neil Slaughter, ninth, Graham King rounding off the top 10. And if anything, Nick, I think the F300s are going to very soon be coming round to lap the tail of the broadcast. Well, we got 48.05 for Jack Goodyear last time round. The fastest pro car is a 54. So they got six mm. seconds to begin with, and they were given half a lap start. So who's leading the pro car? Is that the 36, the blue Number car? Number six. That's the pro, sorry, pro cards, yeah, 36. Let's pick up yeah. the pro card. Um, it's coming underneath you right now, the bright blue one, Ash. That is the 36. He is leading the pro cards as they come round. They're going across the start finishing line. And then second is the 27. So let's look at the pro card lead. And there we are. They, they disappear up and away and towards Harry's camera up on the hill. So this is the pro cart lead, and we may, we may have a, an amusing moment where the uh, F300 start coming through them, but it's uh, been a good, good start by uh, the 36. Um, Cart of McRae, Ormrod second and Clark is third as they go into the hairpin. And these things, how much sort of, what sort of horsepower are they producing two pro carts? It's about seven and a half horsepower each side, isn't it? Or is it more than that now? I'll tell you a word for that. I, I a really that. good engine, a really good engine, the, the a pro cart lap time around here should be about. Um, what we're seeing just on just over the 50 second oh, mark doesn't sweep it? into third 52 the green side of the green flashed one three one of james walker it's absolutely the pro car on the move at the moment he uh, picked up a place in that last lap and he's now already uh, hunting around the back of craig orrod james walker started at the rear of this field at the very back go. of the field and he's already in the second <laughs> He's got some, uh, yeah, he's got some chutzpah there. I mean, I assume he's at the back. He must have made a bad tyre choice in the last round. He's got, no, he was disqualified from, from qualifying for a reason I'm not very sure of. <laughs> and he had to start at the back for Being heat too one. smug. He's, he's, he's up to second and he's challenging for the lead. And he's going to get it. On 60. Oh, uh, no, I'm sorry. That, that point, George McCray said, nope, Craig, you know, no, no, you're not coming through, James. Sorry, but James is the, right in the, all black with the green flashes on the cart, looking to get around the back of the thing. He's twin engine pro cars. He's got oh, the inside and that's power. it. That was just grip and power there. He was just able to keep a tighter line out of the boot. And by the time they got to pit bend, the final turn. And to welcome in the sun comes out. And the sunshine <laughs> as the sun uh, bleats down onto the oblivion corner into Crook. And already towards the Christmas hairpin, in and out of the Christmas hairpin, they've gone. Christmas corner, as it's called here, at Wilton Mill. Challenge for second going on with our pro card battle. George McCraig being very much pressured by Craig Omerod. As the... Second, so it's more the blue card, the second place that's interesting at the moment. And there's three of them now thinking about going for second. 
Meanwhile, we've had a change of lead in the F300s. Oliver Warner has now gone into the lead ahead of Jack Goodyear. Uh, yeah, I think that was due to confusion during lapping, actually, if I'm honest. Oh, so wide there. In fact, three of them went incredibly wide. I'm not sure what the track limits rules are on uh, the first or the last corner, depending how you want to... There isn't any. The track limits are, don't go on the grass. I have seen track limits warnings, but, uh, yeah. But I've never... Uh, not sure what they're for. They're, no one's had more than one, so it's OK. And it's getting a bit messy behind them as they, they, they spin around. How, so Warner's now leading by three tenths of a second in the 300s. We're looking at second place and third place battle in Pro Kart. This is a schizophrenic thing. We've got two races going on the same <laughs> thing. You think, given the fact we, we used to do like four races, in, 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 or five even with yeah, Coventry, you think we know yeah. what we were doing. But on the whole, they don't tend to be battling on the same lap at the same well, time in the well, same camera angle. Those, 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 la uh, those races don't stretch just over eight minutes. They're oh, about 12 hours. Oh, wow. So the, the, the over and under for Jack Goodyear, for the six car, 36 car of George McRae, completely caught him out. He lost two positions. So Ormrod and King move into second and third in Pro Cup, and we're down to about a minute and a half to go. I'm trying to think where we have our leaders. It's got really, really close between first and second in 300, but I've no idea where they are. Into Ashby, I think. No, that's a Pro Cup. That's it's really hard. I'll, now. I'll pick that up if it's you want. Really to, hard if now. You want to keep, <laughs> I think here are the leaders well, actually, in 300. Oh, that's good because they're going to come. Get, they're going to catch up yes, with our are. current battle. So we just wait for a minute. They'll all be together, which is very advantageous considering we're into the final minute and we have no idea what's going thing. on. So yes, yeah, so there is the 20. Three, and I've no idea where they are. It's it's seven, yeah. We're looking at yes, it's King and Ormeroid. King's got ahead of Ormeroid in the third place of Pro Kart. So he, the, the blue race suit, 23. The 24 car, which is Oliver Clark, he's going with kind of the pinky top. And those two carts flashing you on the bottom there, that shot there, they are your leaders in 300. And there will be two laps. There's an outside chance, it might be three. I think there's two laps, I think. Um, as the mess continues as carts work out where they're going to be. And I think there's been some lapping within the actual pro carts as well as lapping within the three. So it's a little bit kind of, well, I don't know what's going on at this point. Um, so definitely, though, leading the pro carts, I'm going to say this right now, is James Walker yep, from the back. And I can tell you who's leading the F300s is Oliver Warner. And he's and car he's number... Number 46. So they can see the six cart going through it. So they're actually the carts now. There's the 46 actually behind the blue cart. There is your leader in 300. Just being eased out slightly. Coming round the back. There it gets. You can see there's only one engine. There's the six. So the top two in 300 are battling their way through this right now. And last lap board being given to Oliver Warner, who's the overall leader in this multi-class battle. Two classes in one race here. And they're right. So you need to drop back a couple, boys. It's, the, uh, it's hard to pick up, but it's the 46 and the 6 in the middle of this. Both all black suits. They're the ones who are battling for the overall lead in this uh, conflict, this clumping of carts. And all oh, they, they, they almost come together. They're having a fantastic two-cart battle whilst avoiding everyone else. This is, oh, no, they're not avoiding everyone else. They have a massive accident. And that is the first two. No, let's go back. The carts are off the track. Carts off the track, Harry. So that is the first. Is that, no, it's the 13 and... The 46, 46 that, that was, was the leader, leader. and the 13 was, was third, third place. So it was, it was two of the 300s that came together. They just got hooked up, actually. They just sweep up there. Under, I think that, that was somehow the 13 had got ahead of the 46 during the previous melee as they tried to have another accident as they get going again. That was a complete misjudgment on I'm yeah. not sure who, but that's affected the actual win for the first heat for the Et 300s. Jack Goodyear... Has taken the taken <laughs> the win. A scrap. <laughs> Matt a scrap on the restart. Matt Kater brilliant. comes second. Jason Cooper Absolutely third. Absolutely brilliant. And they get over the line, and it is. I think it's the 13 who got the 46. Yeah, but they're going to be a long, long way down. Well, uh, yeah. Gary, Gary, you got an well, extra lap actually. Made it a bit easier. So they were the last two finishes in the end. Yeah. What happened there was, and I'm not quite sure how it happened, but um, Warner got overtaken by the 13 car of Schotter. I think in the kerfuffle going into uh, Ashby where they got a little bit mixed up with the pro carts and he lost and at that point he came back and they kind of got almost locked together. He, I think, I, I'm not sure whether he misidentified the car, thought it was a pro cart that had gone past and thought I've got way more power than that mm. and then was surprised when the, the, it was accelerated. Well, didn't move. And it went, oh, oh, okay. Um, but yeah, a bit of action there for all of us. Uh, I would imagine conversation will be had. Right, let's have a quick rundown then. Jack Goodyear takes the win in F300 with Matt Kate a second. Third is Jason Cooper. Gary Woodward was fourth. Ian Schotter eventually finishes fifth. Oliver Warner finishes behind him in sixth. 
Uh, the Procarts was the James Walker in the number 131 from the back of the grid to the front in a space of eight minutes and one lap for James Walker. Oliver Clark was second. Third was Craig Omerod. George King, fourth. George McRae, fifth. Lee Mitchell, sixth. Seventh was Jason Thatcher. Eighth was Oliver Parcel. Ninth was Andrew Bailey. Neil Slaughter, tenth. Eleventh win Brazil. Malcolm Freeman was 19th. And a retirement was Graham King. Final uh, F300 runner, 14th overall, was our Ayrton Senna replica of Nicholas Clear. Well... That is the end of the second round of heats. One more round of heats before lunch and then the finals. So we're halfway through the day, sort of. Back with the heavies in bright sunshine. They've, had, they've been in um, damp, overcast, and now sunshine. So they're getting every single, uh, they're getting all seasons in one day. Uh, I was, yeah. Well, that's impressive, actually. I thought it was very, very polite of the 300s to actually get themselves exactly in the place where we were covering the middle of the, uh, the, uh, the twin engine carts just to make it so many easy for us. Thanks very much. And then they provide <laughs> action. I think, it's, I, I, yeah. Because as you, you know, know as you know, don't forget, it's all about me. In, <laughs> tip, in, in, in typical mixed class racing, yes, the faster class trips over the slower class. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. You know, typical. Um, the TKM uh, retro racer heavy class are out for their heat, and the pole position man of Sean Deaver not quite getting his cart started. Now, the way that these heats have been formulated are really old school stuff. You have one one heat at the front, one heat at the middle, and one heat at the back. Hence, Sean Deven should have started on the pole, but looks very much like he's not about to start at all. No. He's on a Devenson sprint, which is the family business. They didn't make these carts but back the, in the day. In fairness, the engine is letting him down. <laughs> yep, it is the it is the Talco motor that's uh, letting him down. Uh, so I'll, I'll have a look at the grid. Uh, so Sean Deven should be on the pole. Uh, Kernigan is on second. Neither of these drivers are out at the moment. Uh, Bob Hoskin, then, will be the effective pole position from Fraser Atkinson with Matthew Lawrence, Taylor Berry, and Nick Watkins. I should say Nick Watkins could well be... No, Nick Watkins should be behind Bob Hoskin and uh, Fraser Atkinson. It'll all come out. It'll, 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 it'll be fine. fine. It'll, it'll be, be fine. Just eight minutes. It'll be fine. Don't worry. But, uh, six carts on the track, only five remain. Yeah. But um, let's hope Sean Deven can join in. When these carts go through, he's going to be push started from the collecting area. Oh, they're going to let's give it another, get it another There's go. nothing more irritating than the cart that won't start. Absolutely. And of course, the problem with these carts is they have a kind of a centrifugal um, ignition system, don't they? So your, your, your movement also fires the spark up. That's not going to start. And that's got, no, that that's, got no, that's got no... That's got no... That did not fire at all. There's two reasons for that. You fouled the plug or your um, yeah, that your, needs a, your ECU's broken. Someone's off at the top of the track, and that is the 30... Is it the 30? It's a 3-something. Three 3-1-1. Three one one. 31. 31. So Watkins has fallen off from the lead at Christmas Corner. While uh, we were busy watching the uh, carts try to get going and left with a massively... I assume well, Matthew, that was Matthew Lawrence. Matthew Lawrence oh, it was went three from flat. the... It was a 3-flat, not 31. Matthew Lawrence went from the second row of the grid through into the lead. By the time they got to Oblivion out of crook he had a massive lead and he's maintained that all the way around the first lap he's about to come through pit bend for the first time and he will lead across go. the line and second the place third. who we're with at the moment there is my matthew lawrence already and we're with bob hoskin and fraser atkinson and taylor berry a three-card battle for second third and fourth yeah so hoskin um this is i think they've, they've, they've actually got a kind of a, a settled dry running now and behind him, I remember in the day just looking at Sean Deven despondently in the collecting area, <laughs> yes. Nick, with that number 29 Devens and Sprint with a TKM engine. I remember carrying a plug and a plug spanner yeah, do, yeah. in my overalls. Now, I'll tell you what's going to happen they're going to take that back to the uh, the pits and he's going to try and start it and start first time. It'll start, of course, it will, of course, it will every time, it will. but it is engine flooding and the spark was never that. Yeah, you have to get the thing rolling to get the spark, and of course, it's kind of a in doing that, you've already got some fuel in, and also sometimes you'll choke it well remember the fuel is the oil as well exactly so it's, and that's it's where the, the spark plug oils up if it's too rich it's one of those days where some days it just fires up every time and you haven't got you haven't got a worry in the world and other times nada <laughs> yeah there's a reason rotax max took off isn't it they've got a starter we're, motor we're, and a battery we're not about that though this weekend the depreco 100 uk thing is though the historic the meeting is about going back in time well it's also about saving a huge amount of money and about that as well, absolutely. <laughs> you know, if you want to go kart racing, um, 
the, you know, the these these historic cars, which let's be honest, have 85% of the performance, as much performance as you need of a modern car. Well, we worked it out, didn't we, with Ollie and Matt to do their series. The season was less than 1,500 quid, all six discount, rounds. Discount including your travel costs. Including entry fees. Including entry fees and running costs, 1,500 quid for a full season. Yeah. Tyres that last three meetings. You need two sets of tyres. Two sets, you need yeah. a set of wets as well. So you need two sets of yeah, tyres. You might a need wets. a few set of wets. Well, um, 1,500 quid for a season. Yeah. You know, when, what is it? Is it like 30,000 for an event at the British Champs? Oh, I dread to think. I mean, some, peop some people are on budgets of huge amounts, but, you know, to, to run a, Ro a Rotax Max at a club event, you'd be looking to get change out of five or 600 quid. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, it, it, motor racing is not, no motor racing is cheap. No, that's right. It's but all relative. there is motor racing. That, and I think what I, what I particularly like, and um, having, you know, had a look at the, the TKMs, and the, yeah, they have a little bit of um, irritation about them, as all the uh, old things, is that it's not, no one's trying to get anywhere by using it. No mm. one's trying to be an F1 star. No one's That's trying right. to get touring cars. So everyone is racing because they want to race cars. And karting and this event is their aim and their goal. And there's a, there's a kind of purity about it, isn't it? Yes. With, uh, with the, this, the 100 UK Super Prix event, it's pure. It's pure racing. Nobody, as you said, no, there's nobody here aspiring to be the next Lewis Hamilton. We we had we've got somebody racing here, who, who, who fun, who, who was potentially almost the next should Lewis have, should have the, previous, should, the previous Lewis Hamilton should have been talent wise. Yeah. He was eligible, you know. Nicky Richardson should have been in a single seater and into Formula One talent wise. But this sport is cruel, and it's not about talent or ability. It's about budget, isn't it? Money and it's luck. All about budget. But it's talent. You know, three things you need: a talent, money, and, and luck, and a bit of luck. To and be the most right important one time. is money. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> And there's a way of making a, a, a very uh, a large fortune in motorsport. You first start with a very huge one. Yes, yeah, so I've, I've made a small fortune in motorsport. How did you do that? I had a huge fortune when I started, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, part of this race, Ma Matthew Lawrence, who dominated uh, the, s uh, the second heat, and I think the first heat. He's three seconds yeah. that fast than everyone else. Yeah, he is. He's absolutely... Do you think uh, he's fast. actually that heavy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. We need to get him on the, the diet. Uh, move for second place, Fraser Atkinson up ahead of Bob Hoskin. Not that one. No, it's the driver on the number 251. Taylor Berry, still on the novice plate, comes through in fourth. Nick Watkins, we lost on lap one out on the, I think that was at Inkerman. I saw that car go off. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, go back. We are down to four cars. Yeah, I mean, go back to what you're saying. You think about it, a, there is a, an interesting situation where if you're a car to like your eye, or perhaps 10 years younger than your eye, and you race at your local club, where do you go next? Unfortunately, the only things on the whole, the only things that are next are really top level series. You know, you can I mean, see your motorsport. This is fantastic. This is the sort of thing that if you are a club guy and you want to race a series that goes to several tracks, yes. you have a chance. Yeah. And that's where you want to be. And then you think, oh, I can do that. I can go to those six tracks and I can have an overnight stay at, I don't think yeah. at Lark or whatever. And, and it's a chance to compete, you know, and be on the telly and everything else and, and, and be seen and, and have a. a you know, a, a meaning overall championship against people who you... Um, and, oh, the number three car has been called for a technical defect. So our leader ah. will be off the track in a second. I don't know what his technical defect is. I can't even see where he is, the three car. Is, is he off already? Really, is oh, there he is. A bumper or What's he doing? So the three car, the black car going down the back straight, has been called for a technical defect. It's a bumper. Bumper. His yeah. rear bumper's broken. Yeah. Um, yeah he's bumper. got a rear bumper failure, so he's going to put... And he's pulled into the pit. So our leader is no longer leading. So this battle we have here is for the lead. Suddenly. That's going to put him down the grid but with uh, such a short field, Nick. I'm not sure that's going to really matter to Matthew Lawrence. No, he's when three seconds faster than everyone else. But unless, of course, the fact that his bumper had fallen away in three seconds. Let's pick up the next cart through, Ash. And there we are. And that should be the 40. Uh, it is. It's the 40 of Fraser Atkinson, who's leading by 1.3 seconds from Bob Hoskin. Yeah, so down to three carts now remaining in this. We lost. Sean Deven at the beginning of the heat, his car didn't fire. We lost Nick Watkins after two laps. I think that was on lap three. And we've just lost Matthew Lawrence in there with the mechanical deflet. Bumper. Yeah, bumper just hanging off on one side of the rear of that car. We've got just over a minute remaining with Fraser Atkinson leading in the number 40. Bob Hoskin is in second in the number 251. There they are just going through. I think that's Wilkins. It is indeed. Oh, it might be Ozias. As they come on to, yes, it is indeed, oh, under the back. I'm sorry, you, you've misidentified the track. I'm I talking did, I really one. did, yeah. Just not the, uh, the two left-handers, one after the other. Um, and then we've got Taylor Berry on the novice plate, who's 
not that far behind him and uh, going really well. I'm wondering if he's um, Barry's. No, he's a bit slower lap, lap wise. He's a four tenth back. So the, the, the top two did times within a, uh, a thousandth of a second each other last time around. 53.445 against 53.444. So Bob Hoskin gaining a thousandth of the lap would take just the 1,374 laps to get in the lead. <laughs> and I think it might run out of fuel by then. So the weather, because it's, um, you know, it's it, the clouds are a little bit higher. You know what? They're a little bit this, less grey. If this wind steers up, Nick, it might keep the rain on. I've heard this concept. Yeah. The, the, it, we were, it, it was forecast to be unpleasant until 4 o'clock. Perhaps it's blown through and it'll stop being unpleasant from now. I mean, I mean, it's supposed to be lovely from 4 o'clock, which is my the kind of time I think the racing was finishing. Yeah, I think so. I think so. We're getting towards last lap board. In fact, there it is, just being shown to the leader, Fraser Atkinson. So, Fraser okay. Atkinson. I can tell you we now have no more rain forecast on that the is. forecast. So, he could be set fair for a dry yet overcast day. Ideal weather for cricket? I don't know, really. So, final lap then for Fraser Atkinson in this, the TKM Retro Race, a heavy class. They're running on 115cc TKM motors. Exactly what we see from the other 100 UK Super Pre runners, however, slightly bored out to give it a bigger, a bigger CC by 15, just helping the heavier lads. <laughs> helping. Out of the corners Absolute and across the line goes the leader. Fraser Atkinson takes heat number three. Oh, he's done the whole look at me. I'm going to wait, weave down the main line for the win. But that's <laughs> a win is a win. Bob Hoskins second and Tillerberry third and final runner at the flag. Well, there are only three, but they're covered by half a second at the end. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was pretty tight, you know. And hopefully everybody else in that uh, category will get out for their final, uh, which comes later on. Next out are our National Karting Club Senior Raw Tax, two classes of these. The blue number plates are the 162 class and the green number plates are the 177 class. Okay. And this is another cost-effective national championship. Absolutely, yeah. They've been going five years, Nick, at the National Card Club. And um, the, 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 they try and keep the cost down. And one of the ways they're keeping the cost down is by tyre regulation. Absolutely, because the, the, the biggest disposable cost in any motorsport is tyres. Um, um, and that's that's the, the rolling problem. And so they've, they've taken up the invitation to come and be part of the 100 UK Super Pre event. So it's an invitational run. It's not any champ. It's not a championship round. It's an invitational run from these Rotax Max runners. And it's basically a bit of a trial. They're trialing the Maxxis Sport tyre for next year's tyre that will be included in, as the regulation tyre. They've got another couple of tyres. I think they, they said they've got a, a Vega to test as well. And they're basically testing durability because the regulation for the National Car Club Championship is that a set of tyres has to last you three rounds. You've got to use one set of tyres for three rounds. And that's, that's it's quite a new thing. That's pretty unheard of in uh, even a club-level karting. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the point. Yeah, as I said before, I was distracted by the fact... Oh. <laughs> Sorry, the 22 cars just spun in the collecting area. <laughs> That shows how hard these tyres are. <laughs> so oh, that, I, that is just the sort of thing I'd do. He, he basically he, he boosted it and he just yeah. did a 360 and then kissed the wall. I did the, uh, <laughs> I did the whole street race back in 1991 and the clerk of the course said, if you spin going out, you're, you're finished. Your practice is, is over. Brand new set of tyres. And I did just that. <laughs> Looped it through a 360. I had to restart myself. And I was, I was terrified that they were going to black flag me for doing exactly what the clerk the course said I wasn't allowed but that's yeah let's have a look have a look at the uh, let's have a look at the grid Alex Black on Paul Tom Radburn second Tom Elridge third Tyler Fossey fourth Ber Brent Smith fifth sixth is is uh, Mallet uh, Michael Mallet that is uh, Mike Edwards is seventh eighth is Milton Steele Vass uh, Scott Russell ninth tenth is Chris Shiver and eleventh Jack Goodyear and I it's a, it's a reverse grid is it I think so. Yeah. It looks like it, doesn't it? Here we go. So yeah. So this is this is this is the Rotax Max for the. Oh no, they're going to they're, they're going to go rave around for some reason. Oh, that's why. Twenty-two trying to get back up into, into position, having yeah. allowed the field to go through. Hmm. Are they okay there through uh, 
Yeah, they just through they, crook and yeah, it's sorting just, themselves out. I think they're sorting themselves out. They've not gone, have they? It's got a wave around officially. I think they've, oh, they've been released. Long. Uh, no, they have. No, they, they have. They, they no. thought they were, and now they've seen the flag. They got confused. They've seen the flag now. The uh, the green flag with the yellow V on it, meaning wave around. One more lap under. Well, I'm saying that they're looking a bit, little bit feisty, aren't they? And now they've decided to settle down again. Did we did we have an update on the weather forecast then? Well, someone said to me, we we're now saying there's going to be no rain whatsoever because we're having a bit of a fight with our waterproofing. Uh, and then I've just been told there may be a thunderstorm in 20 minutes. I believe the no rain, because that's my app, but it's, it's basically it's my app versus James' app who is going to get the weather right. Okay. Who Heavy did, rain who in the most for the app? Both, both was paid for nothing. Okay. 20 minutes till the thunderstorm or no rain for the rest of the day. Let's see what happens. But then let's see what happens now in this Senior Road Tax 17 Max Heat 3, and they are off this time. No problems at all. Joe? We're expecting to see Milton Steel Vassen move through the field from that sixth place starting position the field already through crook and find lady towards christmas corner Ooh. into the hairpin and they concertina up don't they and everybody through there the 71 car was 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 pointed the wrong direction actually it was actually put straight by somebody else there steel vassen already up into fourth place so he's and then into third as they go into wilkins into and out of wilkins down to walls Aussies, and they will be just in front of us on the back straight, he's got two carts to clear. Tom Radburn, Tyler Fossey. It's ah, it's not. It's 22, and the didn't see the number of the cart in second as they come down towards us. Bend. 25, it's the 25 in second. Cross the line. 35 is it? Tom Radburn, Milton Steel Vassen showing second. Tom Eldridge on the 25 now third. Michael Mallet fourth. Tyler Fossey fifth. Scott Russell. The third place 162 cart in sixth, Chris Scheiber. Alex Black is actually running, was running in second, but he's got the same transponder issue in the 35. So he's, he's, been, he's now in third, but he's been missed on ah, the transponder. That's, missing, that's why right. we were confused. So the blue, the bluey cart in third place is the 35 Alex Black, currently scored in ninth because of transponders. But uh, Milton Silvass is in second and looking to get the lead after, what, a lap and a half. And he just has to get past the 22 of Tom Radburn. Just taking his time, isn't he? As they come out of the boot and through Pit Bend for the second time. Milton Steele Vassa, Vassen, I should say, right on the tail of the leader through Crook. Out towards Fine Lady, moves to the inside as they go through the right hand kick at Fine Lady. He's got the ideal line into Christmas Corner. And he does indeed take that overall lead from Tom Radburn, Alex Black. Stays in that third place, and if anything, Alex Black looking very, very challenging for that second place on the 22 cart. They are into Wilkins and now on through Auziers, through the right hand kink on the exit of Auziers, onto the back straight for the third time. Steel Vassen now lead, and we expect Nick to see Steel Vassen just edge out as he, uh, as we've seen in the previous two heats. Well, in fact, Steel Vassen obviously put in the, uh, the effort and the wear. Through the tyres, so they get a much better uh, idea of what they ha what happens when they're being absolutely pushed to the nth limit. But behind them, the bulk of the teams are looking to see what they, what the consistency, what they can get out of them. Are they uh, comfortable? Have they got the durability? At the same time, as having a good fun race. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's all it's all collecting data on uh, just they're, they're checking lap times. They're seeing if there's any drop off in lap times after. And I'm suppose you know on a new set of Max's Sport. We shouldn't really see that uh, in, in just the third heat. If we see any sort of massive sort of deterioration on the tyres, I'm sure they're going to be inspected physically as well and visually. And this is a, a data-collecting exercise and an invitation well, I mean, from the organisers of the 100 UK Super Prix um, to the National, National Car Club. Well, the National Car Club, I mean, they, yeah, this is interesting. They, they, they'll have these tyres that have done a meeting and they'll have to work out, right, from what we can see and from the wear grade and from what they've done. Because on the whole, cart tyres are fantastic for the first half, the first few laps, and they plateau. It's yeah. finding how long that plateau is, and hopefully it's, you know, it's three heats, and you can only tell from the wear what's going to happen. That's where they're designed. You've got little holes in them which show you how much wear is left on the tread. Um, they'll be hoping what the, is, is that when they get between, like, heat three and the finals, they're the same. They, there's no performance yeah. advantage. Yeah. 22 car on camera of Tom Radburn flying round the boot. He's got himself into a very nice position of being a bit of a bit off the lead, but a bit off third, which is Tyler Fossey as they sweep now round into that left hand at Oblivion before sweeping back up 
through the crook, past Fine Lady, and then sip on the uh, the run up the hill. And it is quite a big hill, actually. And certainly when you come up to Christmas Corner, it's a big run up. You, you, you have a lot of braking help from and yes, also do. camber help. It's cambered very much in your favour if you go around Christmas Corner. Yeah, it's which I think explains why people come off there, because they think they've got so much more than they've actually got. Because you have to get it very, you, know, you can be very aggressive, and you're helped by the camber, you're helped by the gradient, and then it goes wrong. Yeah, because you, you can carry a lot of speed in there because of the gradient and the camber, but then if you're just overcoming the level of grip and the momentum that you've got in that heavy cart, then you can easily make a mistake. It's so easy to make that mistake. And the section of track after Christmas Corner through the left-hander and then the right-hander at Inkermans, that's an acceleration zone. They sh you should be trying to take that absolutely flat track, carrying the momentum down to Ashbury. Let's just drop back one to the blue 35, who's actually scored in ninth, but third, Alex Black, with the uh, very... Um, uh, he, he seems to have the most kind of, I don't know, uh, professional-looking overalls, but he's kind of, uh, linked them in with the design of his cart as well. As he sweeps now back round to Wilkins, and he's going to go through Ozier's. He's kind of uh, drifted back. I mean, obviously, he's not as far back as he is in the scoring. He's lost a lap at some point. And uh, Ashkin is some excellent close-up action. He's love to see these carts really close up. As he comes around, you can see every single input on the steering wheel as he sweeps around the uh, rib-breaking corner if you get it wrong. In fact, there wasn't that much run over that, that when I broke my rib. It was like there was uh, <laughs> about two metres, probably a metre, metre and a half of blue. And then, oh, I see. Then it wasn't hit, like that. No, it was about a metre, metre and a half of the red rumble strip. And then you hit dirt. Oh, And I it was see. the dirt right. okay. that did me and the ill-fitting seat right. and the poor driving. <laughs> And the brittle bones. Why were you all the way out there on the? Because I, I was pushing to. Best. I think it may be. The, I, I think, if, if I remember right, that may have been. I think that was the practice I had prior to doing the test. So I actually had a broken rib for my arms test. Ah, right. You, you got through the arms. Yeah, did it pass it? So the only thing about it is because all you have to do is prove you're competent. So actually, by not going quite so fast at that last corner, I probably looked very competent. Yes, because you haven't got to be super quick. The realised there's no there's no requirement to be like you know that's these right. These guys are doing what 46. You haven't got to do a 46. You do a 50. 56. No, no, that would be too slow. It is oh, too yes. slow. But it's about but certainly if like a 52 would be fine. If you are on the track, you know what you're doing. You're not being an idiot. You're taking the right lines. They're not too worried. So I sit there going every left hand going. Though interestingly, <laughs> if you ever done if you ever done it, it it's like most things you do them they actually don't hurt as much straight when you've done them. I tried it's like an hour later, later or an hour or two later. And it gets worse and worse yeah. before it gets and better. If, you ever, if everyone's ever broken a rib, it's the most minor injury that is the most incapacitating. You can't get out of bed. Oh, you lose all your core strength. Mm, that's right. And you feel like an idiot. You can't laugh. You can't grimace. No, and, 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 and my, and my wife at the time, who's now my ex-wife, uh, had no sympathy, which may be the reason. Though in fairness, I think no wife had any sympathy for that. Inside the final minute then, as the leader, Milton Steele Vassen, continues but on his winning way. lunchtime. Uh, I, mean, I need to tell you the story of what I, after, I, after I broke my rib, what I used my cart for before I sold it. Tell us now. Oh, nice. Tell us in the interval. I'll see you in the interval. Let's, let's watch for Milton Steele Vassen. Because you won't, you won't who, guess it. Who, I, I really wouldn't. <laughs> who will be... Um, Milton will. Milton, that's, I haven't said that yet. Milton Mill. Milton will. Milton Mill to this, this heat. Though. Milton Steele will. With 20 seconds. Is he going to Is he going to cross the line? Is he, is he making a comeback or something to karting, this guy? Another lap. No, no, right. Another lap, 96. Was, Let's pick up our leader. He's going to be again. coming on to Harry's camera in the white kart, 96, any second now. So uh, there he is. Um, yellow helmet. Quite Jensen Button-esque with the Union Jack on the crown of his head. So he started from the back. Absolute bit of uh, textbook riding. He's got the fastest uh, lap with a 46-0. Just under a second faster than everyone else. So he is uh, absolutely throwing that cart around, enjoying the handling, enjoying the performance. He does his last lap here of the second, of the final heat, sorry, of the Rotax Max. Now we have a final very soon after that. And it'll be, uh, and it'll be coming across the line. And a win there for Milton Steel Vass. Very easy indeed. Nice He's one. been finding out that Alex Black, who will come through in third. Yes. In a moment, first race in seniors. Oh, right. That was his dad who just popped in to tell us his transponder oh. and I've said, we've got it in hand, don't worry. Oh, yeah. He's showing third, don't it's worry. A, suddenly it's got very busy in the timing. Yeah, you it probably, has. You, you, maybe you'll we'll hear the general timing hubbub behind us. It's a, it's a night. It's like having a posse. Yeah, they're not talking about us. Middle Silvassen was the uh, 
national karting champion in 2019 and 2020, then he's had a bit of a break and he's not doing the full series this year. Yeah. That, that's the that's where I'm getting this comeback. It's not. He's had a bit he, of a break. A bit of a break. Yeah. He had a COVID time off. He, he did. Well, he, he won the 2020 COVID championship and then uh, this year he hasn't <laughs> done the full series. Oh, we haven't um, COVID championship. Tom Radburn was second. Alex Black and his first race in seniors uh, will come through in third. That's the flag for Steel Vassen there. Here comes Tom Radburn. Yeah, Alex Black's been scored up correctly now. And Alex over. Black is definitely in third. They're the first, second, and third in the 162 class. 177 leader should be with us any moment. This is a great battle. And Tyler Fossey takes in the treble six. There's Chris Shiver through. Tom Eldridge is third. Mike Edwards fourth. Scott Russell, the fourth place 162 runner, uh, finishes eighth overall. And Michael Mallett will finish in fifth spot in the 177s. Right, we've got a minute or so, so I should tell you what I use the cart for, shall I? Please do, I'm intrigued. Um, I had a mole problem. What, skin mole? Or no, I had moles mole. in my garden. I couldn't get rid of them. I tried all sorts of things. I tried the Jay's food, everything. In the end, I took a hose pipe, stuck it in the back of the, of the exhaust, all right. and gassed the, the gassed thing. Gassed them all? Yeah. Are you allowed to do that? I have no idea. I don't know. It was many years ago, so it's fine. So, yeah, so I took it, so I just dug it, and it was great, because you ended up seeing where all the moles were, because okay, little puffs of smoke came out. Where, and literally, the little thing had, well, how they had dug up the whole of the garden underneath it. Right. Got him. <laughs> And so, then did you advertise that as sold, a no? I just sold it as a car. As a, as a I pest mean, control. In fairness, it's, it's very it's a, pest control. There's tool. an excellent chance it actually didn't, in any way, harm the mole. But moles don't like weird smells. So basically, I made the whole of the mole's house smell of two-stroke, and he went, "Nah, it's all right. I'll uh, I'll go live somewhere else." Off to next door. Oh, well, next. Yeah. There was a, so that's it. Yeah. We tried all sorts. Of, there's nothing like a mole to ruin a garden. I can tell you. Final heat then for Group A, just coming out of the collecting area. This is the Depreco 100 UK Super Prix. And we're into the final heats for our three groups, A's, B and C. A, just taking to the track now with Jason Wilson on the pole position from Adam Rogers in second. Second row of the grid is Grant Davison and Matthew Horton. Then we've got Sam Hill and Jake Packen on the third row. Fourth row is Lee Drinkle and Ed, Ed, Ed uh, Scoffin. Uh, fifth row of the grid is Thomas Pattle and Liam Hamling. Then we've got David Mellish and John Kittell in 11th and 12th. Uh, seventh row of the grid is James Cannon and Dan Crankshaw. Eighth row of the grid is Stephen Semester and Dexter Bergman. Uh, on row nine, we've got Ricky Wright and Mick Miles. And then rounding off 20 carts and 10 rows of the grid, Leo, Leo, not Leonardo Taggio and Ben Robinson. Leonardo Taggio is Depreco, our industrial vacuum cleaner company that is supporting the Depreco 100 UK Super Pre. Where are we on the track, Nick? Are we getting towards start time? We are indeed. They're on the back straight, yeah, would you believe? For it. And a very fine, orderly grid being formed up with the pole man, Jason Wilson, taking control of this and just controlling the amount of fuel air mixture into that TKM engine. 100cc carts, direct drive, no clutches on these, so very, very delicate on the throttle required to get the best out of these things. They're on a, a quite a durable hard tyre. As we get the go-ahead then, and plumes Off of two smoke, and the number 64 of Jason Wilson just moves across in front of Adam Rogers and takes the ideal line. Oh. And a bit of an off there just off camera with a couple of carts off at the first turn of Crook. Not quite sure who that was. And we've got an incident bringing out the red flag. OK, there's a red flag incident down there. So I think that was a bit of a big off by the sounds of the timekeepers. The, the, the 84 cart's broken his wheel. He's been run over by his own cart. How do you run yourself over with your own cart? Oh, no. Oh, right. That's so, good. right, that, that isn't good. Hopefully the driver's all right. Not sure of the identity yet, but we've got an incident at the first turn. Well, I say the first turn. The first turn here at Wilton Mill is oblivion. John, John, Cattle, John Cattle was involved in it um, because he's on the side of the track now with a broken um, front stub axle or, or steering arm. Well, we're getting the medical team down to the part of the track that we have the incident we'll just wait to get the identity of who was involved in that incident but we've got a red flag situation Nick with the uh, the grid of carts being brought to a halt 
and drivers now out. Park, park Ferme conditions on the back straight there. And some of the drivers taking off their helmets for a bit of air. Just sorting out uh, any kind of issues that they might have had with one another. All right, yeah, so you can see the now that turn. right the far side, the uh, medical services are with uh, the car. Right, I think he's, I think he's okay. Looking at there's a man. Is he, he's on his feet, isn't he? Yeah, there's the 84, that's, the, that's the other car. That's the car that was involved. I think he's pretty sure it was the 84. Um, not sure exactly who's involved in that corner. Who's sitting in front of us? So we've got uh, most of the carts are around 64 and 2. and So you do elimination here, Joe. You could look at the carts that are sitting there and work out the ones which you can't really... Uh, Far too hard, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. There's a, unfortunately, the, no, they are, them they are unfortunately on. dealing with a, with a driver who is uh, who's down on the ground, I'm afraid, um, on that left-hand side. And hopefully, it's just a precaution. Just giving you an idea of, uh, of what's coming next in the programme. So we're right in the midst of the Depreco 100 UK Super Prix, the third and final heats for these uh, runners for the Super Prime title. Um, after we get through our groups A, B and C, this group A at the moment, we've then got the final heat, uh, the second and final heat for the F160s, the Pro Karts and the F300s. We've got a very short lunch break, which might be soaked up now. Uh, with this stoppage um, and then we go into our finals the first final will be for the C final for the Depreco 100 UK Super, Super Pre um, qualifiers from that will make it through to the B final we've then got our uh, TKM Retro Racer Heavy class while we sort out the B final and then we've got qualifiers from the B final that will make it through into the A final before that though we've got the uh, National Car Club uh, Road Axe Max series for the 162 and 177s. Then we've got the final for the 160 Pro Karts and the F300s. And then the the reason why we're all here this weekend, the Depreco 100 UK Super Pre A final will see us battling for the overall honours to carry the SP plate for the rest of the 100 UK season. That's all getting very exciting towards as we get towards witching our Nick. Yeah, I mean, they've, um, well, the cars you can see are all parked up. The, uh, I mean, looking back down the, the, the uh, paddock, the, still unfortunately having a little bit of a look at the, uh, the driver who I think got knocked out of the car and then perhaps hit by another car, which is a bit worrying. Uh, luckily, it's dry, so everyone's sitting there going, I'm not getting too wet doing this. And there's a lookout. To their left, the drivers are looking over at towards Crook Corner, which is where the incident took place. That's just after the start. Obviously, always a bit risky. You go through Oblivion. Well, Oblivion um, is a flat-out kink, isn't it, Nick? And you've got to get, you've got to try. I mean, not so much, not quite flat out on these 100 UKs, but nigh on flat out. A little bit of, you see the cart sliding around through the very, very fast left-hander, and that leads immediately into a not a not a very tight corner of Crook, but it's. It's perhaps a bit deceiving. It's very, very quick, so it's a little bit of a dab on the brakes. The cart's concertina up, so it can, it can always be a little bit deceiving there as to uh, how the field get through that section of corners. And it's at very high speed, so carts coming together tend to do so in very spectacular fashion. So we Here can see Mill. the one the carts involved in the incident. Uh, and so looking at the steering wheel, look at the... It's Mick Miles who's the been involved. Has come back, and I think the ambulance isn't going anywhere, which is great news. I think the ambulance yeah. is just uh, going back to position again, which is fabulous news. So uh, my guess is the driver was probably on the ground, was probably severely winded, which is really horrible. Or are they going to turn around? Are they going to park? I don't know. So the one, two, three was heavily involved in this, which is Michael Mick Miles. Miles. Mick Miles. Trying to see whether that's... He's Cart looks like the steering wheel looks like it's bent to me. He's gone he's over. over he's yeah. bent the steering wheel. Yeah, he's gone over, and the, the helmet scuffed as well. Just notice mm -hmm. the mechanic lifting that. The, the, uh, the steering column's uh, broken on that one. The failed door still, and we've got a restarter going off there towards Fine Lady down the kink. They'll, he'll rejoin with the... Been, it looks like it was Mick who, who unfortunately came out of the, the cart. So I feel very sorry because that was a frightening thing to happen, but I think he's... Uh, I said, I think he was winded. He's been, uh, the ambulance has been to tend him. He's absolutely uh, fine to continue. As you say, one of the carts has got going again after action. I think he was kind of involved in it. 
Another car, which I, I was one of the, I think was the 84, don't quote me on that, a John Cattrall, that also had a problem, that had broken its front um, steering arm. Yeah, so couple two of carts came together and one cart got involved in it. Well, we've got two carts rejoining. Oh, okay, oh right, so therefore two carts got involved in the accident, two yeah. carts broken. He's got a minor graze on his arm and being, it's been reported look, he's in the fine fettle. Look winded to me. He yeah, will be winded. It's horrible. It's, it's, it's a horrible thing. I don't know whether you've ever done that. It's, it's I've never ever done that. It's nasty. I've been lucky, really. Been close to doing that, but you, the you, one you've just not really had many injuries, have you? Not in karting, no. Can you be a policeman for thirty years? How can you manage to avoid getting injured? Oh, I got injured plenty <laughs> doing that. Oh, that's for right. a living. Yeah, fantastic. But yeah. I say, I'm not. I, I didn't sit there going, "Oh, yeah." No, 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 no. I just, I, yeah, of course, got injured doing that. Knacking knees and ankles and shoulders and. Heaven knows what, but karting, no, 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 I never really got you know, I, neck, plenty of whiplash. You know what that tells me? You weren't trying hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't, Dick. Well, I wasn't as far down the field to get mixed in with uh, the sort of people that you be, were. That could be the thing, yes. yeah. <laughs> so I suppose at the front, there's less, there's less carnage. <laughs> See, yeah, he's probably... I'm not going to say that, Nick, but perhaps more ability. I reckon yes, I did. Yeah, to stay out of trouble. You don't know, because you were racing up in the northeast, you know, and I was racing in the southeast, and everyone I knows I was racing up the country better. bit. Yeah, I think there's no argument. We have carted together, so we know the answer on that one. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I still think that I, I'm exactly the same speed as Johnny Palmer, which means I'm quicker because he's 15 years younger than me. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's got to be an age thing, isn't there? There's got to be an age uh, uh, adjustment handicap. What a big old adjustment handicap then? I'm older and fatter <laughs> and still quicker. Yeah, well, that's because you know the lines. Okay. You've done, yeah, it's, it's fine. You did carting like 10 years more completion than I did, you know, so that's the point. It's when we, him when him we get him it's when we no, no, it's fun it's no we go it's car. fine because when we get our uh, when we get our TKM out for someone's garage which we tell them is <laughs> worth a tenner and I'm, then coming down, I'm coming down to Forest Edge with you and we, you, as you told me you I am not travelling to Forest, Forest Edge, Edge <laughs> to do three laps in a Rotax Max and then I need am. oxygen I am because well, yeah. you keep saying oh, you can have a go whenever you ask and I've been up to Warden Law several times and I've never ever you been come too late mate by the time you oh, get there it's all right. the practices are, are, are on going you need to come a couple of days when we can actually get you out on a, on a cart give you, a, give, give you an insight we should do that next I need, next, I need next event we yeah about. I need to do some uh, you know some, some intensive testing <laughs> I need to get some uh, feedback through my uh, my uh, data. I need to have a long time analyzed data overnight so I can work out what I'm going wrong. I want to have you in the simulator uh, to get me a better setup uh, <laughs> over, the, over the time. You'll be on a cart that with a, a driver that's just won the Rotax Euro Trophy at Le Mans. All right. Uh, that guiding you. What does that mean? <laughs> You, you can't get better advi a better advice. No, that is true. In, in fairness, it, 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 they are at the top of the level, the hunters, aren't they? Yes, um, they really are. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Anyway, but yes, yeah, so going back to my TKM, we get this garage-based TKM, we come and compete, and, uh, you know... This is, the, this is the level of karting we should be at. Absolutely. If we weren't talking I'm loving, about I'm it. I'm loving the average age of these people for a start. I mean, there are some annoyingly young people. There are certainly people who are... What's the word for it? Experienced. Well, it's... it's less, there's less grip in these carts... There's, they're very, very fast. I'm not saying they're not physical. They are. You do have to have a relatively uh, le a good level of fitness. And you certainly need to have a good level of fitness to be able to start these things, which we're seeing now. <laughs> and the driver's hopping in uh, very agile, in a very agile, sprightly way to get these things off and running. We've got, we're going to get the carts in this uh, third and final heat for Group A. For the Depreco 100 UK Super Pre. What this, what this is mainly done is de 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 delay lunch, isn't it? It's delayed lunch. It might even eradicate lunch. We, we have our lunch. Lately. Luckily, we have our lunch in, uh, in some foil containers for us. The yeah. boys are getting lunch brought out to them, so that could mean involve James running to get oh, to the really? cameraman, yes. yes. Oh, um, I see. Right. Sausage sandwich or whatever it is. I noticed, by the way, uh, it has been more than 20 minutes, and we haven't had this thunderstorm yet, by the way. We haven't, yes. So that I know I'm tempting fate massively. James is, but the sky, you know what, I've said this every time I've looked at the sky, I thought, oh, rain's coming. Uh, um, we're going to get a restart, mm. and I'm going to look towards Lauren Still who, saying nothing. and ask, are we restarting in grid order? We are full restart because the red flag came out on the first lap. Uh, thanks to Lauren for keeping us right again. So Jason Wilson and Adam Rogers should be on the front row with Grant Davis and Matthew Horton on the second. And then we've got Sam Hill, Jake Packen, Lee Drinkle, Eddard Scoffin, Thomas Pattle, Liam Hamling, David Mellish, John Castle, James Cannon, Dan Crankshaw, Stephen Simister, Dexter Bergman, Ricky Wright. We're missing Mick Miles, who was the unfortunate driver. I think we might be missing Dexter as yeah. well. Uh, I think uh, I'm surprised... 
I think John Cattle's managed to mend his car. I'm sure he was the car that had the uh, broken hut stud, but there we go. That isn't a very, in fairness, that isn't a very long fix, is it? No, no, new, new steering column. Um, it looked like the steering wheel might be bent. No, that one, the mark, Mikey, I mean, the, the oh, mark right, the broken stub axle, that's, not, that's 20 minutes, isn't it, really? We're With about that. to go racing. Here we go, choking it up on the C3 Adam Rogers, and go, go, go. And let's see if they can get through Oblivion and Crook without any incident. They have this time, sweeping around, a couple of carts left behind, but uh, not left behind Wilson. Little bit of coming up the hill, 64 from 63. So it's Wilson from Rogers as they complete the first few corners. And already out of Inkerman down towards the Ashby Ooh. hairpin. It's downhill this one, so it's easy to carry too much speed into it. Out of the Ashby hairpin towards the left hander at Wilkins. Getting towards the final stages of this first lap, then Jason Wilson, Adam Rogers. I'm not quite sure who clinched that lead at the first turn. It was indeed the number 84. 64. 64, sorry, of Jason Wilson. He led from the pole position and continues to lead as they cross the line to complete one lap. Jason Wilson leads. Adam Rogers hangs on to that second. Grant Davison in third. Up into fourth has gone Sam Hill. Jake Packer now down to fifth. Up three spots. Dan Crankshaw brings Thomas Pattle with him in sixth and seventh. Lee Drinkle eighth. Down two is Eddie Scoffin with David Mellish moving up to rounding off the top ten. So the heat A this is the first of three heats of the UK 100, 100 UK. And a nice little lead there for, uh, for Jason. They've all gone spreading out. In fact, it is a procession of carts, all about 0.5 of a second apart from each other at the moment. As they funnel down the uh, back straight and into the boots. Yeah, they've quite sort of spread out and are quite equidistant. We've got, I'm not seeing any kind of challenges. Mind you, Nick, it's going to take a little bit for those tyres to come back up to optimum. Mm -hmm. They were a little bit of a delay, so they'll have cooled right off. So maybe we're just going to see tyres coming into play now as they get Oof. into the second and third lap. Backing it in. Yep, backing it in on the brakes there. Rear axle direct drive and only one brake on these carts at the rear. If you're new to karting... It's like applying the handbrake when you, if you've ever done that in the snow in your car, all you're doing is braking the rear axle and hence the, the drivers on these carts using that as a tactic to get the cart to turn into the corner. We've all been there in the snow, putting our handbrakes on, swishing out the tail to your fabulous turn. Absolutely. Just don't do it in a Citroen. <laughs> do you know why? Handbrakes on the front. Some of the, yeah, the Citroëns, the handbrake was on the front wheels. I did not know that. Which meant that when you didn't do a handbrake tail, you did a handbrake crash. <laughs> <laughs> Leader through Crook and through Fine Lady towards Christmas Corner then for the fourth time. And Jason Wilson leads Adam Roberts. Uh, sorry, Adam Rogers. Don't know where I got Roberts from. Matthew Horton third. Fourth is Grant Davison. Samuel fifth. Dan Crankshaw sixth. And no change there apart from Lee Hamling. Liam Hamling, I should say, moving up into 10th ahead of Lee Drinkle and dropping Lee Drinkle in the number 75 down to 11th. Stop. Leaders already through and onto the back straight towards us. I think we're a little bit closer. I mean, I'm not sure whether Wilson's under any sort of concern at the moment. But this, is, of course, is a point scoring exercise to get themselves into the finals. Don't forget, there are three finals for this 100 UK. There's a C, a B, and an A. There will be and 20 in the first heat, but then t I think eight move up, don't they? And remember, Nick, the reason that we might be seeing this heat being a little bit more processional than we've seen, the grid for the heat three is how we've scored in the first two heats. Yeah. So we're seeing people where they are performance-wise, perhaps more so. And the more we get into the C, B and A finals at the end of the meeting, that's what we're going to see. We're going to see people coming together from the three groups. And it might not be as processional, but we're certainly going to see perhaps the first 15 carts being very, very close indeed, performance-wise and driver ability. Yeah, and so, so, but the point about it is, even if you're a rotten day and qualify for the C, you can bump up to the B and then bump up to the A. So we will end up with, a, I think, a, 30, a full 30 carts for the A final. And that will be uh, through bump up. So in fact, when we start the finals, the first thing off with the C final of this, this class, then the B final, the gap, and then finally the A final after a couple more gaps. And the reason the gaps are there, because people who were in the, in the race will bump up and they'll need to know who it is and work out what their tyres are and everything else. Well, after, after the three heats, 
the top 24 from the three uh, groups, the top 24 qualify for the final A. The next 24 qualify into the B final, and the remaining are in the C final. That's about 12. Isn't top eight from group from the C final progress to the B, and then the top 10 from the B progress to the A final. So there'll be a 34 cart field for the A final. Yeah, I mean, the, the C final is going to see most of the carts progress. We've yeah. Got 50. I mean, I'm not quite sure how many we've actually got. And the reason being is that the, they haven't all gone out at the same time. I think we've got 59 entries, and maybe even 60. Entries, but I. That we've probably lost a couple, so it's possible actually the C final might just be an extra little bit of a run because they may all be bumping up. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what the numbers. I don't, I don't know. I've looked at the numbers, but yeah, we'll, we'll wait and see what how that pans out at the end of the day and how many qualifiers we've got. Now the gap at the front beginning to close together. There was a, on a half a second last time by, and if anything, that visually looks to be closer between Jason Wilson and Adam Rogers. The number 64, the yellow and blue cart, leading the number 63 round. I'm not sure if these are running out of the same morning. I'm trying to see the livery on the carts. Everything looks like a bit of a high-speed game of chess at the moment at the front of this field. They're just coming round now to complete seven laps. And it's Jason Wilson leading, Adam, Roberts, uh, Adam Rogers second. Third, up to third, has gone Grant Davis and Matthew Horton is dropping down the field. I think we've lost Matthew Horton. Don't forget, he had a transponder issue in a previous heat. Ah, right, you are now, right. Whether that might be that one. Whether that has uh, glitched him again, or whether he has had a, uh, a, a drive. Well, there is a cart off in the middle of the field there. There is a cart off, uh, probably blocked by the, the gantry for you, but it's been pulled back just south of Christmas Corner. Ah, yes, I see that. It's blocked by Clock the... two, getting a bit closer again. We're looking, if it is Matthew Horton, it's cart 28. Wilson from Rogers. Here is the leader across the line to complete eight laps. So they've got, got about three to go, I think. Yeah, just over a minute on the clock there, Nick. So they'll get two more before they get the last lap. And again, it is interesting, as you say, Joe, they've, they've put the carts in the order that they qualified after two rounds, and they're now finishing in that order. So uh, a bit like Formula 3, isn't it? In four hours qualifying, <laughs> and they just drone past par for an hour and a half. I mean, at least there's a bit of action here between first and second. Yeah, definitely closing. Adam Rogers chasing down with the fastest lap of the heat so far from Adam Rogers. He goes a tenth quicker last time by. I mean, and it's he... important points because this is this is perhaps you know this is the difference between first and second, the difference between first and fourth. It or, could or be first yeah. and sixth. Because don't forget, it's the, yeah. the top guys in all of the three heats are put together. So suddenly you've got you know, not just the guys who've been racing in, mm. in Group A, you've got the fastest in Group B and the fastest in Group C. So it's a You've got some unknown races to be racing against, or at least unknown for today. I'm sure they all know each other very well from racing uh, across the series. Well, they've got two laps of racing left because there's only 13 seconds on the clock. So next time by, they will get the one lap to go board. And we'll see what that brings. With time running out now, they're out of the Ashby hairpin and towards Wilkins, the left-hander there. Very, very fast left-hander. Not really a chance for passing unless you've come off the previous corner really well onto the back straight towards the final section of the track here at Wilton Mill using all of the curb on the left hand entry to the boot not having to hit that second apex of the boot there and that's the one lap to go board last lap Rogers is much faster around the, that, that final corner than Wilson and he can close right up Get within a couple of a couple of car, cart legs. They come up the hill to Christmas Court, looking at that left, looking right, oh. siding against it, and they now drop down through the Inkerman switchback, and they'll come plunging into Ashby. But they have, of course, got he, just a few corners left. He didn't have a chance to challenge Nick because Jason Wilson was absolutely on the edge of braking efficiency. There, both carts absolutely on the limit. They're both going for it. They're not coasting it home to the flag, are they? No, through those years and looking at the back straight. I mean, it's, it's, it's extra point, just getting a hot. This is the last real overtaking manoeuvre and a very much cart placing there by Wilson decides, no, the nun shall pass. That's not going to happen. But a little bit of pace there from Rogers. He might try and get up the inside, but you'll be really lucky to get in. The drive, oh, so close. He did come out of the drive, but he just missed out. And the 64 just held on 
by the 40, massive amount of 43,000. 43,000 to the second. Yeah, I mean, that was, uh, it was, he, he managed to get the drive. I get the impression that Wilson was actually kind of slightly fox there. I thought he was going to follow him home. Mm. And then suddenly, uh, Roger said, no, hang on a second, I'll give it a go up the inside. He really did, didn't <laughs> he? But, he did uh, and it, great line. It, it, very much more reminiscent of track cycling at the velodrome when they come <laughs> out the last corner and go, and you see them kind of push the carts over the line. Yeah, great battle at the end there. Jason Wilson finally taking the win by 43 thousandths of a second for Madame Rogers. Grant Davison was just over seven seconds behind them in third. 2.7 seconds to fourth, Dan Crankshaw. Sam Hill was in fifth. Four seconds behind Sam Hill was Liam Hamling up into sixth eventually. Jake Packen was seventh. Edid Scoffin was eighth. Thomas Paddle was ninth. David Mellish rounds off the top 10 with Ricky Wright, Leo Drinkle, James Cannon and John Cattell. Uh, 11th, 12th, 13th and 14th. We lost Matthew Horton there after nine laps and Leonardo Taggio was, of course, the cart that we lost at that first corner incident um, at the start of this race. So uh, next out, Group B for the 100 UK Super Prix. Yep, so these guys will be looking to get their places on the various grids. Don't know which grids they're looking to get places on. I think you, I think you said it, Nick. It's, it's going to be very important to score points in these heats, um, and it, it, you need to be. It's important to qualify, not just qualify for the year final, but it's going to be crucial. We've seen how performance levels and driver abilities are very, very close in this category of TKM karting. And I think grid position is going to be very, very important. Um, it's, it's a track which is not that easy to overtake. You've really got to plan your move and you've got to really, you've kind of got to tuck it up and, uh, and, and send it really to uh, in various parts of this track to make it stick. Now, I've just noticed that the old plate of Scott, ah, oh, there he is, he has made it out. Oh, you were worried, were you? Oh, I did. I was uh, worried about my old plate. Yep. Well, Scott Williams on the pole position, on the uh, carrying the ore plate. Uh, Nicky Richardson alongside Will, Will Cottrell and Adam Sirrett are on the second row. Row three is Paul Stratha and Sean Davies. Uh, Simon Newby and Richard Steele are on row four. Row five is Justin Waddington and Lee Jackson. Row six is Duncan McLeod and Brendan Williams. Uh, row seven, Bradley Dyson and Sergio Taggio. Row eight is Tom Purchase and Taylor, ba uh, Tyler Ballard. Row nine is... Uh, Callum Bergman and Scott Baccio. Bacciocci is how you say that. You're having a, you're having uh, a, I'm having a problem with that. With that aren't you, I it's because I'm not looking at it as I'm reading it. I'm already, <laughs> I'm already a row below. I should stop doing that. Row 10 is Wesley Graves and Ashley Harris. So it's a 20-cart field for Group B. Um, group B, final, third and final heat for them for the Debreco 100 UK Super Prix. And they're already with us at the boot, Nick. Yeah, Richardson against uh, Williams. Part three, so far Williams has had the upper hand, but of course, you know, he's not faced the fastest from heat three, heat C or heat A yet. He is just, so far, the fastest in heat B. So Richardson, who has the pole, or sweet part, no, he actually gives, gives ground going through the Bolivian. No, no, it was, uh, it was Williams who had the pole. He's yeah. The, fight, the, be, the better line. Oh, left-hand side is pole. Sorry, yeah. I was, yeah. It, it came round wrong on the... Rich uh, Richardson was challenged massively, ooh. very strongly by Cotterill, and Richardson had to be... Had to literally hang on round the outside of the Oblivion left-hander. He's hung on to that second place, though, and will try to get on terms with the leader, Scott Williams, the all player. He's kind of dominated this group. Winner of the first and second heats and top three beginning to break away. Yeah. Oh, that, that, that Richardson challenging very aggressively into Williams. He's just not having it this time. He's, he's been shown the, the way by Scott for the first couple of heats. But now we have this interloper in Will Cottrell. We've not seen this aggressively up the front so far in the previous two heats. But what they're not doing is they're just going to knock let Scott Williams get away. But Scott, let's be honest, but it has seemed to kind of ease into the race. Almost like he's running a pressure that takes a couple of extra laps to come into absolute maximum speed. But it's Williams and Richardson and Cottrell in a much more feisty opening. So in reverse of the previous heat, where they were all just going around going, I'll have the points, thank you very much. Here, some scores to settle. Yeah, and this is where it's going to start. The intensity is going to start getting greater and greater as we get towards that all-important Depreco 100 UK Super Prix final coming up later this afternoon through the Ashby hairpin and into Wilkins. 
It's Williams leading, Richardson second. Rest of the field, there's been some movers and shakers down the field, Nick, as Duncan McLeod up three spots to eighth place. Wesley Graves up into 11th from 15th there. Wasn't Duncan there. McLeod the Highlander? I'm not sure. I think he was. Oh, Spinner. It can be only one. Spinner at the boot. Down the field, though, we'll find out who that is because he's going to end he's up way down. Track. Yeah, he's going to be... Can't it, it scored number. last because his cart stopped. He's ever scored last next time round. It it's looks like... Duncan McLeod. I've just mentioned him. Oh, no. And it's Duncan McLeod. That's dropping down the order. Oh, McLeod in the and 69. Williams are both dropping. So McLeod and Williams both dropped out this That's lap. Brendan Williams, not Brendan Scott Williams, the leader, yeah. though. Let's not scare. Let's not scare the and family. And the lead now has gone. Uh, Nicky Richardson. He's going to get past. While we were looking at that spinner, he's got past uh, Scott Williams, laying down some uh, important law to him at this time. But Cottrell, Streeter, and Sirrett now have decided to make it a five-car party. Oh, and it looks like Scott Williams has got the pace to come back at Richardson. You know, the question is, we're going to find out very soon if Richardson's been playing a bit of a waiting game. And now the all-important final, third and final heat. We see Richardson lead in what looks like very strong style well, through Crook and out towards Fine Lady, the right-hand king leading down to Christmas Corner. And, of course, for the third heat in a row, they're, they're creating very different conditions. Yes, it was dry last time around, but now the track's probably 10 to 15 degrees warmer. Yes, it is. The air temperature's warmer. It's less dense. So they, they, they may have got as, even as, as precise as thinking about readjusting the engines for the change in ambient and the change in humidity. And, of course, the most important thing in any racing car, the tyres and the tyres, will be acting completely differently. So you need to get a pressure right, the hand will be coming out, because this is now turning into a pleasant summer's day rather than, as it was earlier, a typical summer's day. It was, and that cloud has broken up to the first kind of blue and white cloud rather than grey skies that we've seen all day. awful for them. In fairness, it's not looking that good from where it's coming from. Is it coming from over there? Yeah. Ah, right, OK. That does not promise That looks more like the, uh, the thunderstorm we were promised, uh, what we were, we, were, we were mentioned, but who knows? Four laps complete. Nicky Richardson leads. Scott Williams second. It's a five-card battle at the front of this field. Will Cockrell third, Paul Street the fourth, Adam Sirrett in fifth spot. They've got a bit of a gap now of just under three seconds before we see sixth place of Simon Newby. And still Richardson leads. He's into the Ashby hairpin at the bottom of the hill. And Scott Williams absolutely glued to the bumper of the 27 as they come through Ozier and onto the back straight. Can Following Williams other, have a challenge? There's a bit of an argy bargy for fourth and fifth between the 26 and the 42. Streeter and Surrett, they're so much so that they were kind of sitting on each other's wheels at one point. Uh, it looks like the 26 Street had managed to remain ahead. Uh, just confirm that yes, but there was a lot of coming together. And they've, now the uh, third, fourth have been split away from the first two. are still nailed together by the length of a small rope. Great battle at the front of this. You, you kind of get the feeling, are they playing a waiting game? I'll, I'll tell you now, they're not. They are absolutely on the limit. And you saw the way Nicky Richardson and Scott Williams on the old plate absolutely on the edge of breaking. What are you laughing at? That was a great and good bit tribute comment. It was. <laughs> it was, wasn't it? Let me ask a question. Let me uh, ask a question. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it was. Uh, for those of you who don't know, you won't You know. don't know. No, no, no. It's going to be hard. Take your old day to explain that one. I made, I made Nick chuckle, though. Back to the lead of this. Let's get, let's get a grip of this. Third and final heat for Group B. As Nicky Richardson rounds pit bend and complete six laps there's just under three minutes of the, on the clock so scott williams beginning to break away and leaving will cotter in a very lonely spot in third adam sirrett up into fourth ahead of paul street at that time by so a change of place behind cotterill i think williams is playing a waiting game i think he's playing a waiting game i think what, he, for the final you mean no for the for a later part of this race he cotterill no, Williams. Oh, Williams. Oh, sorry. Yes. Not yes, sorry. Him, yeah. he's got on screen. It looks like he could be. Because he's not even fainted. He's not even made a move. He's not even tried to worry Richard. Oh, there. here we go now. Now, now, that's now. It. But, oh, squeezy, squeeze. Oh, they come together. Got him, got him into, oh, it's wheel banging walking going out. Oh, well, brilliant, right? there. That was brilliant defensive driving there. Alonso-esque by the, by the Villeneuve helmet. Eased him out. Fair. In the, in the words of uh, 1970s football, hard but fair. 
with Norman Hunter. It really was, and there's still plenty of time for Scott Williams. Now, these two well, having a... seven is looking incredibly nervous with Callum Bergman because he needs to get out. Of the... well, that's, that's very much getting out of the way. <laughs> he... It's gone gardening. But, the... but that uh, side-by-side action, is, as you say, is that Will Cottrell right in the action again. Yes, I was just about to say that. These two going wheel, wheel, ba- wheel banging all the way through the boot has allowed Will Cottrell up, and it might be that if these two continue these antics... We might even have the two contenders, contenders not just for the heat, but ah. contenders for the overall honours of the Super Prix. Richardson chose the inside line that time. wasn't going to let Williams come back up the inside him again. Uh, so he chose the inside line. Williams elected not to sweep round the outside, but absolutely sitting there thinking about, I could pick up some fantastic uh, remnants here. It's Cottrell, as even then, Richardson's not taking the ideal line, going through oblivion. So he's already running defensive, and these three battling, oh. battling like male cats in a feral world. Oh, yeah. oh, coming around the outside, he's eased him right out. And he's dropped to third, so Richard gets eased out to the third, but now at the inside goes Cottrell. Some brave, oh, some brave breaking through Inkermans, and he could have managed to get it, but no. It was, Willi- it was Williams who got the overall win. Let's look at this again. Yeah, it all came out. It was coming out of uh, Crook Corner, and Williams down the inside, textbook fashion, Last of the lead breakers, though, was Richardson, and it was side by side, but on the grass, too much momentum to gather that all up together. It's probably, I mean, it's fair. I don't think it was was just a hard but fair move, but uh, the 32 there, Cottrell, we've not really seen uh, Mixie and matching with these guys. The the fact they've tripped other up has given him a chance to have a go, and now he's sitting right on the bumper of Williams. Six-cart battle at the lead with the antics at the front of this field. It's allowed the rest of the runners to come through. Cottrell just has a look down the inside, Behind Nicky Richardson, though, that's a change for four. Oh, and, and right a, off accident there. Yeah. Was a, 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 the 50, oh, I think the 55 Wesley Graves and the Streeter came together. Graves tapped Streeter and so he went, went, went over the grass. Let's look what happened. I'm sure it's what happened there. Up the inside. And it, yeah, so those are 42. The 55, so it was actually it was Graves who, who made the accident of Sirrett, but Sirrett's come off worse. So Sirrett there will be sitting being particularly agreed, but the lead, the one, two, three, is Williams, Cottrell, Richardson. And they have this lap and one more, Joe. It's last lap board, uh, Nick, this time by. Yep. There it is being shown to the leader. Absolutely fantastic race, this one. It's come from nowhere because we were absolutely set up. So yeah, it's procession time. They've said, no, thank you very much. Richardson would be very disappointed to be in third. Um, and we probably wonder where, where Cottrell came from because Cottrell's not shown like this at the top. But interestingly... Tiny, tiny gap now for Williams. He's just got that bit of air, and with only a few corners to go. Yeah, and it looked like Nicky Richardson really did want this heat win, didn't he? He's having, he's going to have to settle for third as time's running out, even for him to challenge on that second place of Will Cotterill. Down Will the Cotterill, Drake, there's one more corner where you can do something, which is a brave dive up the inside going into the boot, but no one's done it. And they're settling the fact that Williams is going to win another heat. So he's got a very, very good chance of starting from pole for the main A final. Second is going to be Cottrell. And Nicky Richardson, we disappointed with third. That means he's going to be probably starting no higher than fifth. Mm. Possibly even sixth or seventh. Yeah, we'll wait and see. Give him the work to do. When that A final grid comes out. So just to confirm, Scott Williams with a great win there. Some great racing in that uh, third and final heat from the Group B's. Uh, Group B e runners. Will Cottrell was second. Nicky Richardson third. Paul Streether finally comes through on the tail of Richardson in fourth. Wesley Graves fifth. Sixth was Simon Newby. Sean Davies was sev- seventh. Eighth was Justin Waddington. Richard Steele ninth. Top ten was rounded off by Tom Purchase with Scott Bacchiocci <laughs> in eleventh. Tyler Ballard was twelfth. Adam Surratt was the driver that lost out there and ends up coming through i think this will be him now in 30 no he's still dropping down the field that was lee jackson across the line there's the number 355 of sergio taggio and i think we lost adam sirrett on that penultimate lap we also lost callum bergman duncan mcleod and brendan williams so we've got some carts to retrieve, Nick. A couple of cart retrieving or buckets going out there. We Before we get kind into... Kind of reminds me of the vultures from Bednall's and Broomsticks. <laughs> they rush out to pick up the carts and hope, oh, I've got that marvellous. It's uh, the third and final heat for our Depreco 100 UK Super Pre runners. This is Group C out for their final heat. A while before they get to go. There's a few minutes of clearance. I think so. Um, I thank think you so. to Dupreco. Thank you to Boiler Choice. Thank you to Raptor Custom Racewear. Thank you to HeadTech uh, for sponsoring 
this event, uh, a combination of the 100 UK Club and the National Kart Club. National Kart Club are bringing a fantastic uh, little bit of a variety to this classic race with their Rotaxes running test tyres. It's very exciting being part of a test, I always think. It really is. And uh, we've obviously seen some just fantastic racing just a few seconds ago from the 100 UK B. He's got 100 UK C's and we've got to have three finals where it is winner takes all, so we should see nothing but action and probably even more carts being retrieved oh, yeah. after the finals. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we have this that we have this race, which is the 100 UK C heat then we will have the f160 f300 then we have a short lunch break i've no idea how long the lunch break is going to be it's time for half an hour it may end up being shorter due to stoppage it may not be shorter i don't know whether the rules are the marshals have to get the half hour then we have all the finals all the finals are 12 minutes past one lap and the final order will be the 100 ukc final then the tkr heavy final then the 100 uk b final don't forget people will bump up from the c to the b then we have the Senior Max Max National Kart Club 177 Championship, which should be a good one. Uh, then we have the F160, and then we have the 100 UK A final. Whereas we were explaining to us an outside chance that Joe will be doing a pit walk. We don't know. Possibly. We're not sure that's happening. We're going to see if we're well, happening. Well, they were talking about being tw 20 minutes. I think possibly the way the time's kind of drifted you, away from that may not be happening. You made that sound as though I was the possibility whether or not I could walk. No, you're doing it, but it's, it's going to happen because of the time delays. Because of the time delays, yes, indeed. Yeah, we're going to try and get some interviews, but um, Lauren will be able to tell us as we get further through the day. We've still got a chunk of racing left, of course. Two of the two classes to still complete their third and final heats before we go into the lunch yeah, break. We'll tell you we go with exactly the what the lunch break is. C's. Let's have a quick rundown of the grid then for Group C for the Depreco 100 UK Super Prix. Ryan calls on the pole position with Paul Monks alongside. Second row sees Lee Hackett and Dominic Pine. Row three, we've got Ian Henderson and Paul Birchinall. Matthew Lawrence and Owen Potter are on row four. Row five is Dean Walker and Dennis Barclay. Row six is Paul Von Gerard and Ryan Gill. Sean Taylor and Andrew Bradley are on row seven. Row eight is Thomas Evans and Marcus Gray. Row nine is Chris Cook Martin and Craig Caldwell. And row ten only has one card, 19th rounding off the 19 cart field and that's James Lovell that's the grid and we've got the grid just beginning to form up now as they are getting towards the left hand red OZX and onto the back straight where we'll see the grid and all the stragglers <laughs> catch up they got a, it was a really good start, actually. They got them away, and they are now almost all bunched up, going down the back straight. It's one cart just coming down the outside of Ozias, and that is the number two machine of James Lovell, who is starting at the back. So they should, if they just ease it down a little bit, I think this should be a man waving just to slow them down. They should have no issues whatsoever getting off this time. No one's waving. The smoke rises. And it's off the they go. And the 21 sweeps into the lead of Ryan Cole there. Yeah, he does. He just chops across the front of Paul Monks, who was alongside him on the grid, and it's very much Ryan Cole who leads down towards Christmas Corner. Got a yellow flag, so I assume someone's had a bit of an off. Who's dropped it? No, he's got going again, so there was a slight issue going through Oblivion the first time round, but a fabulous lead in the uh, the first few few yards from Cole. He's got Monks behind him again. They've been the ones who've been battling most of the time before, and then we have a trail of 15 carts all looking for third place at some point. <laughs> So first, second, in third, it's the uh, bright red machine. It's the car, I think, of Hackett, isn't it? It's the third. No, it's the 20 cart. Sorry, I do apologise. It's up from, from six. Six, four virginal. virginal. So he's had a good start. He's got through the melee, though he's now being very heavily attacked. He's going to lose third before we actually get across the line to the grey cart. That is the 38 of Lee Hackett. So third, oh. fourth, fifth, sixth, and they go through. So it's Hackett. So the, but the battle at the moment is third and fourth, which is the grey 38 and the red 20. Keep an eye on the number three. Remember Matthew Lawrence, who was leading this group massively in heat two and got a mechanical flag for a loose bumper. That's dropped him down the order coming into this third and final heat. So he'll be on a bit of a, a charge to increase his chances of qualifying for the air final. So Matthew Lawrence, last time by, already up to sixth spot, having started. Where did he start? I'll just keep it. Yeah, he started seven, so he's gained one place. Just keep an eye for the number three. There he is, just latching on to the back. In fact, he's ahead of Ian that? Henderson yeah, last I time see, by. I can see him getting through, but he's going to have a problem. There is now a gap 
performing between the cart we're looking at now, the 38, and the top two of Cole and Monks. That gap is about uh, 1.8, 1.9 seconds as it is. Yeah, he, dr he, he got ahead of Ian, Ian Henderson, and then he dropped back behind Ian Henderson. So Quite he gets back way. to seventh, yeah. He's back to seventh. So perhaps, you know, that show of pace, he, he's put on his new bumper, which is not as quick. <laughs> In fact, he's dropped right off the tail of Ian Henderson, hasn't he? As they go through Ashby. This one's gone a bit more stretched after the, after the last race, which was nothing but action. This one's a little bit more slow burn. The lead for Cole is quite comprehensive over Paul Monks. I don't know whether Monks really cares much about that, whether he's happy with second, I don't know. Are you happy with second, Nick? Why are we happy with second? Because it's a points race. They're trying to qualify for a main final. Sometimes a safe second is better than a risky first, or risking it for first. So it's Hackett in third, Birchnell in fourth, Pine in fifth. Now you see the lead, the second place, 44, and then the 38. So four, oh, just swapped there. So Birch has gone back. I think Pine's got past him into fourth. And you can see the 4 one one of Ian Henderson, who started well in the first heat in the damp and isn't looked quite so good since. But now there's a real battle here. And he was just struggling around the, uh, uh, the Ashby hairpin there, weren't they? Yeah, Birch, no Pine, and Henderson absolutely nose to tail as they go down towards Orsiers, out of Orsiers, through the right hand kink at the exit of that corner, onto the back straight then towards the boot. And they keep to the textbook line on the right hand side of the track, through the left hander, into the boot now, nose to tail. Birchnell, he's got right on his bumper, Dominic Pine, who likewise has got Ian Henderson, crossing the line there as one. Yeah, Henderson's a found a bit more pace, hasn't he? He's looked off the pace at some point. Oh. Yeah, he's, he's gathered it back up, hasn't he? And it's Pine looking up the outside of Birch, and he gets him, sweeps around the outside quite easily there. That's almost like just from pure, from pure speed, isn't it? There's another car has an issue uh, going through oblivion into turn one. I think that's maybe just a broken down machine, yep, being rescued from the side of the track. May even have broken down it somewhere else, but there's a couple of carts off the track. We, we, we're losing a few of them to the... Uh, the extra pushing, and of course, as we said, because they are direct drive, Joe, you go, you go off, you don't get going again. Not that easy, is it? Up, so up ahead of Birchnell has gone Dominic Pine. Whether or not he can increase and give himself a breather, we have just clicked by the half distance mark. So still plenty of racing, uh, plenty of time to go racing in this third and final heat for Group C. As the rest of the field come across the line. Ryan Cole is still out in front from Paul Monks in second. Lee Hackett is in third. And then the battle that we are focusing on as it's beginning to heat up even further as Henderson. Henderson now ahead of Birchnell. So Birchnell looks over his shoulder to see who else is going to come through. And he's got Matthew Lawrence in the number three behind him. But a bit of a breathing space before Lawrence can have a go. But the question is, can Birchnell in that all red car, he's got the red suit, the red pods, the red nose, and the white helmet. Didn't go with the red helmet then. Didn't go with the red helmet, no. Uh, no. Yep. Flash across the line and complete six laps. I wonder what Lawrence's problem is, because that pace he had has disappeared, isn't it? It is. That is who I'm thinking of, isn't it? Yeah. The number three. Mm -hmm. He had massive pace, was leading. I think so. I mean, you, you've convinced me anyway, so who knows? Yeah. I'm, I'm agreeing thinking, with you, I'm which is rare. I'm one of the other classes, am I? Probably, but never mind. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's make out it's Matthew Lawrence, because no one else can... They, they can't tell us we're wrong. Well, they can't. They can look, look back on the replay yeah. later on. <laughs> By then, we've gone home. <laughs> yeah. Answers on a postcard, if you like. Two minutes on the clock, then. As the leader, Ryan Cole, just... Crosses the line at complete seven laps now. Rest of the field coming through ahead of these three. These three now beginning to space out slightly. The battle that we're looking at for fourth, fifth, and sixth. And that's as equidistant as we've seen for the whole of this heat. With none of these three runners looking like they're about to challenge one another. Ryan Cole's just gone. It's five seconds he really ahead. Has. Yeah, the poor Monks. I mean, you know, we, we've seen him be near the front, but we've not seen him just lay it down as such. Monks has got a second or so, a second and a half on Hackett. And then there's this battle we're looking here, which is the Pine, Henderson and Birchdorf. But they're 10 seconds back, and they are spreading out in the sun here of uh, Wilt Mill. The uh, 
Depreco, Depreco 100 UK Super Prix. This is the final round of the 100 UK's uh, festival of 60 100 UK's, running through several heats. A few guys had to scratch their entries due to COVID and, and life. I'm hoping no one didn't come because of the weather, because the to me, the weather's added to the whole event. And it looks to me, though, Nick, just looking across at the skyline there, that grey cloud that looked like it was heading towards has kind of gone off to on. Yeah, I think gone off to the right a little James bit. James's uh, weather app is going to lose. I think my weather app is, is the winner. I think it really is. Yeah, I really do think. Yellow it. flags out for another cart that's uh, no longer moving forward yep, under we've its own power. That's the Paul and Gerard, number 46. I think we've lost Nick. He's the next retirement. As the leader is with us out of the... Desperately tries to start it again, it just doesn't work. I think the rules are you get two goes and that's it to restart a stopped car. Henderson beginning to come under pressure from Birchnell again. This is still the battle for fifth and sixth. As the leader has just gone underneath us with Paul Monks in second, Lee Hackett third. Dominic Pine now in a solid fourth. And then there's that battle beginning to heat up again. So they're on the penultimate lap, the front runners. So... Time has run out on the clock, so they'll be getting the last lap. One lap to go aboard next time by. And we continue to watch that battle for that fifth and sixth spot, because that's, if there is going to be any change on this, be there. coming towards the ending, the final stages of the heats, not just this heat, but the heats, the heats for uh, the UK. The Depreco 100 UK Super Whoa, Prix, and there's got a it. Right, think about it. No, nope. no. The sweep there by Henderson said, "No, you're not coming around me. Uh, going into the boot. I'm going to give it a go on Pit Bend, but I'm not having that either." And they go into oblivion. Quick glance back there by Birchnell, so he knows he's none, under no threat. So he can give it a go with uh, impunity of losing a position and a little bit of choking of the engine by Henders, he comes up the Christmas corner using all the benefit of the uphill and the camber to sweep round as he now goes into Inkermans and now one of the last chances to get past on this last lap and that's not happened through the hairpin zone. No, and I don't think it's going to happen. He's got he's running out of opportunities here and Bertrand looks really racy indeed. Into and there's the chequered flag by the way while we concentrate on this battle for fifth and sixth. There's the chequered flag for Ryan Cole. He's got a huge gap before that battle for second and third was beginning to really heat up there. And Dominic Pine will come through in the number 39 in fourth. And it was indeed Henderson that held on to fifth from Birchnell. Matthew Lawrence finishes seventh, Ryan Gill eighth. I think Henderson might be happy with that because he spent most of the other races going backwards. At least this point, he, didn't, he, was, he actually moved forward a bit and then stopped. And good sportsmanship there on the slowing down lap as... We saw a bit of gesticulation there, acknowledging that great battle between Ian Henderson and Paul Birchnell. So Matthew Lawrence 7th, Ryan Gill 8th, Dean Walker 9th, 10th was Owen Potter, Craig Caldwell up to 11th, Andrew Bradley 12th, Marcus Gray 13th, Thomas Evans finishes 14th, Chris Cook Martin 15th, the last of the finishes. We lost Paul Von Gerard, Dennis Barkley, Sean Taylor and James Lovell in that heat. And that concludes the heats for the Depreco 100 UK Super Prix. Next time we see any of these runners out, it will be for the C final, still in the qualifying process to get through into the A final. Next out, though, is the uh, mixed class racing of F160s and F300s. F160s, of course, Pro Karts. F300s are the 250cc and rotary engined F300 is car actually, category. Is it actually a, a proper wankel rotary? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. two stroke? Or is it a four stroke? Right the, the, these are four strokes. Right. Yeah, all of these engines are four stroke that are out next. So a four stroke rotary, a four stroke 250 so what, cc. What years were these rotaries being run in, peer, in competitive? I okay, don't know. Because <laughs> it, like it sounds like an unnecessary complication for a car engine, to be honest. Apparently, they are very, very reliable. Very reliable and do do lots and lots of hours. Between rebuilds? Three seasons. Between rebuilds? Three seasons between rebuilds. Oh. I mean, it depends on how long your season is. Yes, if your season's like 112 races. Yes, exactly, yeah. But if it's like one meeting. If it's one <laughs> meeting a month, then... 
quite long wheelbase as well, aren't they, all these cars? Carts, I say. Yeah, Jack Goodyear on the pole position, Matt Cater in second, Jason Cooper third, Gary Woodward fourth. Row three is James Walker and George King. Row four is George McCray and Lee Mitchell. Row five is Jason Thatcher and Craig uh, Ormerod. Nicholas Clear and Oliver Clark are on row six. Row seven is Oliver Parcel and Andrew Bailey. Row eight, Ian Schotter and Oliver Warner. Row nine is James Goimer and Neil Slaughter. Row 10, Wayne Brazil, Malcolm Freeman. Row 11, Graham King and William Seymour. And then row 12, we've got Brett Knapp and Guy Hefford. And 25, 25th spot, row 13, Lee Shuri. We've got the F30s that will start ahead of the Pro Cars. Remember, last time these were out, we had the uh, the lead uh, the lead battle for the F300s completely tripping over the Pro Cars. So we'll not want to see that again. As Jack Goodyear gets the F300s are underway. There are six carts that take this start. Well, the seventh cart actually is running absolutely the back of the pro cart, decided not to get involved at all, which is the Ayrton Senna uh, dressed um, 44 oh, yeah. machine. Yeah. But up they go to Christmas Corner, and into the lead is Jack Goodyear. Got the catering Cooper behind him. And they come through Inkermans and into the hairpin. And just looking at those carts as they put, as they push out of the corner, They've got, uh, it's a single cylinder, 250cc two-stroke in the Swiss Hotless or the Swiss Auto engines. Uh, the car, number 64, has the rotary engine on it, and it's 36 newton metres of torque, which is why they feel like they're being shot out of a cannon <laughs> out of the corner as the engines come on a song. Across the line, though, Jack Goodyear, Jason Cooper in the Martini liveried uh, suit and cart, Matt Cater in third, Gary Woodward, uh, oh, sorry, Gary, Gary Woodard in fourth. Oliver Warner is in fifth. Now, Oliver Warner was number 46, who was about to take the win in the second of the heats. Ian Schotter rounds off the F300s. And then the first of the pro cards, James Walker leads. George King second. Lee Mitchell third. Jason Thatcher fourth. George McCray fifth. And rounding off the top six in the F160 pro cards, Craig Omerod. So this is that one three one in the pro card. So uh, James Walker's class of field, he's already pulled out a couple of seconds. But quite a lot of stretch now in the 300s. Let's see if we can uh, pick up some pro car action. So just let these one run, run through Ash, and we'll pick up some, some pro car in a second. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. So um, the battle, really, the mo most interesting battle at the moment is third place in pro carts. The first pro car go past now with the green nose. That's a one, three, one. Then your second pro car, which is the uh, 23. And then the battle for third between the uh, 37 and the 31. So that's between uh, Mitchell and Thatcher. Coming up the hill now. That's it. 37 and 31. Yeah, that's Christmas the battle, corner. Isn't, it, isn't it? That's the battle for third there. And it's that battle for third spot between Lee Mitchell and Jason Thatcher that we'll focus on for a little while as the F300s are ahead of this. This is the pro car battle for the F160s. And not quite coming together to be in a position to challenge there for. Jason Thatcher. I don't know, he's quite, he's close enough. Just needs to be a little bit more kind of um to go for brave slash kamikaze esque. Mm. No, not quite true. Not, quite, sitting, really not close. quite sitting on the bumper. But uh, perhaps he's giving himself a little comfort. He's got his own name he's got his name tatted, the tatted, but a print on the back <laughs> of his race suit. So he's obviously uh, you know been around a while. Look, he's, he's even got his head down. To, uh, to improve the aero, but the net effect is he's actually dropped slightly bit off the 37. That's uh, Jason Thatcher. He's obviously scored ninth and tenth, but actually they are in third and fourth in the pro class, pro, pro cart class. That's easy for you to see. Certainly wasn't. Yeah. Just uh, to clarify, Jack Goodyear still continues to lead, uh, and as I say that, no, Jack Goodyear has gone. Is he's he? dropped out. Where has he gone? Jason has Cooper he gone is the leader. Or has he had a transponder issue. Uh, we'll check that. Let's. Um, you keep an eye on the pro carts. Uh, he is off. He's off on the uh, on the outside of just before Inkerman's there, Nick. Fast but fragile. It's allowed Jason Cooper into the lead. But look at Oliver Warner. He was the cart that was leading heat two until he tripped over those pro carts. So Oliver Warner up into second place, and the gap is only two tenths of a second. 
So the front of the F300 field beginning let's, to get very hot indeed. Let's switch there. They're coming underneath you now, uh, Ash. It's the 300s. We'll have a look at one, two, and three going down the main straight. It's the 60. Uh, nine from the 46 from the uh, 13. 13. They sweep now back up the hill again. It's the white uh, fronted cart that's leading in 300 there. This is how close this has got now with the big powerful machine belting away with 250 cc's of rotary power. Mazda be praised. And it's the number the number 64. That's the rotary and that's Matt Cater who's currently in fourth just off the back. Oh, they aren't, they aren't all rotaries then? No, 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 ah, no, 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 no. This is what I've been saying. The, single engined uh, sorry single single cylinder 250 cc so you can imagine the size of the piston on these things uh, which gives them a lot of torque which punches them out of the corner change for second as ian shorter moves ahead of oliver warner now he's going to want to get on terms with jason cooper so it's the martini livery cart and driver that leads through oblivion and through crook they'll head towards us straight on towards towards us at christmas corner and just look at that 13, Ian Schotter. Mm. Looking now, having gotten by Oliver Warner, looking very, very capable indeed. And as the pace, he's broken a bit of a gap to uh, Oliver Warner, hasn't he? Yeah, the gap, the time difference, the lap time is that they're only two seconds lap this time round. They were a lot quicker before, weren't they? They're now in full dry conditions. It's just a couple of seconds they've got on the front of the pro car field. Look, Obviously, a lot more on the look, back of the pro car field. Mm. They're, they're coming close to one now, I think. Look at what they're ahead of. Is that the end center replica? race suit that they're just coming behind so yeah he's it's, actually an, it's the f the back marker and it's holding nicholas, up oh he held him up in the corner there nicholas clear just out for a bit of fun driving that car and enjoying the experience and the f300 runners all four of them apart from matt cater who get he gets held up even more he's going to drop off the back of the leading oh, three about that here we go nick oh, the uh, oh there was a lovely look you see that look as he went past him the f300 like. is now the f300s are now going to be in the realms of lapping the pro carts look at what happened at the last heat with just under two minutes remaining. Cooper gets around easy the first time. Oh, but that's kind of like, that's almost eye racing when you get two cars going either side of you, isn't it? <laughs> and it's just straight, but this is real life, and they're up the inside. Oh, don't cross across. Did you know? oh. oh, and he got nedged out at the five there of uh, Neil Slaughter. It's unceremoniously knocked out of the way by Ian Schotter. I mean, I'm not sure it was deliberate, but just they're, they're, they're trying to occupy the same piece of ground, and, it, and it, that selection of traffic has made this a two horse race. You know what? It's the rate of acceleration for these uh, the, these these engines. We've got so much torque, so they punch off the corners so much quicker than the pro cards. That should if, oh if that's your massive error by the 13. He's flown off. He's gone. He's effectively gone camping rather than go racing. He's finally found himself a nice pitch. Put his tent straight off the track there. Just he, trying too hard. He put the power on, and he wasn't the steering to get it. Ooh, that's and there, there's an example of the torque kicking in at the wrong moment, and the car just breaking grip and flying off the track. Now, you should be able to use that punch out of the corners to assist you in getting by without any issue getting by these pro carts. Yeah, the 46 was uh, of Warner was thinking, this is my chance. Um, Luckily, this, the, gra the ground actually is quite dry, which shows you how little it's rained apart from over this last weekend. So he wasn't like... Yeah, that's true. Um, he hasn't got, like, filth to get off his tyres. They've cleaned up. He's actually almost gaining very lightly. He's always not learned, has he? Just, it's just, but that was the right amount. That was the right amount that time. Still using all of that. And he's curve. really, really pushing to get back. Now, I wonder if they know that Goodyear is the favourite, but they, the only chance they've got is, the, is they will get all get better grid positions now. He's reeled him in, Nick, hasn't he? It's he's really reeled him in. flying. And he's right on the bumper now, getting towards the... What we're going to do, and he's... The nose has been the uh, the the cowl has been slightly dislodged by his bumping. They've been given the last lap board. They crossed the line with about zero on the clock. One just second, about yeah, zero one on second. The they've gone over it. Yeah, so yeah. just the closer it could be. And now coming up the outside of the Christmas corner with all this traffic as well. Cooper's eye line might be taken by the uh, the pro cards ahead of him. This has got to be a great chance for Shotter because there's all sorts of confusion happening here. But there with a little waiting brief, mm. it's Oliver Warner as well. Well done. Blue flags flying for those pro carts to get out of the way for the F300. 15 moves out. Well, no, he snapped his nose off there. That was, wasn't the greatest driving by the 15 pro cart, has to be said. 
Getting towards the final stages of this second and final heat for the got M300s. Him. Got him, come and on the inside. Oh, no, he hasn't. Oh, that's the that's the 2D versus 3D. In 2D world, it looked very much like Shotter had got him. But actually, when they switched back across the corner into the boot, it was, in fact, the 69 of Cooper who had it. And he ends up winning by a tenth of a second as Shotter uses that acceleration off the corner to try and win. But another great victory there for Cooper. And that concludes our qualifying... So you give a rundown. I'm going to find out whether we're still in half an hour lunch break or not. Well, she'll tell you. Lauren will tell you, mate. Um, Jason Cooper takes the win. And right on the line, Ian Shorter right on his bump. Oliver Warner comes through in third. Matt Cater in the rotary engine in fourth place. And then Gary Woodard, the final F300 runner in the top five. James Walker takes the pro Kart win in sixth overall. Graham King second. George King in third. Liam Mitchell fourth. Oliver Clark, fifth. Jason Thatcher is in sixth. Craig Homerod, seventh. Oliver Parcel in eighth. And then we, of course, had George McRae coming through. 14th overall. 15th overall was Andrew Bailey. Win Brazil, 16th overall. William Seymour, 17th overall. 18th overall was Neil Slaughter. And then off the lead lap, Nicholas Clear in the final runner. I have the important news. In the F300. Go we ahead, are still having half an hour for lunch. All right, OK. So we need a half an hour for lunch break. I don't know, quarter two? I think no answer your question no one else heard there. <laughs> yes, that's true. Back at quarter two, I think you would say, with the finals. Uh, currently, it's quarter past two. Back at quarter three. Um, and we will bring you the finals for the uh, Dupreco 100 UK Super Prix, brought to you by, in association with the National Kart Club. And uh, obviously, Dupreco... Industrial Vacuums, Boiler Choice, Raptor Custom Racewear, Head Tank, and also Johnny Moore Watches, who are giving a watch to the man who made Pole, who I think is Ryan Cole, apparently. Uh, yes, so we will leave you with a selection of uh, still images and a message saying we're back at quarter to three. When that turns up, I'll have to stop talking as they scrambling in the control room to write things on the screen. And then we'll have some food, and we'll come back um, pretty soon. So uh, we will see you uh, in, well, 28 minutes or so for a final action of finals.
Well, hello and welcome back to Wilton Mill in sunny Northamptonshire, well, windy Northamptonshire, for finals here at the DePreco 100 UK Super Prix. I am joined by the marvellous Joseph Bradley. I don't think I've ever been described as marvellous, but that'll do. Well, all right, above average then. That'll do, yeah, that's more like I am joined by the um, above average Joseph Bradley. <laughs> you mentioned the sun there. It's perhaps the sunniest we've had all day, Nick. I know. Yeah. And the Fabulous. wind has kept any more rain off. And, and, and your weather app is worth a lot more than James's weather I app. I couldn't agree more. That we should have had rain by yes, now. Yes, absolutely. Um, Never trust the weather map of, of, of James. A little bit of change to the programme while you've Go been for, it, for lunch, yeah. mate. We've, uh, we've lost the uh, 100 UKC final. Uh, there's a few people dropped out, so there's, been, there's, there's now no need to run the C final. So the first of our finals are our TKM race retro uh, heavy final, which is basically the um, TKM engine bought out to 115cc for the heavier driver, of which we have um, nine carts have qualified. I'm not sure how many we're going to see take part in the final, but we're about to uh, to start with them. Then we go into the B final, where we've got the runners for the Depreco 100 UK Super Prix. Um, th these are the contenders for that. The B final where we have the top 10 out of the B final will qualify onto the back of the grid for the ultimate A final. Um, after the B final, we've got the, uh, the National Kart Club Rotax Max series. Then we've got the F160 Pro Karts and the F300s. And then the Super Pre final will round off the day. So all exciting. I know. Uh, some very exciting potential from what we've seen in the preliminaries, the heats, uh, etc., this is when it starts to get intense. It was pretty intense when there wasn't a trophy yes. to be won for it or, or anything other than just a grip position. outside, for example. So <laughs> it's going to, it's, yeah, I mean, yeah, we've, uh, we've had some discussions, some heated discussions going on with regards to uh, the officials and decisions that have been made, but hopefully they'll be rectified in time for us to get on and underway with things. Um, weather forecast is for no rain. Um, and I'm going to stick with that because the sky is beginning it's to break shiny. up. It, it, it's a shiny yeah, sky. And, and we've got an ambient temperature that's rising. So um, in, in comparison to this morning where it was an absolute nightmare for these competitors to choose what sort of tyre to be on at any given moment of any given heat or period of time on the track, we're now we've got pure, consistent weather, windy. pure, consistent track conditions, purely dry, a lovely ambient of 20 degrees, which will probably give us a track temperature of about 28. I think the, the wind's keeping that uh, just under 30 um, as the tarmac always heats up to be, becomes hotter than the ambient by about 10 or 12 degrees. Hmm. Interesting. I'm just reading something. You, you stopped talking then whilst I was reading. I didn't realise you were reading. I just it's thought you my were brain. Um... Okay, well, right, so we are expecting this uh, first race, the uh, heavy be off in a short time. The sun is beautifully out. The there's various marshals are wandering about just to, uh, to get everyone back into ward again. There's a marshal chatting to the medical team. And this is obviously quite a small grid for the uh, initial start of this. And then we hit the big grid, the second race, with the B final. How many bump ups in the B final? Ten. Ten. And we've got a grid of uh, the contenders for the B final, a grid of 33 carts will fight for those 10 places. Wow. And they will qualify onto the back of a 24-cart field. So that will give us 34 carts wow. for the year final for the Super Prix. And it's Formula TKM. It's 100 UK as it's known now. It's running to uh, a 1990s formula that was brought in in the early 90s. It's a, a cost-related, uh, cost-cap formula. It's a, uh, an economic way of going karting. And it still is. The organisers of the 100 UK series... Uh, who have organised this one-day, uh, one-weekend Super Prix, uh, it still maintains that concept that it was brought in for. And it's all about uh, keeping costs down, as we've got a green flag, Nick. And we're getting ready to go. the uh, race retro heavy category. 115 is it, is CC it, TKMs. Is it just the five who are taking part? We've only got four. Oh, we've got six. Oh, it's, it's got, oh, they're all out now for the final. Matthew Lawrence on the number three, who was out for the 100 UK uh, Super Prix. It was this, it was the RR Heavy ah, heat that he lost right. his bumper. 
Same driver. Double cart. Different, yeah, he's, in, he's running in two series this weekend. So Matthew Lawrence is on pole in the number three. Nick Watkins is alongside in the 31. Sean Deven uh, will start on the second row. And Sean Deven is, yes, the Devenson family, uh, Devenson Sprint family. He's on a family Devenson Sprint, which is family manufactured back in the 90s. Uh, Bob Hoskin alongside him on the second row. David Kernigan on the uh, third row with Dean Haddon. Uh, he's on the GP player, Dean Haddon. Carl Atkinson and Fraser Atkinson are on row four. And rounding off the nine-card field is Taylor Berry, who Taylor is on the novice plate and has been going very well. Only six cards, though, out of the nine that have qualified are about to take place, or take part, I should say, in this final. And they're already coming towards us, Nick, ready to take this, re uh, this race start. First of the finals of the day. Longer one, of course. Um, we have the full 12 minutes plus one lap. And this, I think, is the biggest biggest we've had. Six carts running, and off they go. And they'll go in for the first time into Oblivion very, very soon. And Oblivion is the name of the first corner here at uh, Wilton Mill. Not the fact that these drivers are getting <laughs> into Oblivion. Well, they are, anyways. <laughs> uh, Sean Deven being very racy indeed. I mean, you look down the inside into Christmas Corner there, not quite making it stick, and having to slot in into third. It's, uh, it's very much Matthew Lawrence at the front of this field on the number three cart and it was the, this is the, what we've seen him do in the heat well he's he got for the first time sorry Judge, cut, cut across you there Joe, but he, for the first time he's actually got Sean Deven with an active uh, working cart he's already got mm. himself into sort of battle this battle for second um, though you are actually right that Matthew does appear to have significantly more basic pace yeah he does Matthew Lawrence going away but uh, Sean Deven hanging on to the back end of Nick Watkins and looking very racy indeed the carts behind Sean though Looking even racier, as I think that's Bob Hoskin coming through in that fourth spot. On the number 40, it's Fraser Atkinson, actually, not with Cock, Nick, Nick Watkins. And it's Bob Hoskin, who actually got up into second. Completely um, confused me there, as Sean Deven looks up the inside again of Bob Hoskin into Christmas Corner, yeah, not the, quite making that stick again. The action's behind the leader, by. second, third, oh, and fourth, and into it's still Bob Hoskin from Sean Deven. Uh, the all-black car with your little, little green flashes down the side of his race suit and uh, as Bob. Um, Sean in the 29, that's the uh, the man whose uh, family used to run Rye House, but he's been overtaken on the inside of Wilkins by Fraser Atkinson. So this battle for second in the TKMR Heavy, it's really going for it. Yeah, keep an eye on Fraser Atkinson. He, uh, he obviously made some mistakes at the start of this race and dropped down the field. He started the race uh, down the field after, obviously, some problems in the heats. And now we're seeing the true form from that driver in the number 40 cart. All the while, though, Nick, Matthew Lawrence is eating out that yeah, gap I, even I further. Yeah, I think that Matthew Lawrence won't be featuring much on this broadcast, to be honest, um, because he's going to be getting away from people. Um, we thought that before, and, of course, they managed to break down, which was interesting. But there we go, 2 five, one. <laughs> of Hoskin, looking a little bit quicker, more swift than he has in the previous seats, but there is an absolute battle royale between Atkinson in the uh, fluorescent sort of centre part of his, uh, his overalls and the grey cart, the 40, and the uh, traditional sort of red, white and blue combination for Sean Divin. And then interesting, they've, they've all got a little bit closer to Hoskin that time. Hoskin didn't do a particularly good run into the boot on that last lap. Obviously, Lawrence is a long, long way ahead. But these three battling hard for the bottom two steps of the podium. And that battle for that spot between Steve, Sean Deven and Nick Watkins now beginning to, as Nick Watkins begins to fall away from Sean Deven, Sean Deven sticking with Fraser Atkinson right on his bumper. And having a goal. Inside, got it. Oh, oh no, 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 on the bricks. No, got knocked back straight again. Oh, and and it's stalled. Going. It's stalled. Come on, come on. Has he lost it? Is he lose it on the stall there? As oh, really I don't think he has. He slid it's sideways, done, didn't he? he? Just locked it and it just wouldn't. <laughs> this, he's had problems starting this cart on a couple of occasions. Let's look at it again. Look, there we go. Round, bash, bumpy, bump, bump. And it just didn't go. He's oh. had problems with the starting of that cart on a couple of occasions. It's not in the most, uh, the happiest mode of starting. And now after it. A valiant attempt to steal second there from Bob. Uh, unfortunately, the only reward for Sean is unfortunately he's going to be plumb last. He just but went down the inside on the brakes into Ashby into the Ashby hairpin and just locked the rear end. And as we know, the only brakes on the rear of these carts, so the back end just locking up and coming round on Sean and 
We really did pray that he had the momentum, but alas, not, a, not enough momentum to keep that cart moving forward. No, it was, it was, just, that was just disappointing because it was. I think it may be our action gone for a couple of minutes. So certainly now happily in second place, it is Hoskin in the 2-5-1. Um, coming down the back straight, and he'll be turning left before he loops round right to the boot. Not sure it's named after the section of Watkins Glen. I don't know. Or just another thing that looks a bit like a boot. What do you no, think? No, it's the shape of the boot. If you look yeah. at that, if you look at the yeah, but I still think it'd be named after Watkins Glen because that's far more uh, uh, motorsport. Uh. Yeah, maybe you could say that. Um, that uh, kerfuffle of Sean Deven has allowed Nick Watkins ahead of them both, and now Nick Watkins is in that third spot. So, final podium position for Nick Watkins there. Fraser Atkinson, though, he's not happy with having to drop to fourth yeah, after that uh, challenge. And he's chasing him down. That's the race to look after. Uh, yeah, let's drop back one cart and let's have a look and see what Watkins is doing in the uh, there he is. one. He's got, he yeah, I think, I think Atkinson could get back to him. He seems to lose an awful lot of time during the accident, I must admit. Yeah, he did. Um, just to remind uh, friends of Matthew Lawrence, he's seven seconds ahead or was at the end of the last lap. And these heats, as you mentioned, Nick, 12 minutes and one lap so we're still a chunk of race left still just we just clicked by five minutes and there is oh, a little shake bit of the head shake of the head i don't know what that's about nick watkins is perhaps thinking i can't catch bob hoskin ahead of him and what is happening is fraser atkinson has narrowed the gap now to just under a second so it's eight tenths of a second to be exact let's see if Atkinson can close that even further. We seem to have lost Taylor Berry. Mm. So we've lost Taylor Berry. So have we? Yeah. Well, he's just going really slowly. No, you're right. We're just down. To, he's over. There he is. Just he's climbing on. over the barrier there. Oh, uh, down two. So there's four carts left running with four minutes to go. Lawrence leads by eight and a bit seconds from Hoskin. Then this is the third and fourth battle you're looking at. Watkins in the 31. The right Southwestern Engine Developments. Uh, Racing development, sorry, car. And uh, then you've got Nick Watkins in his car. So uh, very actually in his grey car, and he's getting much closer. This could be some action here as the battle for third in the TKMR heavy final is building up to a crescendo. And Atkins on the right, the Simon Wright Racing Developments car. I had a right. Why did I say Southwestern rather than Simon Wright? I've just Simon done. Wright Racing Developments. I had a right car as well. Of, yep, yeah, good carts. And Better than me. <laughs> It's whether or not oh, looking up we're the inside see there. Nick Watkins on that right being able to hold off for his Atkinson. Atkinson has clearly got more speed because he's closed the gap after that issue with Sean Deven. He's closed the gap and he's right on his bumper. Three minutes of this race remaining. As the leader just about to go underneath us and go oh, off. Off. So off. Went Atkins in there, just completely overcooked the entry to the boot. Oh, and he's dropped Did well away now, hasn't he? Yeah. I'm not that's sure. That's cost him several seconds. That's cost him four seconds. I'm not sure. He's Lawrence has dropped off the pace slightly that one as well, I think. I'm not sure he's got enough time now to gain that gap back and uh, challenge again. Lawrence was two seconds slower than Hoskin that time round. And Watkins. Atkinson was, he was two seconds slower because he fell off the track. So I'm not sure whether it's just being reined back by Lawrence. He's still six and a half seconds. Well, Watkins, Watkins put in a similar lap time to um, Austin. There must be a little error. Mm -hmm. Half a second, Lawrence. maybe. Just half a second. Two minutes to go. Plus one lap. Two minutes 17 to go. And they've managed to get themselves beautifully spread out. Yeah, they really have. There's the leaders through to complete nine laps. Oh, two wobble. minutes on the board. Atkinson's got a very wobbly uh, side pod, that's for sure, in the uh, Fraser there. On the, there his right-hand side pod. We've seen a lot of wobbly side pods. Saw one fall off side earlier. Pods, yeah. yeah, quite a few wobbly side pods. That was quite a, a thing, though. You never really got perturbed about a wobbly side pod. Uh, side pod. <laughs> side board. So, <laughs> yeah, a wobbly, wobbly side pod. Ah. We're, we're not a wobbly side pod. <laughs> so, 31. In third, let's go and let's find our leader for a bit. Uh, that's car th cart three. He is on the back straight. On the back straight now. Black cart, red suit, white hat. Uh, we've got his blue at the back. There we go. A chance to ISO the uh, the performance and the driving of our leader in the heavy class. Gets an extra 15 cc to help him get round the track as well. Yeah. 
and this is the uh, the which interesting doesn't give you an extra, doesn't give you 15 percent more power of course well the modern day formula uk the, the 100 uk um, national series runs to these engines at 115 cc rather than the the um the 1990s version which was 100 cc uh, there's the leader though matthew lawrence quite majestic the way he's gone about his racing this weekend in this class and certainly the class of the field of the uh the race retro heavy tkm class and uh with coming up to 30 seconds it's going to be into what will be the penultimate lap this time by he's going to cross the line with still plenty of time on the clock for him to do two more laps so at least we get an idea of of where we are no change for second place as Hoskin come through. Nick Watkins, though, I thought Fraser Atkinson wouldn't have time to have another yeah, go. Got... He's getting right onto the back of Nick Watkins now. In... Oh, yeah, it's four tenths of a second. You're yeah, right. from four seconds to four tenths. But as Murray Walker would always say, it's one thing catching, passing, it's another. another thing passing. And it's very, very true for the pure karting that we're seeing this weekend. So they'll be getting the last lap board out this next lap uh, here he comes into the bootnik bootnik <laughs> bootnik <laughs> <laughs> so a, as you, I think you said earlier a textbook performance but a, a, certainly a, a pretty impressive performance indeed from Lawrence he's looked good the whole way through just to keep an eye on that that battle for the final finishing position that's still Watkins from Atkinson as we uh, take the final lap with Matthew Lawrence the uh, Iridium visor Glowing in the afternoon sun, or the afternoon cloud again now. We've had, we've had our three minutes of sun. That's enough for us today. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> not anymore. Uh, sweeping now back through Inkermans. Comes down to the Ashby hairpin. All very much in hand. Behind him, still Watkins ahead of Atkinson. And they go now down through Oziers. And on to the back straight. He's got a few corners to go to claim the TKM RR Heavy final for 2021 at the Depreco 100 UK Super Prix. So Matthew Lawrence, one corner, small amount of straight, over some hatchings, and he wins. So well done. I know a little bit of a wave there, and I kind of, I've won that one. Well yeah. done, me. I'm marvellous. Yeah. That's Great that. performance there by Matthew. Hoskin comes up, lots of little bit going on. It's, uh, oh, and Atkinson's all over the track at the end there, as you can probably see him coming through the picture. He, uh, he went for a space that didn't exist. So he's certainly done some uh, interesting rewriting of the track. At least he had Atkinson. a try. At least he, did, he had a go for it. He gave it some. He gave it three That's tries, actually. Yeah. Mm. I, I, I fully respect him. Just that wasn't coming. It wasn't going to work. Now, the, good, the, the next, uh, as, as relaxed as that one was, I get the feeling this next one's going to be super frenetic. It we is. A, we have a massive number we have. of TKM 100s in the B final. And how many get through to the A final? Ten. Ten. So the key position is tenth. Yeah, not first because first gets you twenty first on the grid. Yeah. Tenth actually gets you twenty first or twenty fourth on the grid. It'll be thirty fourth. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So and twenty four. You know, there's twenty four. To win it, you have to be in it. There's twenty four already qualified yep. for the year final. Okay. We've now got thirty four carts trying to qualify for the final ten places on the thirty four card grid for the Depreco one hundred UK Super Prix. It's too exciting. I am too excited. Yeah. As the Formula TKM RR Heavy, the Race Rat Raw Heavy class, make their way into the Do pits. You know what? I didn't until that moment. Where are we now? An hour from the end of the day. I didn't know what the RR stood for. <laughs> it's just useless. <laughs> Too busy setting cameras up to actually do the work you did. I'm not mind writing it down. I don't I've need it again. I've been seeing it. Have you? Yes. I don't listen to you. You know <laughs> that. What I listen to you for? We've got a very packed collecting area for the B final for the. 100 UK Super Prix, mm. and it's going to be quite a grid, so I'm going to run down this grid. So I, I, when I get to the key point of 10th on the grid, I'm going to stop and just take a breath. Kind of, and, and kind of build the tension. Liam Hamling is on pole. Owen Potter is alongside. Second row of the grid is Dan Crankshaw with Thomas Paddle alongside. Ryan Gill and Dean Walker are on row three. Row five is David Mellish and Lee Jackson. Uh, sorry, row four 
is David Mellish and Lee Jackson. See, I was ahead of myself again. I know, they're off. Row five. Quickly. This is the, <laughs> this is the key row. Sean Taylor and Andrew Bradley with row six. James Cannon, John Cattell. Row seven, Tyler Ballard and Sergio Taggio. Row eight, Tom Purchase and Ricky Wright. Row nine, Dennis Barkley and Duncan McLeod. Row 10, Paul Von Gerard and Craig Caldwell. Row 11, Brendan Williams and Thomas Evans. Row 12, Chris Cook Martin and Marcus Gray. Row 13 is Callum Bergman and Leonardo Taggio. Row 14 is Wesley Graves and Scott Bacchiocci. Row 15 is James Lovell and Bradley Dyson. Row 16, Stephen Simister and Dexter Bergman. And rounding off the 33 cart field is Mick Miles. Wow. Now then. It's row five and row six. Well, Mick's out and he had the accident. Yeah, he might be out. Is he out? Is he he's out? Is he yeah, out? He's oh, out. Right, brilliant. Oh, that is great because that was a that was a very naughty accident that he had. The cart, he was thrown out of the cart and the cart overturned and damaged the steering column, as they do. They're gonna get all these out, all these together. This is impressive. They're gonna get them all together in one lap. I think they might that might be, ambri- that might be ambitious. I think unless they really <laughs> ease it back. I'm gonna go for a wave around. What are you going for? Um, way one way, yeah, yeah, thought so. Yeah, thought so. A few stragglers at the back just coming out of the boot there as the leaders. Well, what it was, the leaders flying. also weren't prepared to go super slow, they didn't want to kind of uh, well, uh, that, that, gang up, gum up the engines. That's so they, the tactic. They, what they'll do is they'll come through fast, leave the stragglers behind, and they'll, they'll be kind of push the uh, the starter to give them an extra lap. And that, that way, you get the heat, the heat into the tyres, into the brakes. And you make sure that the engine's clear on that first lap, rather than just oiling it all up. Yeah, and they're going a little bit, little bit straggly, so they'll be wanting to get themselves much more condensed up as they come around the hairpin. But usually, as they come through Wilkins and towards, or, um, and, they, and now they're thinking about it more. Yeah, this is where they start gathering. Down to the leader, it's actually it's entirely down to what Liam Hamling wants to do about this, because he is the person who is controlling the pace. He they is. need to finish in the top 10, and of course as high up as possible in that top 10, because they're going to bump up to the A final. This is, I'm very used to this. Is, this sounds very RC, bumping up to A finals. And they're getting the slow down from the marshals, and there they come. So there's your top two, Hamling in the 41, Potter in the 33. Let's hope we get a clean start, because they've switched through oblivion. All sorts of things can happen. It's a, it's a Look, large they've, field, they've isn't it? They've left the tail. The tail yeah. It's a large it's field to keep together. about this field at all, I, actually, I think they'll we'll get the start here. We do indeed get the start, and who is it going to lead into oblivion? It's the pool man, Liam Hamling, in the 41, into and out of Crook, and through Fine Lady towards Christmas Corner. It's the number 41 of Liam Hamling that has led into Christmas Corner for the first time. It looks as though everybody Crank has... the 24 in second, so Crankshaw's got past Potter. Potter's dropped back. I'm not seeing any yellow flags, Nick. So so Potter in the 33 is in third. He just, he just made it, I think he got eased out going through Crook in the first lap. So the first two are broken away. That's, that's interesting, but not the key point, because the key point is who finishes 10th. Yeah, that's right. Let's, let's, let's just let this settle well, in. Now, plenty of time to look at anything, but the, the bright green cart's in fourth. I can say, that's excellent, because I can see that one. And there's a, oh, a problem for one of the cart. I think it's the nine cart's got some issues. That is uh, Marcus Gray. I'm not sure he's going to retire. He's just got some issues. Yeah, he's carrying on going again. But the front head of the field, an excellent break. Really early break made by Hamley and Crankshaw. So they are pretty much guaranteeing their uh, their position in the, uh, the finale. Keep, keep an eye on cart 55. Wesley Graves, he's scything through the field. Not quite sure where he started, but he certainly didn't start in that position of 13th. And he was uh, up 10 spots for James Lovell in the number two as well. So keep an eye on a couple of carts who've gone by the wayside, unfortunately, oh, already. Two sliding wide. Got two carts that stopped. And we have Caldwell, McLeod, Von Gerard, Cattell and Bradley aren't currently being scored. So we've had a, quite a bit of attrition in the first lap. First, second, a long way away. Let's drop down to third. This one down to the fourth place battle, which is the orange uh, uh, race suit. It's cart number... 
33 of Owen Porter. He's actually going backwards as we wait for this train of carts. The winner in this is not important as much as the people around 8th, 9th and 10th. So we'll just in, drift it, back there and look at the 33. There's the 8 in the front of Ryan Gill. And then he's losing position. There's 22 cups to the inside. Walker takes, takes him very easily. Wesley Graves has gone from 13th to qualify in 9th at the moment. He moved up four spots there. Down seven spots. Thomas Battle moves down to 11th out of a qualifying position and has ended up outside of that all-important top 10. Sean Taylor down four to right on the brink in 10th spot. I think Wesley Graves is powered by annoyance because he was a man having a very uh, vocal disagreement about a penalty, wasn't he, outside the, uh, the timing hut earlier? Using uh, video evidence is worrying because it's our video evidence. <laughs> yes, he's still on the move and he takes another spot there. Wesley Graves ahead of Tom Purchase. So 22 and 33, that's settling down. Let's, let's drop back to the next bunch. That's led by the 55, Wesley Graves we're talking Wait, about here. Wesley Graves is about to come on the rear end of Owen Potter. Running yeah. into sixth on the way forward. I think possibly the penalty he was given may have meant he qualified a bit further down than he should have done. There's a, it's almost a summer's day on that field there as the, as the ab abandoned carters uh, just watch it. All they need is kind of a... A Prosecco and some strawberries. It'd be a lovely time out, wouldn't they? I would imagine that the if he's, if he's taken that penalty, that's put him into the B final. Mm. He would have qualified for the A final without that. He's running hard, and he's going to easily sweep past the 33 of Port. So on the way is Graves. Graves now is just making himself more qualified and moving up at the moment to 30th on the grid for the main final in about 45 minutes' time. Now, what's the gap as they cross the line? Wesley Graves up into fifth place, and he's got about a second and a half before he then comes onto the tail of Dean Walker. Let's, let's oh, he's, drop he's back behind that one. Let's the pick up the 71. One more. Because that's that's getting close to the cut-off point. That's a 71. Yeah. That's the man who led the first lap of this event, David Mellish, because he chose wets. And he led the first lap and then was overtaken to a lap later. He's on the correct tyres now. And he's ahead of the 86 of Tom Purchase and Sean Taylor, James Love and Lee Jackson, one of whom... At the moment, he's well, not going to qualify. Lee Jackson has just dropped two places to just outside qualifying. He's down to 11th there, Lee Jackson, on that previous lap. So 71, Melich is qualifying. 86, Purchase is qualifying. Four, Taylor is qualifying, as is the bright yellow. It's so bright yellow, I couldn't read the number. It flared off on it to the two car of James Lovell. They're all qualifying. And there's a little bit of a gap now to Dennis Barkley, a second behind who's not qualifying. So uh, Dennis Bartley's just qualified it across the line there in 10th spot, moving up ah, two yes. spots. Oh, massive accident. Oh, dear. The 71 moved across. That is disastrous for both of them. The 71 moved across. Watch it. Comes in, goes for a line that never exists, move across on the 86. What are you doing? Oh, he's uh, locked up. He's got, wheel, he's got a wheel on the, on the grass yeah. and turned in. Okay, that's, uh, that's, that was... Uh, I can know exactly what he's doing there. All the breaking in the Christmas break. corner, yeah, and, and put him sideways. Excellent hands on hip action there from the man he hit. But that is going to be uh, a bit of an unfortunate situation for the red car. I think it's a 60 something, isn't it? That's, that's bad news. So that's going to throw it wide open because those two carts were both qualifying. Yeah, they were. And now they're both not. Now, we're back with the two machine. That was Lovell, who was scored ninth. I assume he called seventh now. Uh, as we, yeah, because we lost. Uh, it was the 86 of Tom Purchase who was also involved in that accident. So Merge and Purchase have taken themselves out. Uh, well, what no. that means, Nick, is Dennis Barkley, Lee Jackson and Thomas Pattle are now qualifying. Mm. They were just outside of that top ten, the all-important top ten. Keep an eye on Ricky Wright in the number 88. He's the cart that needs to get on terms, and he's right on the tail of Thomas Pattle. But equally, Brendan Williams is right on the tail of Ricky Wright in 12th, 12th, 11th and 10th. Mm. That's the carts that we... Well, we're looking now at the four and the 68. So we just drop back one to the next set of carts, Ash, which I think is, uh, here we go. That's it. That's the, the bright green cart. Is that the, that is the 16 cart. Who's the last qualifying cart, the bright green machine behind the 34 of Lee Jackson. And then you can see behind that, that's a cart that's not qualifying with the, uh, the blue overalls and the helmet that is Ricky Wright in yeah. the 88 he's got 1.2 seconds to gain before he can start challenging That's, Thomas there Pattle. we are the, the, the green cart in the 16 is 10th but now now, now interestingly this battle between Pattle and uh, sorry Jackson and Pattle is, is bringing them back together so these three now two out of three will qualify 34 oh and you don't want to go out that wide <coughs> for the 88 which is Ricky Wright not qualifying indeed this is where the action is 
It's the final qualifying position, that 10 spot. Five minutes remaining on the clock as Liam <laughs> Hamley oh, already wanna, crossed the line. This, this is when, that's this not you want to rear view though. mirror, isn't it? You don't want to have to look around. Yeah, yeah, and it's all important for that number 10, uh, the, the 10 spot, number 16. He wants to get ahead of Lee Jackson and put himself out of danger. Marcus Gray made a great move there. Picked up two, uh, two positions by getting past Williams and Corbell in the nine. You'll see him now. He's the fourth car in the picture. The blue, Ooh. all blue plastic. Now, oh, and the 16 there. Put a wheel on lost, the grass. Lost some the time. Now, interestingly, this, it looks like the 88 of Wright is a cork in the bottle. And uh, get the impression that Gray is coming back from a bad day because he's got some real pace there. If he can get past the 88 and he could force his way into the final at the back, but then we've got to be in it to win it. We could be in it to take part in it. Spe plenty of time, Nick. Four minutes remaining on this clock. It's, they've got plenty of time. Plenty of time for Marcus Gray to get by Ricky Wright and then challenge that bright green liveried cart of the number 16 of Thomas Paddle. Just at the front, Hamling's leading by 11 seconds, and Wesley Graves got himself into second now. So obviously that was a penalty. Black flag for the 355. The 355 has a black flag. That is Sergio Taggio. That's down the order. It's Not 21st. sure why. Uh, oh, look at that. Slipstreaming and a half there. Oh, when he came off, he's going to go out the way. You see how much time is the 60 going to lose? Oh. He's lost a place. And in there goes the 88 of Taylor. Of right, Rick sorry. Wright. He's got past Paddle, who made a mistake by getting too close. Almost like he got made a slipstreaming area, didn't he? Kind of, yeah. Well, he gets too he's close. Got misses, on the bricks. His, misses his breaking point. Yeah. Goes wide and say thank you very, very much. Says Ricky Wright. I will be chuffed a bit to take the final bump up position. But unfortunately, he's got three minutes and 25 seconds to hold on to it. Plus one. Yeah. Up. Yeah. And I'm not sure. He's having a challenge there into the boot, the left-hander part of the boot. Now they're going to the double apex right-hander. Three he's trying to one. get back on terms. The number 16, Thomas Paddle, now behind Ricky Wright. And it's whether or not, and he's dropped away as they come through the final turn at Pit Bend, and he's dropped off a the back. Bit, a little bit, yeah. Marcus Gray is now. Marcus Gray needs to get through. He does. They've got, they're lapping the 355, which is, of course, being black flagged. Not sure why. Maybe a, a technical. Oh, well, it's, it's, I think it's the exhaust issue. It's smoking like anything. Um, so. So it's a pollution issue. The other one's got out for. <laughs> oh, look at these three act. coming together. And they are the two in, one out. That's what they're, and they've been joined very quickly by Brendan Williams in the 11 as well. And the 87's there. Who's the 87? 87. That's Craig Caldwell. Who's, who, ah, Craig Caldwell's missed the lap again. Yes. And that's happened before. He's got a transponder issue, so he is actually in the run, Caldwell. These three are lapping the 71 of Dave Mellor. She's obviously had to restart the car. That's massive favour there because it split the 88 from the 16 and the 9 16 and 9 are battling for nothing because the 88 has got the final bump up place yeah. and Mellish getting in the way there is massively good news he's, he's held them up he's let them go through now a bit too not really I don't know a bit too late but the fact is these two they're the bottom two bump ups but there is now look at that gap before the next person who can challenge them which currently is going to be uh, uh, Thomas Prattle in the the green the, machine. The, the problem is, Nick, that Ricky Wright is trying all he can to get by Lee Jackson. You, for want, that a buff, ninth spot. you want a buffer. And what's happening is they're, be, they're just kind of slowing one another down ever so slightly. And that's allowing Thomas Paddle, Marcus Gray, and Craig Caldwell to come back at them. And if, they don't, if they're not careful, if they keep challenging one another and not keeping that momentum, oh, and there we go again, the side by side. And he's chopped him off. That's, that's going to slow them down. That's going to slow them down and allow Paddle to close that gap even further. Let's see what it is. It's four tenths of a second. There's absolutely nothing in it. Yeah, but I think the problem he's got is he's also trying to fend off the nine of yeah. Marcus Gray. And they're all, oh, now it's getting a bit, bit, bit uh, tasty up the inside. This is, oh, it squeezes through. He's pushed him wide. And they've both, oh, oh they've both gone. Foul. Both gone. 88's lost all his momentum. They've both lost the positions. So neither of them is bumping up and through it. Listen to this again. So they come up the inside. A switch back there from right. Just takes out the 34, moves him wide, and then the 34 loses so gets going again. But the lock, lack of momentum, because obviously the panic breaking, lost all the drive. Yeah. Both of them out and into qualifying goes Paddle and Gray. But Corbell has got his lap given back now. Is right on the tail of nine. I, so it's nine now. The blue cart, Joe, is the last bump up. I just wonder if they're actually aware of where they are in the field. Great point. A great I, point. I, this point, I have no idea. Every, every chance that they have no idea. And they're just going for every single position. And as we see, Corbell's got another the line. the laps again. So Corbell's not being counted at the moment in the 87, but he is there. Well, 16 Lee, and Lee, 9 are both qualifying. Lee Jackson is 
only eight tenths off the back of Marcus Gray. Marcus Gray, car number nine, he's the final qualifier. Now look at the look at that gap. Yeah, now the 87 is actually there as well. So Corbell has been dropped another lap. So he's actually even closer the 87 to get to the nine. So the car that's been scored behind it, Jackson, is actually two back in 12th. 11th place is the 87. We'll need a little bump up on the uh, on the transponder world. Looking left, looking right. The nine of grey, looking quite comfortable. So but Craig Colwell in the 87 is in, in 11th. Yeah, he is in 11th, yeah. There's been a, a couple of laps dropped. It's just a transponder problem. It happens. Uh, oh, very, very wide there from grey. And we have to, even though they've gone over on zero, there are this lap and one more because the leaders went over at 11.51. So they've got two more laps, the best part of. If I'm really honest, it doesn't actually seem um, like the 87s really making any moves at the moment. Last lap given to the leader out in front in first place. We're not focusing on that one, though, because the all-important 10th and final qualifying position the only the first 10 qualify through to the all-important to Preco 100 UK Super Pre final. And that's what it's all about. And there's the final qualifier there, that light, that uh, blue lost, car. Lost some time. He, was, he had a, a longer lead there, but Caldwell is now back under pressure from Jackson, of course, who lost his, his bump up position. Oh, he's, oh, he's looking he's wide, yeah. performance, hasn't he? Well, the nine's gone yeah. very, very wide. What's gone wrong? What's there might be a problem there because he's lost a lot of time. I don't think he's, his engine's punching him out of the corners very well. And it was out of the boot. It's oh, where you lose a lot of but time. Suddenly Caldwell's lost position, and there's a kind of a wave and a you-have-a-go sort of thing. It's oh. the 34, 34 moving up Pierce Lee Jackson. Let, Pierce let, I think he almost like Corwell let him go at that point. I think it may, may have been just that corner rather than for the entirety of the final lap, which we're on now. It is the last lap. There is last couple of corners. Can the 34 of Lee Jackson make up for that error a few laps ago? Kind of forced error, in fairness. And get up the inside of Marcus Gray. They go on to the back straight for the final time in this B final, trying to, hoping to qualify for the main event. And now it's three wide. And... Oh, it's going to be too late because Gray's going to get across and he's going to only has to do the simple bit now, which is kind of hold it tight. If he gets in, re there's no way they're going to get through there. You're absolutely right. No one's got any idea what position they're in. But I'll tell you right <laughs> now, the final qualifier is Marcus Gray. Who are the other nine qualifiers, Joe? Well, Liam Hamling took the win. Wesley Graves, it was in second after that fine run from almost near the back of the grid. Wesley Graves, he started in 27 spot and came through to second. I have a feeling that that penalty he took in the third and final heat uh, would have had him without that into the year final. However, he, he hard fought to get into the year final. He finally comes second. Ryan Gill was third. Dean Walker was fourth. James Lovell, James Lovell was fifth. Owen Potter was sixth. Seventh was Sean Taylor. Eighth was Dennis Barclay. Ninth was Thomas Paddle. And the final qualifier into the year final was Marcus Gray. And just losing out, Lee Jackson in 11th. Ricky Wright, or I think it was uh, actually the 87, wasn't it? Of yeah, Craig, yeah, Caldwell, Craig Caldwell, who was, uh, 11, who was yeah. next up. Then we had Ricky Wright, Brendan Williams, Mick Miles making a comeback after that horrible off earlier on. Tyler Ballard, Thomas Evans, Tom Purchase, Scott Baccio, Biocchi, uh, Chris Cook-Martin, James Cannon, Craig, Craig Caldwell was further up, David Mellish. And then we had, as retirements, Sergio Taggio, Callum Bergman, Dan Crankshaw, Leonardo Taggio, Andrew Bradley, John Cattell, Paul Van Gerard, and Duncan McLeod. And I suppose it's, it's only right. Sergio and Leonardo Taggio, a big thanks to them. I hope they've enjoyed yeah. their participation in the DePreco 100 UK Super Prix because Sergio and Leonardo actually are DePreco industrial vacuums. And it's down to their support that we're able to bring you the 100 UK Super Prix to you. As well as that, a big thanks for their support also. Uh, Cart 45, uh, Eddie Scoffin and the BoilerChoice.com. Uh, thanks to Eddie for his support in enabling us to bring you this. And a big thank you to Raptor Custom so Racewear for all of your karting racewear needs. And, of course, HeadTech, where you'll be able to get your crash hat from as well. Motorsport crash helmets from HeadTech. If it wasn't for this support financially to help put this event on and of course all of that sponsorship and support enables us to bring you live all the action live in sound and vision from the Wilton Mill Kart Track it's the 100 UK DePreco Super Prix and the next time we see these carts on track that's when the intensity Big is going to hit the limiter final. yeah 
For that, we have the National Kart Club, uh, their senior max and, and heavy ma heavyweight max uh, final. It's uh, a guest uh, event here at the 100 UK Super Prix, and it's been a fantastic addition. Um, they needed a event to do some tyre testing. We've had um, about a dozen. It's just dropped down towards the end of the day through, with, through attrition of the carts. But it is going to be a really interesting race. Back chance, I suppose, to see them at the latest of the modern carts up against the classics. And they're up and running now with their clutches. And they're sitting there thinking, very happy that they've got a clutch rather than to run behind and bump start it. And off goes the small but perfectly formed field of 10 carts. Sunny day there, people enjoying the picnic. Senior Road Tax out then. It's the National Kart Club Senior Road Tax Championship. And this is an invitation race weekend for them. Yep. We'll be telling you more about that after I've run down the grade. Paul is Milton Steel Vassen, uh, this series champion in 2019 and 2020. He hasn't managed to get out for uh, all of the rounds this year, but he's out this weekend in this invitation run out here at Wilton Mill. Alex Black is alongside Chris Shiver uh, and Mike Edwards on the second row. Tom Elridge and Scott Russell on row three. Row four is Tyler Fossey and Michael Mallett. Row five is Bren Smith and Tom Radburn. And uh, in 11th, and the only cart on row six, Jack Goodyear. Here they go. Bit of Rotax Max action here at Wilton Mill. And in the lead is Milton Steele Vassen, who has been the absolute class of the field so far today. But I suppose as the, uh, the previous champion, it's hardly surprising. Yeah, he really is um, in a class of his own. And let me just explain what we mean by an invitation race meeting for them as supporting the Depreco 100 UK Super Prix. Uh, the National Kart Club run a series for Road Axe Max, uh, both weight categories that are common in Road Axe Max, the 162 class and the 177 class. When I say that, the 162 stands for kilograms, as does the 177. So it's all about the weight of these carts. And we are trialling the Maxis Sport tyre, which will be the series tyre if it is approved. And basically, we're looking for a tyre that will, can be run for three meetings as the NKC Championship ask for a tyre to last three meetings. That's what you're allowed. Your set of one set of tyres per three meetings. It's a, it's a way of keeping the costs down. Uh, carting costs and tyre costs particularly are what uh, is a big off-put for a lot of people to compete at karting. And certainly the Rotax Max, very reliable engine from Rotax, the 125cc two-stroke water-cooled motor, where it can go for hours and hours and hours before any major rebuilds are required. And uh, just in an, another way of keeping the cost down, we're, uh, we're trialling a new durable tyre, Nick. And uh, dominating the durable tyre is Milton Steel Vass, but behind them is some action. Let's pick up the second and third race, which is currently between the 53 of Chris Skyver and the 35 Alex Black. Alex qualified second, dropped uh, behind him, going the first time through oblivion. But now as they climb towards Christmas Corn, it's very friendly gradient and camber. And they sweep round now into Inkerman before they come down to the Ashby hairpin. They're right together. A bit of a kind of a front end wipeout. It's almost like if you've been following behind a downforce car, the 35 of uh, Alex Black lost downforce, but he just lost a bit of time. Just wiped out in the second part of Inkerman. The rest of the car's really kind of following behind. But uh, these two, second and third, with a gap now. It's 53 pulls with a multicolored cart from the very attractively done blue cart with the blue, you know, absolutely colour coordinate that 35, isn't he? He's got <laughs> yes, the whole yes. look. I've got my nose a certain colour, I've got my suit a certain colour. And I'm going to go wide. But the 22 also now begin to bridge the gap, and that's Tom Radburn. He's managed to get past Mike Edwards this lap, so he was perhaps being held up. So it may well become the battle for second, becomes a three-way battle. So across the line to complete three laps last time by Milton Steel Vassen is leading overall and leading the 162 class. But then second overall is the first of the 177 runners, the number 53 of Chris Siver is leading Alex Black. Now Alex Black and Tom Radburn behind him in third and fourth, both running the 162 kilograms and should, if anything, have the uh, performance level to get by that number 53. But Chris Siver is driving that number 53 cart which is heavier, heavier by 15 kilograms, um, or nigh on 15 kilograms. It's, um, it's being driven very, very well indeed, and it's looking like Alex Black and Tom Radburn just can't find enough 
to get on terms and maybe have a go for that second place overall if indeed they're even what they even want to must be embarrassing get beaten by a fat lad um <laughs> Uh, obviously, even though I couldn't even make that weight limit. So, yeah, there's, there's a battle for third now is the big one. They're both in the same class, of course, Black and Radburn. Radburn with the well, yellow helmet. I was going to say it was a center tribute, but actually it's not. It's got um, a white flashing on the side. Looking to gain on Shriver, who they're not, not racing against, but they are in this weird situation of running a, a double class. But now looking to get a run up the inside. And he does indeed into the boot. And nicely done. Nicely built up and bought for the overtaking move there by Tom Radburn. But it doesn't mean that, that we aren't going to see a fight back from Black. No, he looked very racy indeed as they came through Pit Bend there and across the line. It looked as though indeed Alex Black would indeed challenge. They're heading towards Christmas Corner now. And it's Black who looked like he might have a challenge towards Christmas Corner. But no, he's been outpaced. And it's now Radburn who gets onto the tail of Chris Siver in the heavier cart and down the inside at Ashby, Oof. going very wide indeed, using all of that uh, curve and more. Got past again, so yes. I mean, the curb's about four carts wide, isn't it? I mean, but Black made the most of that as Radburn was eased out uh, by Strive. We've seen a few carts doing that. He made the most of it, got back past him again. So now it is. In fact, no, it's Radburn. But what happened was Striver got eased out, wasn't it? So Striver got eased out to fourth place, and it's. Uh, Radburn from Black in second and third. So that was an interesting one. That is interesting, yeah. Yeah, so Shiva dropping down behind the two, 162. I mean, that's, a, that's the way that, that we've seen this in the heats. Now what Shiva has got to do is be aware of where Tyler Fossey, the next of the 177 runners, uh, are in, com in comparison to where he is track position-wise. Two point, well, let's call that two and a half seconds, shall we? Two and a half seconds gap between Chris Shiva leading the 177 class in fourth overall, and Tyler Fossey second. However, Tyler Fossey's got Mike Edwards in the number 21 right on his tail, and bumper to bumper almost, Mike Edwards and Tyler Fossey. And it's whether or not they can stop squabbling and get on terms with Saiva. That battle for second in the 162s, though, Nick, that's not over, or is it? I don't know, Redburn gapping it now. Just so you know, Milton Steel um, Versailles is, still, uh, is now nine seconds ahead. Uh, Alex Black dropped off quite a bit from Radburn that time round. Uh, Scribe, why don't we just let them go, knowing they weren't in the same class? Um, they've now kind of a little bit uh, spread out as well. You say Scribe has got a couple of seconds before Fossey, who is in his class. Mike Edwards is also again a couple of seconds. They're all having a little bit of a gap at the moment. Eldridge in seventh is also one of the heavies. And then the last of the lightweights is Scott Russell in eighth before two more heavies in Michael Mallett and Jack Goodyear. Uh, fastest lap was uh, just been done last lap round with a 46.08 by uh, Milton Steel Vassen, and he's pulling away as we can see at the rate of about a second a lap. And he's really dominated this uh, this category oh, yeah. today. I know I know it's all, uh, it's kind of a non-competition aspect. It isn't. It's a race. They've come out. It's not part of a series. Is perhaps what I'm trying to say. And they've came out as an invitation as a support race to the Depreco 100 UK Super Prix. Uh, as, and, and in so doing, trialling the new tyre for the series, for the 2022 series for the NKC and the Rotax Mass Class in that. And uh, it's absolutely been dominated by double world, uh, world champion, wow. double series Blimey. champion, um, Milton Steel <laughs> Vassen. That, that was promotion enough. Yeah, it baby. was, yeah. It rolled off the tongue, that. I'm not um, marvellous. So, yeah, he certainly got to, uh, he certainly got the grip. Nine laps completed from him. Tom Radburn just coming across the line now. There he is there, as is the 35 of Alex Black. You talk um, about that. I remember, I remember talking about, world, about world champions. A friend of mine, years and years ago, when I was doing this karting, whom I used to go to kart with, do you want to do traffic? I've got a story. Do you want to do a bit of race thing? Cause it's no, 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 no. Sorry, I'm just, to, I used, when you're ready. Oh, right. Get the guy that I used to do some karting with, he, um, he was previously a grass tracker. And he used to grass track minis. He said, I was the world champion at grass tracking. Oh, okay, fantastic, you know. So they didn't win the European Championship. Why is that? That was the previous day. Basically, it was just the same nine people. They decided that one day was the, grass, the European Championship. And they're, they're, they're all from Kent. And, and, and so he said he was the world champion for this mini grass tracking. But the previous day, his friend won the European Championships on the Saturday. Yeah, it's like the Baseball World Series in the States, isn't it? It's yeah. No one else played. No one else played. So where are we? Where are we so so I think, Nick, that we should be keeping an eye on that battle for fourth overall. It's a battle for the 177. Look, overall against Fossey. I actually think it's beginning to stagnate though and there's only really Tom Edridge, uh, sorry Tom Eldridge 
in seventh overall, but fourth in 177s. It was challenging Mike Edwards. So, uh, uh, for a, a moment ago, now. that was beginning to really heat up, and those three were coming together. Now they've yeah, got dropped back to the 53. Second that's and a half Scriver. between them. So the 53. That's it. There he is, Scriver. He's had a bit of time in second place, and now he's but he's always been leading the heavy class. Uh, with the uh, very uh, you know, aero, this is the thing you really see is the difference between these modern carts and the uh, classic machines we're watching in the rest of the, the area. It's this, this kind of aero front to them, the proper aero scoop. You know, the, the bumpers at the front started just being ways of not hitting each other, and now of course they've been, everyone's been designed to the nth degree to provide a bit of downforce. And well, the, now you get now the bumpers on a the, the way that the bumper is fixed. It's a quick release fix if you have a frontal impact. The bumper drops down, and at the end of the race in Park Fermi, if you've got a dropped bumper, you take a dropped bumper penalty, and that's five seconds. It's a good way of stopping some of the uh, bumping and boring, but surely that's what we're here for. That used to be part of the game when, when that I was, was the game, I thought. Yeah. I appear to be using you as a break. Is that all right? And we've seen that. We've seen that earlier on, haven't we? We've mm. seen a, a little bit of that. In uh, it's all part of the, it's all part of racing, I suppose. So the 53. Looking good in close up here. You see all the inner workings of a Rotax engine on the right hand side. Direct drive, but with a sorry, 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 uh, single gear, solid axle, no differential, but of course not direct drive, actually got a clutch, which makes things a lot easier if things go wrong and getting started. And also, when you I obviously heavily brake, the engine never stops, it disengages. So you I just thought I saw it all the engine driver with his hand in the air but I think I was there's wrong been there. a little bit of hand in the air to acknowledge um, flags I've noticed in some oh, right, more okay. experienced yeah. drivers yeah um, but we've got a kind of a we've obviously got, we've got a cart off at the top of the hill I'm not sure when that went um, two laps ago I think that's Scott Russell up by Christmas corner but this is the leader of the heavyweight class and leading quite comprehensively now you can just see the, the, the drop back one and this is his challenger. That is the uh, the triple six, the uh, number of the beast, Tyler Fossey. <laughs> and you can watch two children beat each other up on the uh, bottom of your screen there. <laughs> yeah. So I'm. Um, oh, uh, oh. That, that's acknowledging that yellow flag on the right yeah. towards Christmas Corner, isn't it? Yeah. It's where the uh, cart's we're, been removed yeah, from the we're track. retrieving Scott, Scott Russell's. Yeah. Actually, that's a shame. Shame. Uh, that that acknowledgement appears to have given him a little bit, got him a little bit closer, actually. So I think those these two now are a little bit closer, the 53 of Scriver and the Fossey in the triple six. It's kind of a con job, hand in the air, but your right foot's still yeah, buried. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I see. Yeah. Good, I, I yeah. suppose it lets the marshal see that, that you've uh, acknowledged you're, you're breaking yes. the rules. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> he's got a very grubby nose, this triple six, so you get the impression he's had some action on it. Several parts have been broken off at previous appearances. Oh, I've just been issued with the warning air final. Oh. Yeah. Exciting stuff. All right, so time great. to go. We've got another race before that. We've got yep. the uh, the ever confusing double, double <laughs> two, two races in one event to come yet. You know what? We're both we both count. We've got to try and cover them both. The problem is they're both great races. I know. That's the thing. We're great great pro car race and great uh, F three hundred race. So we'll, we'll, we'll fail to do them justice. No, no, <laughs> do our best. Yeah, yeah, that is. A so point. yeah, it, 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 what is happening here? Absolutely, is Fossey is not being dropped anymore by Scriver. Scriver in the front of this picture. There we go with the uh, flashings of, of pink, whereas the very popular blue and yellow is a very popular colour combination these days, isn't it, in row taxes? A lot of blue and yellow combinations. He sweeps through. That is Fossey. Getting a little bit closer, I think, again to uh, Scriver. No? Yeah, he was, quarter of a he was a quarter of a second quicker that lap round, and they are not starting the last lap, though they did go over on zero because the leader is so far ahead that actually they, are, they have got this lap and one more Whereas Milton Steel Vaseo has yet to start his final lap, even because he went over 11.35. Here, Here he is, Nick. Uh, that I can tell you why we keep uh, focused on that battle for the 177 class. Uh, Steel Vassen has just crossed the line to take the last lap board, so he is on his final lap. So very soon, as the 177 battle goes into the boot for the penultimate time, they will see the last lap board next time by. And it's Chris Siver. And Tyler Fossey going into the final lap. We'll stick with these as they go through and out of Oblivion and Crook. Through Fine Lady, the kink there. And driving defensively there, so he's aware that Fossey is there. Chris Shiver realising he has to defend. And oh, there's a challenge. Challenging Ashley. Oh. 
Ashby. Not and over the line goes uh, Milton Steele in the lightweight class. We're concentrating on the heavyweight class, which was battling to the end. And it is the 53 from the triple six. And that attempt to get through by Fossey has cost him enough time. It's going to make it relatively comfortable for Chris Scriber. It really is. Are they getting towards the final stages? Then he's managed to pull out a few carts lengths. That's not how they started this final lap. They started the fight this final lap right on each other's bumper. Nose to tail it was. But however, Chris Scriber managing to pull a gap and a relaxing fourth place. I'm sure he'll disagree with that. Fourth place overall, first in the 177s. But before we do that, let's have a full rundown. Mil Milton Steel Vassen takes the win in the 162 class by a full 15 seconds from Tom Radburn, who had a gap of five and a half seconds to third place Alex Black. Fourth overall and first in 177s is Chris Shiver with a gap of just under a second there to Tyler Fossey. And in third place in 177 was Mike Edwards. He was almost eight seconds behind in third. Tom Elridge was fourth. Michael Mallett was fifth. And Jack Goodyear was in sixth spot in 177s. Uh, only another runner, but a, a retirement, this one. Scott Russell in the number 20, having uh, looked uh, like he was going to have a good run in that final, was a retirement on lap 11. So very quickly, we are leaping into the F160, F300. The F160 is well first. They are the 250cc single cylinders. And then we have the Pro Karts, as they're known, twin engine Pro Karts. They go off in the 160 class, the so 300 160. And I will let you have a go at getting through these grids at some point. Uh, now, in fact, Joe. Right, so on the F300 pole is Jason Cooper with Matt Cater alongside. And then on the second row of the grid, Jack Goodyear, who's going to have to jump out of um, that number 16 Rotax Max and into his uh, F300, I think. Ian Shorter is alongside in fourth on row two. Row three is Gary Woodard and Oliver Warner with row four looking like Nicholas Clear in his Ayrton Senna replica overalls with Brett Knapp alongside. Ninth is Guy Hefford with Lee Shuri rounding off the 10-cart uh, ten ten field for F300s. The Pro Karts, the F160 Pro Karts, James Water on pole, George King alongside. On the second row of Pro Cards, Lee Mitchell and Jason Thatcher. Fifth is George McRae, sixth Oliver Clark. Seventh is Craig Ormrod, Graham King alongside in eighth. Ninth is Oliver Parcell with alongside him, Andrew Bailey in tenth. Eleventh is Jim, James Goimer with Wayne Brazil alongside. Thirteenth is Neil Slaughter with Malcolm Freeman in fourteenth. And rounding off the 15 cart Pro Card field is William Seymour. And as if that was time to perfection, was they've been perfection. released. Yeah, I noticed that once again the uh, the 44 cart has decided to uh, go up at the back of the field behind the uh, uh, the pro carts, even though it does of course qualify as a as Nicholas Clare uh, as a 300. And they are oh, they're they going to get a little bit closer this time. I'm trying to get the two grids a little bit closer to try and prevent the overlap. Of course, they've got an extra four minutes, so it's going to even more likely to happen, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, don't think. Jack Goodyear has joined us on this grid. Perhaps a bit of too quick a transition from the end of the Rotax race, uh, the NKC Rotax race, into this, the F160, F300 final. Big trophies to race for this time in both of these classes, and we'll try and keep a handle on what's going on in both of these races. As Jason Cooper in the Martini livery, cart 69, the Martini livery overalls and cart with Matt Cater alongside in the number 64 and the number 64 remember is the rotary engine the Axero rotary engine on that cart the other carts in F300 are the Swiss Auto 250cc carts and away they go five carts have taken to the start and there goes the pro carts the pro carts have been dominated all day by the 131 of James Walker. This has been a far more open battle, the 300s, and leading initially is Jason Cooper in the uh, Martini colours. Second, Matt Cater, and then Gary Woodard. But, uh, my guess is this is going to produce some interesting action the first few laps because there's no real obvious uh, superstar, and they've had a couple of carts drop out of the field as well. Yeah, and the pro carts getting through their first lap as well without any incident. One of the stragglers there must have had a problem at Oblivion and Crook. 
But the leaders of F300, Jason Cooper, leads Matt Cater in the number 64 out of the final bend here at Wilton Mill. It's Matt Cater in second, Oliver Warner in third, fourth is Gary Woodard, Ian Shotter coming through in fifth, James Walker leads the F160s, Lee Mitchell second, George King third, Graham King fourth, fifth is Jason Thatcher and running off the top six in pro cards, Oliver Clark. Yeah, it's a nice lead group here in the F300s, first and second quite close, third trying to catch up, which is Warner now in the 46. But they are right on each other's tails here. And I'm not sure whether this is any, any up being tactical. Of course, all the carts now are nice up the temperature. They've got three laps underneath the tyres and the engines. They're all able to do what they want to do. And he's very, very chunky for a cart and talky for a cart as well. Some of the interesting carts to drive. Lap times slower than the modern Rotax, but obviously faster than the older TKMs. And they come back up towards up the hill and up the straight towards Christmas Corner. It's Jason Cooper who leads. Then the Matt Cater in the 64, and then the much darker 46 of Oliver Warner. And it's all you know, steady as she goes at the moment. Yep, these three breaking away from the final two. And a change for fourth place there, just behind these leading three, with Ian Shotter getting ahead of Gary Woodard. We'll stay with the leaders of the F300s. The pro car battle is very much the property of James Walker. However, behind them, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, an absolute nose to tail battle developing there for second place in Downover. Certainly, uh, second place in uh, the F300 is absolutely up for grabs now as Warner's getting very raced back of Cater and actually even trying to cut the inside of him now as they come up the hill. And will he make a dive into Christmas Corner? No. We've seen most of those attempts at Christmas Corner go horribly wrong for one or both carts, to be honest. I don't think we've seen many clean ones through there. But they are, as you rightly say, having been released. They're being joined now by Ian Schotter, whose cart still has the, uh, the uh, damage from the time when he went whackingly over the, the, uh, the curves at the outside of the Ashby hairpin. He wobbled the entirety of the aerodynamic structures, but he's now got there. He obviously doesn't need to put it back in the order. And now second, third and fourth having a right old battle roar up the inside, but cut off all, oh, and then the leader's had a problem. The leader had a problem in retiring. We've got oh. a retirement for our leader. Cooper goes into the pits, must have had, felt the thing not run or... Oh, no, hang on, no, it's not him. I've gone completely wrong. It was a, another guy in a white... It was another guy... I've got overly excited. I'll stop again. It, it was a guy in a, another guy in a white set of overalls. Must have been William Seymour, who I think is now in the pits, who One of the pro peeled off runners. at exactly the same time in a very similar race suit. But never fear, the Martini cart is still leading. I tell you what, the Martini cart looks like a complete handful for Jason Cooper. He came through uh, Inkerman's in a full slide, gotten it a, a real oversteer moment. However, didn't really alter the momentum of the cart, and he continues to lead this race. Looking down the inside, Oliver Warner just seemingly positioned the cart to have a challenge on Matt Cater, who's in second. And just look at the way that these carts perform. As that rotary engine on the 64 completely matching the performance of the, uh, the conventional piston engine of the Swiss Auto, the 250cc cart. First two being uh, given a bit of a bit of a breath by the fact that the second two, which is Warren and Shotter, are, are fighting with each other. And they both lost time going through the boot by having to take uh, unideal lines to block each other off. But uh, into the lead, you point out that they see, oh, now there's another cart right in the way. That's a 10 cart of Markham Freeman. It wasn't really his fault. The closing speed is so great. But there we are, Cooper in the white overalls. And the white, mostly white cart leading the 300, second place. Oh, now the inside again comes the 46. He, he just kind of has a look there, there I, doesn't he? I don't, he's not got the bravery no. to carry the speed, because if he carries the speed, it he's may work. It's more likely to take Matt Cater off with both and with it. Yeah. And at this point, when you keep, you keep you know, crying wolf like that, it's going to stop bothering. Well, I'm you, not, know. you know what, Nick? The thing is, uh, Matt Cater doesn't even know he's doing that, because he, he hasn't got any mirrors. No, it's true. So Shotter he, looking he very racy. Doing it. Shotter in fourth looking very racy, by the way, Joe. Now he's really looking to uh, unsettle uh, Warner in front of him because I think he probably feels he's got some pace, but he's obviously sitting in this train currently read by the Martini machine. I can keep saying that because that obviously makes you happy. Um, it's some dialed in. There's some real aggressive movements, isn't there? Not, we're not looking at subtle driver inputs from any of these guys at the moment. And now this time up the 40, he, again, he... he do you know what? He gets such a great run. It's almost like the acceleration that the non-rotary... The 46 isn't the rotary, the 64 is the rotary. The 64 
doesn't have the same punch as the 46. He gets up and then backs out as the five gets almost completely in the way. That was Neil Slaughter. This is the thing where you just come across a piece of traffic at completely the wrong time. Two more to overtake now, and they're having their own battle, which is the 15, uh, maybe the, night, the 14, this, and then the 44. We, we've seen this happen so many times to the F300, tripping over the, the 160, the F160 Pro Karts. And once again, we're seeing this with Jason Cooper struggling to get by, and he really needs to be decisive when he goes past these Pro Kart back markers because what's happening is we've got this four-card battle for the F300s, which is beginning to heat up, and there's oh, a move by, by Schotter. Schotter made, he made it stick? No, he didn't actually in the end of the day. He, was, he, he thought, this is my chance, as they were way through one of the pro cards. Lunged up, but solidly not letting him through was Warner. So one, two, three, four, nailed together, and they're looking for another line, which Schotter actually got scored almost ahead of him as, they, as he went left before they went through Oblivion. But the four carts now, right together in the F300. There is a, honestly, there is a pro kart race going, but James Walker's leading it by miles. Um, but these four are these right four. together. Wow, this is it. This is, and you know what, Nick? We've just clicked by half distance for these four carts. I mean, really? Yeah, we've still got a, we've still got a full half of this race. Whether Nudging. they can keep this frantic pace up, these carts are a big handful. They really do come off the corner, and if you're overzealous with that throttle, you'll just spin the wheels. There up. it goes again. Fantastic drive. He and just clear to look into the inside. inside what there. It, I think. What it, I think this is this is an element. What we're getting here is a little bit of the foreshortening effect of the cameras. I think mm. what it is is the 46 has got better initial drive down the back straight. However, suddenly towards the back end, that rotary has more ah, secondary speed. Yeah. So the gap closes and it moves past. And we think it's actually the 46 braking early. It's not. It's an element of where the actual rotary 64 of Cater's got a little bit more speed at the back end of the back straight. It seems to yeah. me that's more likely to be happening. Otherwise, it would make no sense to back out so many times. So they kind of produce the same performance in a different but in way. different ways. Yeah, absolutely. But this four-car battle is still anybody's race and don't take your eyes uh, off Ian Schotter with yeah, the number 13 at the back of this train because he's going to take advantage of any slight mistake any slight mistake and it, you know what that could be the number 46 of Oliver Warner actually defending into the boot well the 46 made a mistake he tried to go extra tight going through on uh, Ozier so I think he thought if he did that he'd have a better chance of making the uh, move into the boot work it didn't he lost space they've uh, been split up slightly there by a back marker didn't do anything wrong I think just this, uh, where you meet the people and now but, but one, two, and three right together. Tiny gap to the fourth of Schotter. It's Cooper, Cater, Warner. Small gap to Schotter. So it's white from red, from black, from fluorescent yellow. That's your top four in the F300. And they've been this way, or they've been this close. Well, every, uh, really from the, what, 90 seconds in, haven't they? Yeah, they have from literally the start of this race. Three and a half minutes remaining on the clock. And still everything to okay. play for. There's the defensive line again into the boot. I'm not sure he's challenging Cater for second. Cater absolutely glued. And you know what? All credit to Jason Cooper at the front of this field. He's been so composed. He hasn't He hasn't uh, blew it under pressure. He's, he knows that Cater's there because he can feel him on his rear bumper. Yeah, this is where things go slightly awry. And they have gone slightly awry because... And it's interesting there because Cater thought he might get a chance by going the wide side of the pro cart. Didn't happen. Uh, Cooper's, I think Cooper, as you say, is driving a very, very sensible, steady race. I think also Cater's not prepared to throw one up the inside. I think he thinks his chance is going to come from back markers. I think he I, thinks I've got, I, I got I, plenty I, of black marker think, chance, and that's what I'm going to use. I think all four, all, well, certainly the three drivers behind the lead driver, Jiz and Cooper, they're just waiting for Cooper to make a, a slip up whilst trying to negotiate the back markers, the pro carts, which they should be able to get past without any real issue. Of course, the closing speed is massive. And there's a couple of places where you meet them where even they're trying to get out of the way, they're going to cost you time. Because yeah, you, that's you, right. But they're not, uh, yeah, there's no, no in, it, not, none of us are saying, oh, no, no, the, the third and fourth is really close now, will it? Sure, shot a back down of it. He oh, and the mistake for 64, and suddenly they're both going to get through. Overshot, Christmas corner, and suddenly Cater's challenge has disappeared, and suddenly we have a new second and third. We've got the 46 and second. Let's watch it again. How did he get this one so I'll tell wrong? You, I'll tell you how. He, he had the punch out of Crook. Which oh, got no, him, he got his nose wiped. He got him alongside. Did it? What? Well, he did. got his nose wiped. Yeah, Kater, I think he got his nose wiped. Or he may have had to, he may have thought he was going to get it. So he did what we all do, jab the brakes. And now that number 46 cart of Oliver Warner looking down the inside of the leader, Jason Cooper. But shot at him. Shot still. It. You know what? I think if Shot could get by, he's actually going to pull away because I think he's actually got more speed than the cart in now front of him. I think remember now is you've got three carts with the same engine producing power in the same way. 
they were probably finding it difficult to get around about with uh, uh, Cater because he was producing his, his power in a different way because his rotary engine. So these three now all together. And interesting, this is the first time we've seen a little bit of daylight for Cooper as Warner now concentrates more on Schotter, which is probably the right thing to do because Schotter, I think, I agree with you. I think he's the fastest person if he got clear air on the yeah. track. Yeah. Yeah. Cooper will benefit from what Oliver, Oliver Warner and Ian Schotter tripping over one another. And, and there's a move oh, down the inside into the boots. And that he's been practicing that for lap after lap. And he got held up slightly there, did Cooper. And he got a whack up the back end. But here he comes. It was out of it was out of the Aussies and along the back straight. And that's where he made the move. And this is what I think uh, say that, that but why it didn't work the previous time, because that rotary is making more speed at the back end. Once he got a chance to run through, he's got that punch and gone through. And into the lead has gone Oliver Warner. Cooper now actually holding up Schotter. Mm. This is going to be disastrous for Schotter because they have got this lap and one more. And the gapping that Warner has managed to get so quickly. So Schotter has got to throw it up the inside and hope for the best that he can get this back. But at the moment, he's looking to do that up the inside here. No, that's too tight. And it's a good racing line taken by Cooper. But Warner, look how far he's got away already. And now, yeah. this time, no. And he's lost his chance. Jason Cooper's been the cork in the bottle, hasn't he? And he's just lost his chance. And Wow, Warner's just gone away. Cooper's holding second. And Schotter is going to be a frustrated racing driver. Yeah, uh, Schotter. Hayter's could, dropped off. Still a chance, though, Nick. Still a chance that Schotter can, can squeeze make second, by Cooper. That, the wind's gone. He could, yeah. can make second. But I think, you know, it's interesting. I think both the guys who got ahead were slower than the guys in third and fourth, which is fine and great for us. But look at that lead, 1.1 seconds in a lap and a bit. He's just gone, hasn't he? He got, he finally got by Cooper, and he's just gone. And looking around the outside, that's the long, long way to go for Schotter. He's going to come over and under and switch back and get some power. He needs to get the drive. And oh, I don't think he's really got it. He's on the wrong side. It's going to be held. So let's move forward to our leader who's about to win the race. There we go. He's so far ahead. There he is. <laughs> there that's he is. it. The 46. Fantastic performance by uh, Oliver Warner. What a great race. Very happy. Oh, Schotter got, Schotter got him on the last corner. Where's Cooper? Cooper's gone off. Cooper's gone, gone off. off on the last there corner. There he is. Oh, he went off on the last corner for fourth place. So Warner wins. Schotter second. Cooper to third. And Cooper just adding to the excitement right at the end there we by going off. That. We well, just You can't cover that. everything. <laughs> yeah. Here come the pro carters who we've completely neglected. Uh, they because were in the race of that as well. 300 battle. And it's... Grim King, who took the win. King beat Walker. King beat Walker right, can we, can we, by can we, three and a half we, seconds. Can we rewind this race and watch it again? <laughs> yeah, can we watch the pro cards? Uh, Lee Mitchell was third. George King, fourth. Oliver Clark, fifth. Jason Thatcher, sixth. Craig Omerod comes through in seventh. Um, and it, it is a shame when we get such a, a tight battle for the whole race for the F300s. And unfortunately, we, we missed the pro car battle there. Um, I think we, we may be getting a grid walk, Nick. I'm I just going to check. It, they're, they're holding the carts for a little bit. I'm not sure it's for a walk or whatever it is, but they're holding them for a while. Um, for the main final, as you can see them all there in Parc Ferme. So, we go a bit. so I'm going to pass the radio mic over to Joe. I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to carry on talking until you walk past that um, that door and then you wave to our production team and then you can talk on the radio. Don't forget, you've got two cameras. You've got the, uh, what, both ends. It doesn't matter. We'll sort it out for you. <laughs> so let's... Uh, oh, they're coming out on the grid. This is even better. All oh, right, fantastic. So, so I'm not quite sure how we're going to pick up the cameras on this one. I suppose it's going to be the backside from uh, Ash's shot. So uh, let's all go up onto the pit lane. He's forgotten something. Oh, he wants a grid sheet. Okay, so... Um, let's see, hopefully he's going to look at me. So this is, this, is, this, is, this is Joe's chance to go and show his knowledge of karting. as they are coming out onto the grid for the main A final. So again, the cart's down on the ground. Once you see, go on, just put Sitting around. So I think Joe's going to get a radio to be told what to do, but I'm going to tell him what to do anyway. 
So once he gets to the front of the grid, we will uh, we'll go on to uh, we'll, we'll kind of see if we can get a chat with the uh, racers. So he's almost there, guys, in the control room. So any second now, if we switch to the, if Ash has got him on camera, let's uh, let's have a look at him as he waits at the far end of the grid. And let's switch over to young Mr. Joe Bradley. Ah, <laughs> he's, just dropped his, he's just dropped his grid. Right. He's blown miles that away. That was great grid planning. <laughs> Hang on. Keep this going. <laughs> Brilliant. I need to know who I'm talking to. Welcome to the Depreco 100 UK Super Pre Grid. Mm. Here it is. This is where it all gets really, really serious. I'm on the pole position with car 21. Let's have a word with Jason Wilson. Jason, I know it. Jason Wilson on the pole. Yeah. Jason, are you surprised to be on this pole position? I mean, we, uh, no, just have a turn around and have a look at our camera. That's him up there. We've had a good day. I'm um, just pleased with how it's all gone. So, yeah, hopefully we can bring it all together. It's been very, very tight in the heat, and you've, you've, you haven't even seen some of the competitors that you're going to be up against right now. Is that kind of a worry? Is it you're, you're going into this race with an unknown quantity behind you? Yeah, it's not a worry. It's just a fairly funny format. It's not how it's usually done, but we'll go with it and uh, see how it goes. And what's the plan then? Just stay ahead? That's the plan. As ever. Wish you all the very best of luck. This is a very, very big race. Let's have a word with our all plate runner, Scott Williams, who's been very, very good. Scott, can I bring you out here? That's our cameraman up there, so that's who we're talking. That's where all the viewers are. Scott, you're on the all plate. Uh, tell me a little bit about that. What does that stand for? Um, that was an open championship last year that I won um, at Rye House, and I get to keep the plate on there for a year. Now, you started your heats on the front row. It's a little bit different the way that the qualification has gone. Um, we've got a, long, a longer race ahead of us now. Um, what's your thoughts going into this final then? Yeah, we've had some good heats today. Um, the particular chassis that I'm on at the moment takes a couple of laps for the tyres to come on. So hopefully we're going to be strong at the end of the race. That's what the plan is, yeah? You're going to just bide your time? Yeah, yeah. Uh, a high-speed game of chess, I call it. Yeah, exactly that. <laughs> But uh, there's going to be a lot of luck involved and there's a lot of really quick drivers here, so it should be a really good race. Yeah, we're looking forward to that as well. Let's have a word with our number 27, the uh, Nicky Richardson. Nicky, can I bring you out here? Now, I, I'm, I'm a bit of a fan favourite for me, this, because I too was a Gilles Villeneuve fan. Also, if you could just show the camera here, Nicky, just step out here. He's, he's right up there. That's a... Uh, is that the Jean Lacy? Oh, you've, you've changed helmets. You, right, so Gilles Villeneuve has done nothing for you today. Right, so Jean Lacy, you've brought him out. You're not old enough to remember Gilles Villeneuve. He was born, sorry, I was born on his year he died, but my dad was a massive fan, right. so hence the lid and stuff like that. So, yeah, it, I've always watched all his races on YouTube and stuff and old videos, and he was a hero, yeah, he was amazing. You must come from a real passionate motorsport family, because Nicky, I've noticed the spelling, is exactly the same as Nicky Lauda, and he was my idol. Well, funny enough, my dad wanted to call me Jules as well. And my mum was like, no chance. So it was Nicky. So it's better than Jules. Yeah. You would have had a tough school in England called Jules. Uh, Nicky, if I can just say, I mean, you've got a lot of experience. And you, you know, you, you, you had a lot of success as a junior in cadets. Have you been in karting all this time? So I've been keeping sort of karting fresh with Club 100, working, testing and stuff like that. But I haven't raced for a very long time. And today I was literally not hoping, well, I was hoping for a high finish, but... Uh, kind of sort of thinking about we're going to be around the 10th place but today we're 15 grid but my ribs are completely gone so <laughs> I don't know how long I'm going to last okay. in this final we'll, we'll see we'll see I'll give my best shot and the final's longer so I'm sorry to break that to you yes a lot of painkillers gone in so uh, hopefully I'll be all right but um, I'm struggling okay all right we'll bear that in mind now. I'm sure the adrenaline will kick in for Nicky Richardson and we'll see Nicky at the front of this field let's have a walk down to the middle of the uh, the field if you stay with me Ash and let's see where I am cart four 11. Let's get down to the middle and see uh, where we are. I want to see one of the, uh, the, the, f the contenders who came through from the B final. Uh, did you guys come through the B final? You did, didn't you? No? You qualified. You're number three, aren't you? Yes. Where's my... F where's my... Right, where is he? These were the guys who made it through the B final, yeah? Cart 41, where are you? What's your name for? Ah, Liam, isn't it? Yeah. Liam, that's our camera there, mate. Just turn, say hi to the viewers. 
<laughs> Liam, that was a, a, a quite a dominant run in the B final. Was there problems that put you in the B final? I'm sure you were expecting to be in the year. Yeah, there was plenty of problems we've had today, and it's a shame, really, of how good qualifying went. But just, everything went well then, and as long as it goes well in this one, I'm looking to make progress. Right, so where are you hoping for? Don't know, top ten. Ooh, try that's try yeah. have a good run. That's it, that's... I'm just looking at the amount of cards, top 10. I hope you do, mate, and I know you've got pace. There's no doubt about it the way you showed that in the B final. So we wish you all the very best. Thank you, Thank you very much. Let's have a word with 55, because this was a very... Wesley Graves. Now, the last time I saw you, you were in a very irate state because you weren't happy with the penalty. I don't want to go into that. I want to ask you how much you enjoyed. Just step out here, Wes. That's our, that's our viewers up there. Um, all right, so that penalty that you picked up in your final, he put you into the B final. Yeah. But you must have enjoyed that B final, mate, coming through that field. Yeah, it was a good, a good race, to be fair, yeah. Um, just picked them off uh, one by one, took the time, and obviously came in second. But I got a penalty in that as well, so... Um, All right. Yeah, I think they got it in for me today, but yeah. So you're going to try and keep out of trouble? Definitely, I've got to, haven't I? Well, you've just got to do what you did in the B final, you'll be up near the front. Straight round the outside at Christmas, get it done. Was there a bit of a red mist in that B final? I could really yeah, tell with your body language. There yeah. still is a red okay, mist. Okay, all right. I'm going to step away. I'm going to step away and leave you to it. Right, everybody. We're about to go ahead with the Depreco 100 UK Super Pre. We'll get back to Nick because these carts, I'm going to be having to clear off the grid very soon. So let's get this thing on the road. Thanks, Joe. And that is uh, the uh, run down the carts. I think something that we've been spoken to, certainly Nicky, we've obviously explained how his, uh, his background. And I love the way he's now just abandoned uh, Jovio and never gone for Jean Alesi. He's obviously uh, very fond of, uh, of flamboyant racing drivers who didn't necessarily achieve what they should have done in their careers. And they're now going to try and start off the grid. This is a 34 car monster grid. And uh, hopefully Joe will come back. Because Joe's actually the only, per the only person who actually got, the gr got a printed grid. So I'll have to wait for him to come back to read down. And we may not even get through the entire grid. My guess is they're going to need two warm-up laps. It's taking a very long time to start everyone. Joe's being uh, outfoxed by a door at the moment, which is quite funny. So we uh, look to get rolling here. They are The leaders are a long way away. So they're going to use this as, as an advantage to get themselves into the... And they're trying to clear the, the. They try and clear the. Oh, no start there for the 35. And they are, kind of, I think, optimistically bunching up at the moment. There they go. So, opt so now I do have a copy of the grid, which uh, is the grid which, very amusingly, Joe dropped as soon as he got onto the grid. That was that's my highlight of the day. I'll be honest, that's, that's going to be highlight the when you it? literally went and I, oh, <laughs> I've dropped my grid. I have no idea what I am or what. That's I'm how windy doing. it is. Yeah, um, I don't. Uh, I'm just worried they might actually get off this time. No, I doubt it. Um, They'll be getting another. Wait and see. They get a wave around, and they do. Then we'll. Um, I don't know. They're getting quite close. Oh, there's one person at the back. Are they going to go around again? They're not even trying, are they? They are going around again. The yeah. 64 wasn't even... OK, so I'll let you read the grid now. <laughs> OK, I'll uh, try and squeeze this in. Jason Wilson, the man who we spoke to in cart 64. Ryan Cole alongside. Second row of the grid is Paul Monks and Scott Williams. Nicky Richardson and Adam Rogers are on row three. Row four is Will Cottrell and Grant Davison. Row five is Lee Hackett and Dominic Pine. Row six, Matthew Horton and Ian Henderson. And row seven, Paul Streether and Sam Hill. Row eight, we see Paul Birchnell and Simon Newby. And then in row nine, Sean Davies and Jake Packen. Uh, 19th and 20th on row 10 is Adam Sirrett and Matthew Lawrence. With row 11, Edid uh, Scoffin and Justin Waddington. Richard Steele and Lee Drinkle are on row, uh, row 12. With Liam Hamling, first of the qualifiers from the B final on row 13, along with Ryan Gill. Dean Walker and Wesley Graves are on row 14. Row 15, Owen Potter and Sean Taylor. With Dennis Barclay and James Lovell on row 16, and rounding off this 34 card grid, Nick, 34 card grid, Marcus Gray and Brendan Williams. And they're all now ready to go, fired up by their conversations with you. Mm. Um, hoping, obviously, the officials had more uh, purchase on the, uh, the grid than you did. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make the blooper reel with that uh, grid sheet blowing out my hand. The no. guy at the front has. Got way too far ahead. I don't know what he's doing, the 21 car. No, Ryan Cole's in the wrong place. He's probably trying he's in to get the, the lap, isn't he? I think. I, think, I don't know. This is a bit weird. I don't know. This is a mess, isn't it? They've let them go. The 64, it was Jason Wilson from the pole position that got down the inside at oblivion. He looks over his shoulder to see where the rest of the field are. And what a sight that is. 
And As this field of carts go up towards Christmas Corner. Wilson from Williams. Oh, Williams has gone right off the track for no discernible reason there. So the O-plate man, and he stopped. Gone off and stopped. So a problem just coming up. I don't know what he's done. Well, he's lost a chain or something, but he just turned around and he's gone. Mm. He's pulled off with a... Oh, that's, that looks that's, like a mechanical that's, you know, fault. There's mechanical force that's back at the front. It is still being led by Jason Wilson with one of his major challenges already off, but he's been fired down by Ryan Cole in second. So it's 64 from 21, and then there's a plethora of busy two-stroke Bs coming after him. This is a great start for our poor man, Jason Wilson. He's got a bit of a breather as he crosses the line for the first time. Ryan Cole's behind him, and then behind them, Nicky Richardson, Adam Rogers, Paul Mungs, Will Cottrell, Lee Hackett, Grant Davis, and Paul Strether rounding off the top nine there. Yeah, and it's looking like a, a two-horse race already because it doesn't look like Richardson's got the... Well, we already know he's, he, he hasn't got the ribs for it. <laughs> it doesn't look like he's got the pace for it, but now you, know, you need two carts to make a race, and that's what's happening. Wilson, under intense pressure from Cole... They were in different heats. They've not had a chance to race together so far today. I'm sure they've raced many times in the past. As they go, about to go sweeping around Aussies and back down the back straight. They've got a nice little gap. And then we have this complete snake of two strokes. Did you, did you notice that hand gesture there? As Jason Wilson, the leader, looks round. Ryan Cole gesticulated to him. Just get going. Just get going. They're not going to battle. It's going to be a waiting game. It's going to be break a away, are game of chess, isn't it? They're looking for a breakaway. That's a very intelligent thing to do. Take your first time. Have a go at a breakaway. And saying that, it looks like Cole's going to go oh, for it up yeah, the Christmas corner. Oh, yeah. and, the, and the two of them slide bound, and they're, they're absolutely using the camber and the herd. But So, yeah, you, off you go until the point where I decide to overtake you. <laughs> yeah. So, Cole off, now in yeah. the lead. Yeah, off you go now. There Nicky he goes. In third. So, this is the replay as he switches up the inside and... Yeah, I mean, I think the 64 there. Skittered of through, didn't he? Wilson, Skittered through. Little bit, probably a little bit upset. He got caught out by that one. There's no necessarily belief that uh, Ryan is any actually quicker. And right into the slipstream now sits the 64 of Wilson. Behind him is Richardson, Rogers, and Monks. Now, Nicky Richardson in third will be watching these two battling ahead and be hoping that they'll come back towards him. It doesn't look like that's happening. If anything, Nicky Richardson. Now has Paul Monks behind him. Paul Monks just moving up ahead of Adam Rogers, as does Lee Hackett into fifth. Will Cottrell is in seventh. And there's lots of movement down the field. But right now, the battle for the overall honours in the DePreco 100 UK Super Prix is down to these two at the front. Ryan Cole, Jason Wilson. They've swapped positions. And the question is, Nick, can Jason Wilson get back on terms with Cole? and maybe challenge. Still a chunk of race, though. Yeah. We're, we're barely a third into it. Yeah, and certainly, if you're a betting man, you'd say that it's been slowly eking away, Is Cole. Cole's just pulled a few extra car lengths this time around. Now, it may just be that, again, the 64 cart of Wilson wants to be in a comfortable position where he isn't caught out by a sudden gust of wind or a sudden uh, uh, braking moment, but that's now a gap larger than you'd want. You wouldn't want to be that far behind. You know, three-tenths is great, six-tenths not so much. Third and fourth battling hard as well behind us. Richardson just holding back Monks. He went over about less than a tenth part. But Monks now come at the inside in the background. The shots and Monks should pick up third place. And then he can start to do a, a launch and attack on the top two. Where absolutely this moment Cole pulling away from Wilson. So these two battling and Nicky Richards in a very comfortable third place. Paul Monks. We're just waiting to see whether he can get he got taken back. On uh, they went, oh, he has. He's lost it. He's lost and it. And somebody else has come right. through. Yeah. So no, no, Richardson, he's, no, he's still in fourth. It's changed. No, but he was in third. He went through the hairpin a second ago. And so it is now the 33. It can't be 33. There's no 33. It must be the 63 of uh, Rogers, I think, who's moved into third place. Well, Rogers had lost out to Paul Monks as well. So last time we've seen a lot of movers behind the leaders there. And this Nicky Richards being absolutely pushed by Lee Hackett. First two now, gapping slightly. Let's just uh, drop back to third. And that is the 63. You can see Rogers. Uh, uh, that's Rogers, Richardson behind him. Gap last time round was 3.1 seconds to second place. And that's the, the distance he's got to make up. He's got seven minutes, 23 seconds and a lap and uh, up the inside again. And Richardson gets pushed back another position, I think. I think Hackett went past him. Yeah, so perhaps the fatigue's kicking in or the ibuprofen is kicking out. And Richardson, with his lacy helmet, is slowly moving into an lacy like oblivion. And it looks like he's lost out to Paul Monks as well this, that time as well so dropping down the order in fact there he is slowing not sure if he's ripped that's his ribs that have given up he's trying to get into the pit lane isn't he so a, re a retirement yeah, there back. yeah Nicky Richardson 
So you say much you can take physically. Rogers uh, lost another two tenths of a second that time round. So even in clear air, he's not got the speed of Cole or Wilson. I'm wondering with the, uh, I think, uh, poor Nicky, I think it was a little bit of a, a, a you know, a, a cork in the bottle there. Whether the, yeah, I think the, so. the third, fourth and fifth will uh, begin to ease back together. First and second, it's still 0.6. It's been 0.6 the last three laps, actually, as they fire themselves the top two down the back straight. And we just join them on the back straight now with that three second gap to Rogers in the blue and white. He's not in the yellow, sorry. He's got a little bit of a gap back to Hackett and Cottrell. But uh, it's by no means decided in any format. Yeah, Ryan Cole really has taken a commanding view of the lead of this race. It's just under six minutes now remaining in this Depreco 100 UK Super Prix. Jason Wilson trying all he can to hang on to the leader, Ryan Cole. The gap's just on eight tenths of a second, but they've got a gap of 3.3 seconds to third place Adam Rogers, who's got a bit of a comfort, a bit of a comfort blanket to Lee Hackett. But that's where the action is, fourth and downwards. Mm. And that could be anything. And I think Nicky Richards has done the two guys at the front a big favour by um, kind of holding up the rest of the field. And that's allowed these two away. Well, you can't take anything away from Ryan Cole. He's absolutely majestic at the front of this field. And he's extending the lead. Yeah. It was eight tenths last time by. It's 1.3. Yeah, let me just, let's have a little bit of a look back. One more car. We'll have a look at the, uh, the battle of sort of that fourth, fifth, the Hackett. Cottrell, so it's the 38 and the 32. So just yeah, that's the focus. And that, if you see a battle now is up the inside comes the 26 of Streeter, and he looks to try and get a position up in the uh, the, the mid pack of the top 10. But he's uh, shown uh, absolute no thank you. You're not doing that situation there. And out wide they go. And the 44, Paul Monks, who's been involved quite a lot in the earlier heats, seems to have lost that ultimate pace, hasn't he? I think there's very little between that group of uh, carts if at all, this, this whole field, and they just, you know, you, you lose time. It's very hard to make it up in this, uh, in this environment. Just taking a look and seeing where Wesley Graves has uh, made up ground. He's up to ninth, would you believe, inside the top ten. Wow. Wesley Graves. So that, that. <laughs> yeah, and that's been a, a recovery battle. He was still very angry. He was telling us on the grid there. And a great race from him in the B final to get him into this A final and to be in the top ten. That's quite. Uh, that's quite something. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, yeah. That sort of uh, move. He's obviously got his money's worth because he's had fun racing and overtaking people. So, uh, as the, the top five, six, and seven all sweep round through Ashby, and you can see those three carts. They're right together in the battle for fifth, sixth, and seventh. Cottrell, Streeter, and Monks, and just off slightly off them is Graves. But the problem is, is that at the front is now one and a half seconds that Ryan Cole has over Jason Wilson. And that's going to be a bit longer this time round. Wilson, who led for the first couple of laps, now 1.8 behind. Um, very, very slowly being dragged back by Rogers. Rogers still 2.8 behind. Then we come to Lee Hackett, who's got a small lead over this uh, section of cars. We're actually having a look at the moment, which is Cottrell Street to a month. We come up towards Christmas Corner again. Great battle down the order as this battle continues. And it looks oh, like a challenge. Oh, going for it. Challenge into Ashby, and he's made that stick. That was pretty textbook, wasn't it? Yeah, Down the inside by Monks, they just yeah. just seemed to get a bit of bit of drive through, and that's up in the six minutes. Yeah, so he, he's he did moving forward, and this, of course, the TKM Super Prix 100 UK Super Prix. This is the biggest race of the year for these guys who run the retro 90s carts. And uh, every position you can make up is a, is a position to brag about for the entire season. Absolutely, and it's not a championship, so there's no points to be gained. It's all about that first place. The accolade of carrying the SP plate in the 100 UK Championship. And there we've got Paul Monks now trying to hold on to what will be, I think, fifth place. We'll check that next time by. As Paul Monks... Monks is in sixth. Yeah, sixth place, sorry. He, had a, he went ahead of Paul Street, and it's Paul Street who's coming back at him, if anything. Second and third are getting closer, but still not that close with two minutes to go. They, they're kind of equidistant, and this streak of carts comes through again. Looking at 44 monks, trying to hold off the 26 off Street, who not, not, not get a go, but also trying to move forward at the same time to get to Cotterill. Right. Very, very evenly matched, Joe, these cars. 
Yeah, oh, that, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Ryan Call has extended the lead to 2.7 seconds, and he continues to lead this race. Jason Wilson steer is, stays in third. Can't do anything about that gap, as can Adam Rogers. He can't do anything about the gap between second and third. It's still 2.2 seconds. It ebbs and flows ever so slightly. Behind them, though, anything can happen and probably will. <laughs> yeah, it may well happen almost in the next, the next few yards. So coming in to the sweep around Wilkins, these four carts are kind of, it, it really is a point where none, one of them really needs to start getting a little bit more feisty. They're making it a bit easy each other. That's what's happened as the uh, 44 is under severe attack from the 26 of Streeter as he's just walked his place back again. Minute and three to go, but that's probably, uh, Ryan Cole's obviously long past the line, so he's going to get two more after this one. So there's two and a half laps to go. And the number 26 cart there of Paul Street, they're just ending up with the rear wheels on the grass there in an attempt to get on terms with Paul Monks. Monks wasn't having it, though, and that's allowed Streetham to just drop back and give that about a cart's length cushion. And it's Streetham with Monks ahead of him in sixth. Will Cottrell is ahead of him in fifth. And it's Lee Haggard that leads that gaggle of four carts in those positions, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. As they go into Ozier's and onto the back straight towards the boot. It will be 14 laps completed next time by, and we're down to 17 seconds. Yep, we're down to uh, Ryan Cole has just passed the uh, the line in 11.45, so he uh, will get two more laps. There's Cottrell as well, sweeps in, looking to hack it. Monks is thinking about it as well, as is Streeter, but they've really kind of found their metal, they found their pace. The pace is very, very similar. Just to show how evenly matched this all is, Joe, is that they literally, they are trying everything they can, but they have all got the same ability of speed and power. The one person you say that isn't happening to is Ryan Cole now, who's virtually pulled out a four-second lead. So let's see if we can find our leader, Ryan Cole. He's on the back straight towards the boot. Just about, he's going through the boot now and coming towards your camera, Ash. So he's about to start his final lap. Ryan Cole has put together a textbook race. Started, lost a little bit at the start, ran through, but then got past Wilson and absolutely has dominated what's going on since then. It was an amazing run. It really was. As he comes through the top of the track and drops down now for the final time into the Ashby Hairpin. He's only got a few corners to go to claim the 100 UK Super Prix. Sweeping through and now going to come to Ozier. He's got the back straight. He turns onto it now. A short bit of acceleration. Before he sweeps left hand into the boot complex. And then several rights, including the dangerous right corner. And Ryan Cole is going to claim the 100 UK Championship 2021 Super Prix winner. Ryan Cole, fantastic performance. Cole has absolutely bossed that. Wilson from Rogers. Rogers got closer towards the end. Got within three tenths. It's Wilson from Rogers. Hackett is in fourth. Paul Monks uh, managed to get Cottrell on the last lap. Cottrell and Streeter had a bit of a coming together. So there's a bit of an action uh, elsewhere. They are um, going to have an argument about that somewhere. So both Cottrell and Streeter dropped out at the top level. So just go for it. So just again, so it's Cole from Wilson, from Rogers, from Hackett, from Monks, Wesley Graves, all the way from the B final to sixth overall in the 55 cart. Great performance. Liam Hamling, he won the B final. He was seventh. Uh, Matthew Houghton, eighth overall. Sean Davis, ninth. Then we have uh, Dean Walker in 10th. Sam Hill in 11th. James Lovell in 12th. Simon Newby was 13th. Paul Birchinell was 14th. Sean Taylor was 15th. Matthew Lawrence was 16th. Ian Henderson was 17th. Uh, Marcus Gray was 18th. Eddard Scoffin was 19th. And Adam Siliat with 20. 21, Owen Porter, 22. Lee Drinkle. Uh, Dennis Barkley managed uh, 23. Then Cottrell, Streeter, who they both dropped way down, didn't they? Cottrell and Streeter. Then Caldwell, Wallington. These, none of these guys actually made the full trip. Uh, Richard Steele, Nicky Rich and Jake Packham, Grant Davis and Scott Williams. Now, I'm not sure, uh, I need to be told in my ear how we're doing as far as interviews are concerned with our winner. Is Joe ready to roll at the moment? So we're waiting to find out who actually won the race. I'm pretty sure it's Ryan Cole from the last time I saw it go around. Huh. Oh. 
So, a bit of confusion down in scrutineering about who is the winner and who has uh, got to uh, run the whole way home again. But so they are, as you can see, that is the 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 mess of carts and everything. And the 21 cart, of course, of Ryan Cole. The 21 cart was the winner. The 21 cart won the race. And that was then in second place, it was 64. And then it was uh, the 63. So, Joe, as you can see in the left-hand corner, I've got an issue because it looks like that, that Ryan hung back and did a lap of honour. And therefore, he ended up... Uh, <laughs> being a long way back in this massive queue for scrutineering. So we now watch uh, as Joe walks past the queue. Hopefully he's still in the cart somewhere. And we're going to pick up a word with Ryan Cole here. Um, just give me a chance to thank uh, uh, DiPirico and Boiler Choice, uh, Raptor Custom Rates, where HeadTech and Johnny Moore watches, but certainly uh, DiPirico for the sponsorship. And also thank you to the 100 UK guys and the National Cart Club people for inviting us here to, at Wilton Mill for this fantastic. And now, look, so sunny day. And it looks like he's uh, found the outfit he wants. I think he's going straight for, for young Ryan. <laughs> and he's been told, so we'll just uh, let, uh, let Joe bring Ryan towards us, going past a selection of, uh, of, of other drivers who are happy or not. You've lost him. You've lost him. <laughs> he's always observing a man running an interview here, here at the uh, Wilton Mill final. So we'll go have a quick word with Ryan. And I will pass this one down to Joseph Bradley to talk to Ryan Cole, our winner. Ryan Cole started on the front row. Didn't quite get into the lead. You had to wait a bit, but once you got into the lead, there was no stopping you, was there? Yeah, the lights went green and uh, I got a bit of a tap into the start. So uh, I went straight on at the first corner a bit. And, uh, but yeah, once I got my bearings back through there, it was, I think, once I got past... Uh, Wilson, it was, uh, we knew what we had to come for the final, so, uh, you know, I think it was just a case of just managing managing the race. I, I'm still recovering from COVID, so I'm a bit... Oh, really? Are you really? Yeah. Uh, it, it does you couldn't tell, time. honestly. Uh, <laughs> that's what I had to put shifting, what I've been doing is I've been putting shifting first six, seven laps, and then I'm, I'm literally spent after that, so it's just a case of trying to build a gap, and then I just have to maintain it from there so I tell you what I've, from what I saw it must have been a good team effort because that cart was beautiful it was um, I mean I'll be honest with you, my dad uh, and the lads in the awning they've been running a few of the project ones um, all season and before um, I turned up and he says look we're on project one and I'll be honest with you, it, it was it was brilliant <laughs> it was really good there's our camera up there Ryan tell the viewers how you're feeling the Depreco 100 UK Super Prix winner you're the Super Prix champion uh, I just want to say a big thank you to Flex Motorsport, uh, Brian Cole. Uh, the engines were absolutely fantastic. Uh, it's been a pleasure to come here and race on the, you know, the 90s carts with all the hard tyres. Uh, it's just great to get the win. Great to talk to you, Ryan. Congratulations. See you on the SP plate. Cheers. Thanks. From here at Wilton Mill, thank you all for joining us for the first ever Carting Live TV broadcast. It's been great fun. It's been much better since the weather's picked up, in fairness. Uh, and it's been great to have you all here. Um, stay tuned to find out more details of what we are doing uh, karting-wise. If you're a fan of RC Racing TV, we are live next week from Ada on the south coast with a bit of uh, touring car action. And then we're also live in three weeks' time with some Nitro off-road from the Hearts Grand Prix. Until then, it's thank you from our team. That was Harry Bamford and uh, Ashley Anton on cameras. It was James Parry and Paul Bateman on technical stuff. And it was Joe Bradley and myself, Nick Damon on voice. We'll see you very soon here on kartinglive.tv.